As the class began, Professor Yan came in with two young men. One of them Han Sen was familiar with. With a handsome smile, Tang Zhenliu greeted the students. Another guy had an angled face. Han Sen knew he was the chosen that ranked sixth, Yu Jiaming. Since Han Sen did not go to the ranking rounds, he had never fought Yu. Blackhawk students were polite and gave no more than applause. When Tang was introduced, Zhang Yang clapped so hard his hands were almost swollen. Professor Yan still used his old-fashioned way to teach, but when talking about different theories, he would ask Tang Zhenliu and Yu Mingjai to do demonstrations. With the participation of two stars, the teaching effect was perfect. Both stars showed high attainment in martial arts, and their demonstrations were successful. In a few words, the ultimate goal of the martial arts was to leverage one's own strength. Please welcome Yu Jiaming and Tang Zhenliu to demonstrate black and white boxing for us. Yu Jiaming cut in, Professor Yan. If it is just the two of us, the students would not feel for themselves the essence of black and white boxing. Would you invite two students to spar with Tang and me? The proposal led to applause. To spar with such stars was of course a rare opportunity. Tang also glanced at Yu Mingjai. He knew what Yu was thinking. Yu had fought him in the contest before and lost miserably. Now Yu was afraid he would lose again and did not want to be humiliated in front of the class. That being the case, we will choose two students to spar with Yu Mingjai and Tang Zhenliu in black and white boxing. Any volunteers? Tang had noticed Han Sen a long time ago. Seeing Han Sen not raising his hand, he felt relieved. Han Sen was so great at this that he would definitely lose if Han Sen came up on stage. As Tang Zhenrong let out a sigh of relief, Yu Mingjai suddenly asked, Professor Yan, I heard that Blackhawk has a student named Aoyang Ziaosin who is in the top 10 of the Military Academy League. Sorry, Aoyang is not here today, Professor Yan said casually. Would you choose someone else yourself? Yu Mingjai smiled and asked the students, besides Aoyang Ziaosin, who is the best martial artist here? All eyes were on Han Sen. Although they had never seen him practicing martial arts, they could tell from his skills of warframe operation that his fitness was great. Yu Mingjai paused. He did not expect the students to have the same candidate in mind. It seemed that the student that was looked at was very influential in the school. But Yu did not take Han Sen too seriously. There were so many military school students in First God's Sanctuary, yet few were among the chosen. As one of the chosen, he did not really think of the students as his true opponents. Tang Zhenliu saw the look in Yu's eyes and knew he was about to do something stupid. But Yu did not know what was on Tang's mind. He smiled at Han Sen and asked, What is your name? Would you spar with me in black and white boxing? Han Sen was a bit upset. He did not raise his hand, so why would you appoint him? Go ahead, Sen. You will be great. His classmates were very supportive and curious about Han Sen's martial arts skill level. Yu Mingjai was glad to see that Han Sen's popularity even exceeded himself as a star. He wanted to appoint Aoyang Ziaosin to show off, so that these students would realize the difference between a military student and the chosen. Han Sen, would you throw the punches first? Yu Mingjai said generously. The one who attacked would enjoy certain advantages. Can we start now? Han Sen looked at Yu and asked. Sure. Ouch. Yu Mingjai had just agreed when a punch hit his chest before he could react. Yu stepped back and became furious. Professor Yan was explaining seriously. Han Sen did very well. This is a classic psychological gaming technique. Taking advantage of the weaknesses in the opponent's mind and hitting hard. However, Han Sen could have improved by hitting the vital parts of his opponent's body, such as nose or eyes, which would disable his opponent and help himself in the future rounds. The students nodded, while Yu Mingjai was very pissed. Then he had to suppress his anger, since the professor had put it like this. Han Sen did very well. Now we will continue. Yu Mingjai squeezed a smile and went back to his position. Tang was laughing so hard inwardly. Yu Mingjai, you really did ask for this. How could a military school student be compared to the chosen? In fact, most of the students also thought so. Although they felt that Han Sen should be great, they believed that against one of the top unevolved individuals in the alliance, Han Sen would still fall short. After all, you basically ranked sixth in the first god's sanctuary, while Han Sen was only the champion of a school-wide warframe game, not even a martial arts game. Han Sen directly threw his fist at Yu Mingjai's face, since Professor Yan had instructed him to hit hard in the vital parts. Yu Mingjai looked at Han Sen's standing position, angle of his body, and the ups and downs of his shoulder. Soon Yu easily made his judgment. Such exaggerated acting. Clearly there is no momentum. He clearly seems to be bluffing, but it is a yin blow for sure. I was better than this in kindergarten. Yu Mingjai raised his arm with some contempt, ready to block this white fist from Han Sen. 
He even used only one arm to show off his self-confidence and accurate judgment. Bang, Han Sen punched Hu Mingjai on the arm. Yu's face suddenly froze. He thought this punch was thrown with the yin force and used only one arm to block Han Sen's fist. But the fierce punch was actually a black fist, which was a yang force, and Yu's arm was smashed into his own face. Sparkles suddenly flew before Yu's eyes and a feeling of soreness hit his nose. He fell back involuntarily and sat on the floor. A hush descended on the entire room as the students were dazed. The result of the first round could be explained by the fact that Yu was unprepared, whereas the second punch was hit when Yu was intent and alert. However, Yu Mingjai still made the wrong judgment. Han Sen is awesome. He is good at black and white boxing as well. Haha, ha, no matter what the outcome would be, this one punch is good enough. It is the chosen he is playing against. So cool. He is the pride of Blackhawk. Ha ha, did you see how the expression of Yu Mingjai has changed? Han Sen is simply my idol. Yu Mingjai wiped his bloody nose and got up, unable to keep smiling. But he did not give up like Tang thought he should. Yu Jiaming continued to believe that his loss was due to his carelessness and walked up to Han Sen again. Another punch was thrown at Yu's face. Eyes locked on Han Sen, Yu again made a judgment. From any perspective, Han Sen's punch was not firm though it looked fierce. Yu decided that it was a harmless punch. Bang! Yu Mingjai's face turned ashy gray and was only able to stabilize his body after stepping back. He looked at Han Sen, astonished. It was impossible, and the students were so excited that they were about to cry out loud. No one had expected Han Sen to beat Yu once again. If it was not for the fact that the class was still in session, they would go up and hug Han Sen, because it was such an honor for a Blackhawk student to beat the Chosen three times in a row. Fixing his gaze on Han Sen, Yu threw a hard punch at the young student. Seeing the fear on the student's faces, Yu smiled within himself. Now all of you must have thought that I have been angry and want to retaliate, so this punch must a black fist. That would be unfortunate since I threw a white punch. This way I would win this round and look like a bigger person at the same time, salvaging my own reputation. Yu Mingjai believed that Han Sen would definitely dodge, yet the young student did not even cross his arms. Han Sen simply reached out a hand in front of Yu's fist. Yu Mingjai suddenly turned pale, since his fist was grabbed by Han Sen. The two stood still. S hash T. Just awesome. I thought it was a black fist for sure, and it was a white one. Han Sen is so great. That is dope. And he is so confident. He is so good at everything. Professor Yan was still meticulously analyzing and teaching. More and more students had come since they heard about Han Sen's performance. Even the corridor outside the windows was full. Those who could not come were also watching the synchronous holographic session via their smart device. After Professor Yan's class, Jai Yanren saw many students hovering over Han Sen and decided not to join them. Jai Yanren checked the time and turned toward the cafeteria. She knew for sure that around this time, Han Sen would go to the cafeteria where there were their favorite juices. Jai Yanren did not go far before she was stopped Lily who had run over. Sweetie, did you go and check on our genius in the middle of our class? Who said I went to see him? Jai Yanren curled her lips and said with shame. Why else would you skip the class? Lily asked, puzzled. To eat, Jai Yanren said and walked toward the cafeteria. Lily followed her to the cafeteria. Jai Yanren deliberately sat in plain sight and thought with venom, if that bastard does not take the initiative to come over, I will not forgive him. Sweetie, are you waiting for someone? Lily suddenly asked. No, Jai Yanren replied absentmindedly. Then why do you keep in looking at the door? Asked Lily, puzzled. Jai Yanren suddenly blushed and withdrew her gaze in panic. She bowed her head to eat and replied, I did not. Sweetie, you are a bit weird today. Lily looked her up and down. The genius is here. Someone whispered. Lily quickly looked to the door and saw Han Sen and Jiang Yang entering the cafeteria. Lily suddenly looked at Jai Yanren with disbelief. Sweetie, you are waiting for him, right? How did you know he would come here? Tell me. Stop it. I was not waiting for him, and how would I know he'd be here? Jai Yanren covered her own panic by taking a sip of her juice. When Lily had thought of more to ask, Han Sen and Jiang Yang had carried their trays to the girls' table and asked with a smile, Sisters, can we sit here? Of course. Lily looked at Jai Yanren who kept drinking drinking her juice and looked back at Han Sen. She had understood something. The genius is sitting with Jai Yanren. Is there something going on between them? Shut up. How long has he been here? I have never seen them walking together either. But it seems that their relationship is unusual. Jai Yanren now regretted coming to the cafeteria. It was a rushed decision and she was less mad at Han Sen since he had come over. However, the concerning eyes on her was almost burning a hole in her face. All she could do was drinking her juice. Hi Han Sen, my name is Lily. 
Warship Command Major. This is my roommate Jai Yanren. You should have heard of her. Lily smiled and reached out a hand. Hello, I am in the archery department, and I am Jai Yanren's boyfriend. Hansen shook her hand friendly. Jai Yanren suddenly choked on her juice and everyone who heard that was appalled. Hansen said that naturally, while it was quite an arrogant remark in the ears of others, no one had dared to claim to be Jai's boyfriend. The genius is just different. That's hash T. Is he for real? They are really together. This is too fast. He has only been here for a few months. There goes our campus bell. But he would be the only one who deserves her anyway. Gossip filled the cafeteria as people whispered and sent pictures to the campus community. The genius's girlfriend exposed. You would not believe who she is. Campus bell taken. A variety of different titles and videos filled the community in a sudden. At this time, Khalili was looking at Han Sen, stunned. Although she thought there was something going on, she did not expect him to admit being her boyfriend. Based on her understanding of Jai Yanren, her roommate would never let this happen. I will kick your ass right now if you keep talking this way, shouted Monkey among a group of men who had come over to this table. Our president has said before, whoever wants to be her boyfriend has to beat her at hand of God. Can you? Monkey asked coldly. That is easy, Han Sen said casually. Staring at Han Sen, Lai Yufeng suddenly said, Now you have to beat me before you could pursue Yanren. Now isn't that even easier? Han Sen laughed. What did you say? Monkey and the rest were furious. Lai Yufeng stopped them and threw a fiery gaze at Han Sen. Then we will have one match. If you lose, do not let me see you around her again. Is that necessary? You have lost already. Han Sen smiled. With both of her hands on the table and her eyes fixed on Han Sen, she almost shouted, Are you Jai Yanren's boyfriend? The onlookers were shocked by Lily. They all felt that Lily was making a big deal out of nothing, since Han Sen just said he was. But Lily quickly changed her way of asking, Are you my girlfriend is Jai Yanren? All of a sudden, everyone opened their mouths wide. They did not expect that this was the guy who had beaten Lai Yufeng by 20 points on the battle net. Now that Hansen had personally admitted that he was Jai Yanren's boyfriend, was it not the most plausible theory that he was behind that ID? That's my battlenet ID, Hansen replied casually. Lai Yufeng, Monkey and the rest all went pale. They could not believe this. If Hansen was really my girlfriend is Jai Yanren, then there was no need for another match indeed. No wonder the genius said he had won already. So he is my girlfriend is Jai Yanren. The genius is out of this world. I thought he was good at warframes, but he is better at black and white boxing. Now he is even better at Hand of God and has beaten Lai Yufeng by 20 points. Great God, he is one of a kind. This news made many feel incredible and relieved at the same time. After all, unless it was Jai Yanren's boyfriend, who would be so shameless to use that ID? But the news was still earth-shaking in Blackhawk, whose campus bell finally had a boyfriend, Han Sen. Jai Yanren was the campus bell. But Han Sen was even more famous, the genius who had the starry cup in his pocket, beat the chosen in black and white boxing and killed it at hand of God. Many people only felt a bit surprised when hearing the news and soon thought that it was rather natural. Even the photos of Han Sen and Jai Yanren together looked sweet and natural. When the two stood together, people noticed that although Han Sen was not as good looking, he had a man's determination. What was more incredible was his skin was even better than his girlfriend's, making many girls jealous. Any picture with Jai Yanren and Han Sen and it was beautiful. They looked perfect together like a sword belonged to its knight. Wait, have we met recently? The more she looked at Han Sen, the more familiar Lily felt. Suddenly, Lily thought of something incredible and her eyeballs almost fell out. She pointed at Han Sen. You. You. Dormitory. Before could finish that sentence, Jai Yanren blushed and dragged her back to the dorm. Sweetie, I did not see that you have such potentials. Tell me, when did you have this guy under your skirt? I can't believe you pretended not knowing him and said you had no idea who your boyfriend was, said Lily with a faint smile, glancing at Jai Yanren who had her face covered up in a blanket. Jai Yanren said with a look of pretended annoyance, it's not like that. I really did not know it was him. Digging had agreed to Han Sen's terms and signed a contract with him. There were many activities that he needed to attend. One of the most important activities was that Digging would host a Digging Warframe match on the 10th of the next month, and Han Sen had to participate in it. And the period of time before the match would see overwhelming advertising campaigns of the new Warframe, SKTS. On the 10th of the next month, the Digging Warframe match would start and SKTS would be launched, while Starry Cup Finals would also begin. As the spokesperson of Digging, Han Sen needed to appear in its commercials and campaigns, which he was glad to oblige. His silver killer had already been sent back to the lab to have a weapon system installed. 
But even if he still had it, Hansen could not operate Silver Killer, because the only Warframe he should be driving for the time being was SKTS. SKTS had almost the same appearance as Silver Killer, but its performance level was much lower. As a prototype, Silver Killer was even better than ordinary military Warframes, let alone the civil ones. But the outsiders could not distinguish between Silver Killer and SKTS at all. From their looks, they were the same Warframe. All of Digging's campaigns had been about the concept of super-biological Warframe, but none had shown the appearance of this new Warframe. At this time, Digging was seizing the time to shoot the commercials for SKTS for publicity. Digging had informed Blackhawk to allow Hansen to take a leave from school when there was no holidays so that he could go to a base of Digging for the shooting. Because it was a trade secret, Hansen could not tell anyone anything before the commercials were aired. Hansen just told Jai Yanren that he had some errands to run before he was taken by the staff of Digging. In a corner office at the base of Digging, an 18-year-old girl in white uniform was arguing in front of Liu Changming. General Manager Liu, I believe that I have the ability and confidence to star the commercial. Why would you ask me to be just a pretty face and let an ordinary military school student to star the commercial? Please give me an explanation. Yu Kyung Sun was sizzling with anger. Although obedience was the first duty of a soldier, Yu Kyung Sun, who was from a service family, could not accept the fact that she had to be a stooge to an ordinary student. As a member of the Special Warframe Force, as well as the fourth and the only female among the chosen this year, Yu Kyung Sun was a bigger star than Tang Jianliu and Lin Feng. As early as a year ago, Yu was designated as the official spokesperson of Digging and had endorsed most of the company's new products. The sales numbers of those products had been great. That was why it was difficult for her to accept the order to act in a supporting role to an ordinary military school student, who was from Blackhawk. Maybe for an average person, Blackhawk was regarded as a prestigious school, but for her who was in Alliance Central Military Academy, Blackhawk was nothing. Kaiyang Sun, you are not in a supporting role. You are the heroine, and he is the hero, and the commercial will be starred by both of you, Liu Changeming said with a smile. Besides, now all young people like to see a beauty in the commercials. You will definitely attract more attention than he ever will. General Manager Liu, do you think I'm a three-year-old? This is a Warframe commercial. Have you ever seen a heroine who does not drive the Warframe? Asked Yu Kaiyang Sun, biting her lip. She had seen the script. Although she was the heroine, there was no scene where she would drive SKTS. The point of her being there was her face, which was not something she was used to. And she was indeed playing a supporting role. After all, whoever drove a Warframe could be called a star in the commercial. Kaiyang Sun, you are not only a soldier, but also a star. Trust your performing skills and I believe you can make yourself the protagonist of you too. Liu Changeming narrowed his eyes and said. But, Yu Kaiyang Sun wanted to say anything, but was interrupted by Liu. No but, this is an order. If you have any opinion, you can go talk to your superior. Liu Changeming darkened his face. Yu bit her lip and had to step out of Liu's office. A soldier before a star, she must obey orders despite her own unwillingness. As a member of the Special Warframe Force, she could not even touch the Warframe in a Warframe commercial, which was definitely a shame for her. I want to see who it is that took this role from me. Yu Kaiyang Sun ground her fine teeth. If it was for any other commercial, Yu Kaiyang Sun would not mind as much, but she was really into SKTS. In her eyes, SKTS was leading the revolution in the Warframe industry. Hence it was her sincere hope to star the commercial for this Warframe. Han Sen was received by Liu Changeming himself when he came to the base. Han Sen did not dare to trifle with Liu, who was the general manager of digging and a major general. Fortunately, Liu Changeming had a great impression of Han Sen, and their meeting was also quite pleasant. Liu Changeming personally arranged for Han Sen's residence and welcome dinner, where almost everyone involved in the commercial showed up. Liu introduced the director, producer and everyone else to Han Sen. The only one missing was the heroine, but Han Sen did not know there would be a heroine at all and simply enjoyed his meal. The next day, someone took him to the Warframe training ground to get familiar with SKTS. Looking at its appearance, Hansen could hardly distinguish between SKTS and Silver Killer. The only difference was that when folded up, SKTS was bigger than Silver Killer. Silver Killer was the size of a portable briefcase, while SKTS was like a luggage case. An array of SKTS were placed on the stage, looking identical. Hansen picked one and turned it on. Although it had the same appearance, Han Sen felt the difference after he started to drive. In SKTS, the comfort of driver was improved, whereas the performance was significantly reduced. 
but even SKTS was much better than the King series of Starry Group in both performance and smoothness. Used to using a high-performance Warframe, Hansen was driving SKTS in his usual style, which led to small deviations in the Warframe's movements. Some acts that Hansen assumed that SKTS would perform easily actually failed due to its lack of horsepower. Having been watching him secretly in an SKTS on the side, Yu Kyung Sun felt even worse for herself being a stooge to this guy. Even if I could not get the leading role back, I will show you what it is like to be a true Warframe operator, thought Yu. Turning her Warframe on, she commanded it to draw a laser sword and rush toward Han Sen. When practicing, Han Sen suddenly saw an object approaching him at a high speed from the radar. He looked up and saw another SKTS coming toward him with a sword in its hand. Assuming that it was arranged to get him familiar with the Warframe, Han Sen was not surprised. Controlling his Warframe to hold a sword in hand, he was ready for the fight. But Han Sen misunderstood one thing. He thought there was an operator in each SKTS in the array, and was prepared to be thrown into a group fight. Hence, he thought he should get rid of the first Warframe coming at him as fast as possible, so that it would be easier for him to deal with the rest. Liu Changming and the director of the commercial Zhu Wencheng were monitoring Han Sen's practice through a monitor. Suddenly seeing a SKTS moving, they both paused. And then Liu Changming suddenly knew what was happening and his face became grave. It must be Yu Kyung Sun. This is such nonsense. Ready to ask someone to stop her. Liu Changming rose up but was stopped by Zhu Wencheng, who smiled and said, Liu, it is okay. You said Han Sen is a Warframe genius, so wouldn't it be brilliant if he could just beat her so that she would play her role willingly? Liu Changming said a wry smile, Zhu, you do not know Yu's background. She comes from a Warframe family where generations of people have been dedicated to Warframe operation. She was sent to the special Warframe force when she turned 16 and have been practicing with the best men ever since. Few at her age could be better than her at Warframe. Having taken a deep breath, Liu Changeming continued, Han Sen is very good, but I cannot guarantee that he will be able to beat her. Moreover, she has been practicing on SKTS for days, while he is just getting started. The performance of SKTS is much worse than Silver Killer, so he must be still getting used to it. Ugh, let's stop her immediately then, Zhu Wencheng quickly said. It's too late. Let's hope for the best, Liu Changeming said with a wry smile. Even if he sent someone right now, it would be too late for that person to stop you. Yu Kyungsun's style of operation was like her character, taking the lead whenever possible. She would fight without fear even when she was against someone much stronger than herself. Yu Kyungsun drove SKTS at full speed toward Han Sen. With the power generated from the high speed, the SKTS wielded the sword from above fiercely. Seeing Han Sen raising his sword to block her strike, she felt more disdained. With the same Warframe, hers had a higher speed than his, so it was predictable that his Warframe would suffer more. Once his Warframe fell to the ground, he would have no chance to adjust before she beat him. Yu Kyungsun's strike was so fierce that she seemed to have put all her anger in it. The swords were merely 10 inches apart and were about to collide. Considering the size of SKTS, the distance was alarming. At this time, Yu suddenly saw Han Sen's sword had disappeared. Yu Kyungsun was shocked. But at this point there was nothing she could do other than watching the other SKTS turning swiftly and briskly appearing behind her. Bang! In the blink of an eye, Hansen controlled his SKTS to kick the other Warframe on the back. Accompanied by its inertia of going forward, Yu's Warframe was brought to its knees. With the intense impact, Yu Kyung Sun was dumbfounded, not just because of the physical pain, but also because she could not believe she would lose like this to someone that she despised. For a moment, she did not move. She knew her opponent could have used his sword instead of foot, which would ruin her and her SKTS. Liu Changeming and Zhu Wencheng were also dazed. They had never thought that she would lose so fast. This young man is really good, commented Liu Changeming gladly. He had had enough of Yu Kyungsun's festering these days. Now she had no reasons to complain. Zhu Wencheng also smiled and said, Indeed, it is wonderful for an unevolved person to have such performance. Trying to taking it from other SKTS when Han Sen got rid of Yu Kyungsun, he found the other Warframes remained still. It seemed that it was the only Warframe that he was supposed to spar with. When Han Sen was confused, a beautiful girl in white uniform came out of the SKTS on the floor. She was breathtaking and even comparable to Jai Yanren, although Jai was sweet, while Yu Kyung Sun was valiant. They were both gorgeous in their own style. The real Warframes have too much constraint. We should fight again using the holographic simulation machine, Yu said aloud, walking toward Han Sen. She was not convinced and thought her loss must be because she had underestimated her opponent. 
However, at this time, she had to concede that Han Sen was a great Warframe operator, and not someone she could beat easily. After all, it was not the battlefield and SKTS was quite expensive, so she wanted to ask him to use the simulation to fight, where they would have less constraints. Han Sen thought she was an opponent arranged by the company and followed her lead to the simulation machine. As he was walking, Han Sen thought, Digging is so thoughtful to have arranged such a beauty to spar with me. I was being so rude to her and have to act like a gentleman later. Han Sen was, of course, not thinking about losing on purpose. He only intended to wait longer before he won, letting the girl show her strength. Digang had paid for his operation skills, and why would they do that if he could not even beat the girl they had arranged? Coming from a military family, she had a straightforward style and respected whoever stronger than herself. Just lots of time and energy. Haven't you heard that saying? Han Sen shrugged, feeling slightly proud of himself being praised by such a beauty. What saying? Yu Kyang Sun was confused. Success is 99% of talent plus 1% of hard work. Han Sen laughed. You hesitated and asked him, You mean that success is 99% of hard work plus 1% of talent, right? Sorry, made a mistake there. Han Sen felt a bit embarrassed, thinking that he should go more often to the cultural courses at school so that he could pass the school's semi-annual assessment. Yu kyung -sun looked at Han Sen, and suddenly felt he meant what he had said. Without any calluses on his hands, he had skin as smooth as tofu and looked nothing like someone who would work hard. 99% of talent plus 1% of hard work. I will keep that in mind. She cast another glance at him. Although she did not believe in geniuses, Han Sen seemed to be a living example. Liu Changming and Zhu Wencheng both watched their simulated fights and were surprised by the outcome. It was hard to find any match for Yu kyung -sun among her peers. However, she lost to Han Sen completely, which was absolutely beyond their expectations. It seems that Han Sen was better than we have imagined. Great addition to the special squad. When he becomes an evolver in a couple of years, he will be even more extraordinary, Liu Changeming pondered and said. Zhu Wencheng nodded. Kin Xuan has great judgment. It was impressive that she was able to pick him out. I have always had faith in the people chosen by the Kins. Liu Changeming laughed. Han Sen later learned that Yu was the heroine instead of his training mate. As cheeky as he was, he felt embarrassed. Fortunately, Yu kyung -sun did not know his thoughts. Because she had been convinced by Han Sen's talents, she was very cooperative in the shooting. In fact, even if she was not convinced, as a soldier, she would do her best to follow the order. The only difference was that she would act more naturally this way. During the shooting, Yu kyung -sun would spar with Han Sen and ask him questions whenever she had the opportunity. As she got to know him better, she felt even more intimidated by him. Han Sen's speed was one of the things that made her feel inferior to. She estimated that she would only be able to do that when she maxed out on her sacred Geno points. Later, she treated him as a superior and even an idol to catch up with. If it weren't for his tender skin, she might even treat him as a teacher. However, she rather enjoyed squeezing Han Sen's face for the nice feel, which was actually quite alarming for Han Sen. The effect of Jade Skin had shown and he was afraid that someone might be able to tell that he was practicing this hyper Geno art. Because of the special properties of a biological warframe, its color could not be changed. An ordinary SKTS was in silver and even the owner added a coating on the outside. As long as the warframe was turned to its compressed form, the coating would disappear. So, Han Sen's request was to ask Liu Changeming to add some blue patterns on his SKTS. Han Sen had already had his silver killer and was not interested in driving SKTS. With some decoration, it could at least look impressive when he took it out for a spin. Liu Changeming agreed, but the color changing was quite difficult and required high-level technology. If the Warframe were to be made entirely blue, it would be easier. However, to add blue patterns required the professors in the laboratory to manually change part of the particle structure. When Yu kyung -sun found out about Han Sen's request and saw the holographic design of the blue and silver Warframe, she requested the same patterns in red to be put on hers. For this reason, Han Sen stayed at the base for several more days and did not immediately return to school. Finally, on September 1st, Digging held the press conference on time. Different from the press conferences before, this one was hosted by Liu Changeming personally. Facing the journalists from all the major press in the alliance, he said only one sentence, please enjoy epoch-making creation presented to you by Digang. After that, a holographic commercial started to play and all the audience were placed in a campus in the springtime, with breezes blowing gently. Then, they saw a beautiful girl sitting under a tree next to the playground, reading a book, her silky dark hair slightly fluttering. 
The scene was so breathtaking that the audience were afraid their breath might disturb her. Sunshine, green grass, and the beautiful girl brought them back to their innocent school days. Yu Kayang son, I knew it would be her, all the journalists were thinking. The recent digging products were all endorsed by Yu Kayang son, with great market effect. Therefore, everyone thought digging would continue to hire her and it seemed that they were right about it. The scene was followed by a close-up of the book in her hands. In the sun, it felt like the ink could be smelled. However, darkness suddenly fell on the pages and Yu Kayang Sun looked up, frightened. A grotesque, giant warship appeared in the sky and covered the entire school like a dark cloud. A Shira warship. The journalists recognized what it was. Bang! An ugly warframe fell to the ground, leaving a deep pit. The warframe stood up, the sword in its hand yearning for blood. Next, Shira warframes flooded out of the monster-like Shira warship. The monsters descended from heaven at the same time, turning a sweet scene into hell. The earth was shaking, the gunfire was roaring, and the students were crying and running around. The girl played by Yu Kayang Sun was also desperately running, holding the book in her arms. But how could her legs carry her faster than the Shira warframes? Not to mention the warframes were everywhere. A suffocating despair spread in the hearts of all the audience. Ah, uh, at this critical moment, she tripped over something and fell to the ground, and the book fell in front of her. Struggling to sit up, she reached for the book in panic. When she turned back, she saw the school under attack and the frightening groups of Shira Warframes rushing over. Seeing the despair on her face, everyone was heartsick at once, wishing they could save the poor girl. But there were too many Shira Warframes, and one of them had even slashed at the girl with a sword. Bang! A silver box suddenly hit the bloody sword aside, the letters TS engraved on the box. The silver box finally fell into the hands of a boy in school uniform, who pressed the box and threw it up in the air. Some journalists felt that the boy looked familiar, but none could think of who he was. Everyone's attention was on the silver box. The silver box rustled and turned into silver liquid, winding up the boy's body. In the incredulous look of the audience, the silver liquid turned into the parts of a warframe and armed the boy. Silver killer. It is silver killer. Finally someone recognized it. And at this moment, SKTS drew a laser sword and a particle gun, moving toward the Shira warframes like a ghost. In the explosion, the sound of metal on metal, the sparks, and the gunfire, Silver Killer was killing away. Facing Shura Warframes, Silver Killer was like a proud warrior, declaring to the Shuras that humans were the true owner of the land. Bang! The laser sword was broken. The particle gun ran out of energy and was thrown at a Shura Warframe. With its ammunition exhausted, Silver Killer was still faced with endless enemies. Everyone was shocked by the incredible visual effect. It was even better than a movie. But the next scene was even more thrilling. From the bombarded school, the students rushed out one after another, each holding a silver box engraved TS. When the box was turned on, all of them were covered in silver warframes, which then launched fierce attacks on the Shira army. Warfare between Shira and human was displayed with passionate background music, motivating each audience to join. Boom. The last frame was focused on the first silver warframe, which blew away a Shira that was trying to attack the girl. The lens was zoomed in on the TS engraved on the breastplate of the warframe in the end. A line showed up slowly, with a low male voice reading, SKTS by Digging, September 10th, Die Garden. After a moment of silence when all the journalists looked at the screen with a blank look, Liu Changeming appeared once again on the stage. The journalists were raising questions like crazy. Mr. Liu, is that a real warframe shown in the commercial? Mr. Liu, can a warframe really be compressed into such a small case? Mr. Liu, has any special effect been used in the video? Mr. Liu, is SKTS the same warframe that appeared on the Starry Cup? Mr. Liu, that boy driving SKTS must be that Black Hawk student disqualified by Starry Group, right? Liu Changeming lifted his hands to quiet the room down and said quietly, See you on September 10th. And then he did not say one extra word before leaving under the escort of security personnel. The whole alliance was in a heated discussion of SKTS, and the commercial had gone viral. S hash T. That cannot be real. Must all be special effects. How can it be special effects? It will be sold on the 10th. So Silver Killer was the latest super biological Warframe SKTS. No wonder it was not on the market. It had not been launched yet. Starry Group is rubbish to disqualify the student. How is this a Warframe for military use? Everything is clear now. Digging deserves the hype. Digging is playing dirty by showing a virtual image as its selling point. A shame on the military business. Exactly, Digun rubbish. Yu Kayang Sun is gorgeous. She has changed her style too. Yes, she is so beautiful. I did not expect she could also perform such a role. 
a true goddess. Han Sen's operation skills are top-notch as ever. Can't wait for September 10th to come. I'm so eager to get my hands on this. The most expensive Warframe for civil use at the time was the King series of Starry Group, which cost no more than a dozen million and could be customized as required. SKTS, however, would not allow customization. Every Warframe was the same model, not even the color could be changed. A Warframe like this would be at most 10 to 20 million. Plenty could afford it. But when they saw the pricing, people were all dumbfounded. It was an absurd 76 million, which could buy 6 or 7 King Series Warframes and probably broke the record of civil Warframes. One could even get 2 or 3 military Warframes with that price. Also, only 100,000 units would be sold. It sounded like a bit number, but with so many planets in the Alliance and tens of billions of people on each planet, 100,000 was not a lot at all. The competitors attacked digging ferociously, and the people were also very dissatisfied with the company's strategy. Han Hao, come to see this person. This person, looks like Han Sen. Han you may frowned and called Han Hao while watching the digging Warframe match. They just look alike. There is no way that's him. This is a star and Han Sen does not even deserve to polish his shoes. Han Yumei's commented cynically. That's right. How could Han Sen star a digging commercial? But they do look terribly alike. Han Hao, come here and look at this latest digging Warframe. 76 million. So expensive that we could probably afford one if we sold everything. Han Yumei said admiringly. Han Hao came out of the room, his face dark. Seeing the commercial, he gritted his teeth and said, That is Han Sen. Jai Yanren was not happy recently. She only learned from Han Sen about the commercial right before it was publicized. Before that, she was not even aware that Han Sen had gone to shoot a commercial. When the commercial was aired, many students came to ask her, Yanren, your boyfriend is actually a star. Why didn't you tell us? Yanren, it the SKTS really how it looks in the commercial. You must know since Han sends your boyfriend. Did he take you on a ride in SKTS? She must have been driving it. Yanren, could you talk it up to the genius and get me an SKTS internally? I am afraid I won't be able to snag one. Jai Yanren was so depressed since she knew as much as they did. Asshole, I need to show him who the boss is when he's back. Jai Yanren fiercely ground her teeth. But when she continued to watch the commercial and saw the incredibly pretty Yu Kaiyang son, she suddenly sensed crisis. Tan, good job. You are now the spokesperson of digging. Zhang Denfeng said to Han Sen over the phone excitedly. Ha ha, do you want an SKTS? Han Sen asked with a smile. Yes, but unfortunately it costs more than 70 million. And even if you could get some discount for me, I still would not be able to afford one. Zhang Denfeng laughed. Hang on, I could get you one in a few days. Han Sen was someone who remembered others' kindness. Since her family went downhill, Zhang Denfeng and his father helped them a lot. Otherwise it would have been even harder on Liu Sulen. And a while back, Zhang Denfeng gave him a $2 million broadsword and Han Sen took it. Although he never used it, he remembered. $2 million was not much for Han Sen now, but it was quite a lot for both of them back then. Even if Zhang could not use it himself, he could have used it to exchange for the meat of creatures, which he did not, but gave the weapon to Han Sen. That's not right. Zhang Denfeng was slightly surprised. Although Han Sen had endorsed the Warframe, there was no way Digging would give these Warframes away. That's nothing. I have two now and we'll get you one in a few days. We could hang out together in them and get the swag. Han Sen laughed. I appreciate it, but I am not interested in driving Warframes. If you see some nice broadsword skills, remember to teach me, replied Zhang Denfeng. Okay then, said Han Sen. Han Sen returned to school on September 6th. The remodeling of SKTS took longer than he had thought. He could only stay at school for one day before going back to Dai Garden for the digging Warframe match. He could get another SKTS if he was among the top three. Unfortunately, this one would not come with a free lifetime maintenance service. Jai Yanren was on the Battle.net playing Hand of God when she saw a reminder saying my girlfriend is Jai Yanren was online. You finally showed up. Jai Yanren would like to invite Han Sen to her virtual room, but thought it would make her look bad. Hesitant if she should ignore him, she saw an invite from him. Jai Yanren subconsciously clicked yes and immediately entered a room Han Sen set up. Sister, playing Hand of God so late at night. Han Sen sent a voice message. Yes, I do not have a commercial to star or any pretty girl to perform with. What else could I be doing? Jai Yanren said sourly. Han Sen quickly said, do not mention it. I had thought that an actress would be pretty, but was so disappointed when I saw her in person. She does not have one-tenth of your beauty. As he lied away, Han Sen thought to himself, Yu Kaiyang-sun, 
thank you for the sacrifice. Jai Yanren was secretly delighted, but pretended to be mad, so that you went for her in the first place. No way. I went for you, Han Sen quickly vowed. How does the commercial have anything to do with me? Jai Yanren pouted. You see, I already have a silver killer, but you don't. My family is not rich, so I had to work for digging to get you a new SKTS. In the future, we could drive matching silver warframes, Han Sen said. Who needs that? Jai Yanren blushed. It's just a warframe. I could have bought it myself. I had this one customized. It has blue patterns and is unique in the alliance, which shows our love is unique, Han Sen said. Just a change in the color. If I want it to be done, Liu Changeming would not dare to refuse. Jai Yanren still pretended to be mad, while rejoicing at heart. My thought is unique though. Han Sen was a bit shocked. He knew Jai Yanren was from a prominent family, but her tone suggested that her family was probably more powerful than he had imagined. You would really give it to me. Yours should come with the digging mark, right? Jai Yanren pondered and asked. Of course, nothing is more important than my future wife. Han Sen said. Who is your future wife? A warframe for a wife? You are too clever. Jai Yanren pouted prettily. Okay, a lover then, Han Sen said, grinning. I'll give you a chance. If you could show up in front of me when I count to three, I could totally be your lover. Jai Yanren teased Han Sen. That is not fair. You know I'm not on campus, cried Han Sen. Anyway, I gave you the opportunity. It's not my fault you can't make it. Jai Yanren knew Han Sen would participate in the digging warframe match and must not be at school. 1. Jai Yanren counted with delight. No, Han Sen whimpered. 2. You have to seize the time. Jai Yanren laughed. Can you count down in a few days? Han Sen begged. No, I cannot wait to want to be your mistress. I've showered and been waiting for you to come. How can I stop now? Okay, 2.5. Hurry. Jai Yanren continued to tease him. Sweet sister, wait for me a bit longer. Han Sen continued to plead. I have been so horny. It has to be now. Jai Yanren fell into a strong arm before she could finish the sentence. Surprised, she felt warmth breath next to her ear and heard a familiar voice. Sister, you need to stay true to your words. Now you can be my lover. How can you be here? Jai Yanren was suddenly so shy that even her neck was crimson. She teased him because she was convinced he must be on the way to Dai Garden or there already. Han Sen was holding Jai Yanren behind her, looking at her pink ear, and could not help pecking on it. Jai Yanren suddenly felt an electric shock, going limp in Han Sen's arms. Looking at how pretty she was, Han Sen felt an urge and kissed her deeply on her lips. Arms around Han Lan's neck, she kissed him back. Ah, oh. while the two were at it, a scream scared them and they quickly separated. Ahem, uh -huh, I am just passing by. Please continue. Lily who had come to look for her roommate went away, grinning. You come back here. Jai Yanren was full of shame. She quickly ran over to chase Lily. Han Sen looked at his own right hand with contempt. It was this guy that had touched Jai Yanren's breasts when she was dazed. Han Sen only spent one day at school before he took an interstellar spacecraft to Dai Garden. He needed to compete in digging Warframe match for the endorsement and the prize. There were many applicants for the match in the end, and all the finalists were strong. Some players from military schools even gave up the Starry Cup finals for this. Compared to the King series Warframes, the mysterious SKTS was clearly more attractive. At this point the SK series had become a synonym for high-end Warframes. Han Sen had also become quite a celebrity among the unevolved. In Steel Armor Shelter, Young Manly widened her eyes, glaring at Han Sen. Why? Why would you want to refuse to dig Ang's new Warframe SK Wolf? Young Manly could not begin to understand that. Digging had offered Han Sen excellent conditions for him to endorse their new four-legged Warframe SK Wolf, but Han Sen had turned their offer down. In the view of Yang Manli, Han Sen was just arrogant. He thought he had become a big star after shooting a commercial. Why did you turn it down? King Xuan looked at Han Sen and calmly asked. Endorsement could bring me a lot of wealth and popularity. Han Sen paused and then continued, but my goal is not to become a big star, and this endorsement takes up too much of my time. I do not have time to be wasted on these things. SKTS was quite enough for now. Please explain on my behalf and turn down Digang's offer. I believe you would not want to see me failing the semi-annual assessment either. King Xuan smiled and said, Since you have decided, I will reply Digang and you can focus on other things. Thank you, Captain. Han Sen was glad that he was working for King Xuan, who was an admirable boss in every aspect. After Han Sen left, Yang Manli was very puzzled. She looked at King Xuan and said, Captain, why did you agree to let him turn down the endorsement? It would do him in the special squad good. King Xuan grinned. An endorsement does not mean much. He has done quite enough. And he was right that the special squad does not need an expelled student. Do you really believe what he said? 
Young Manly widened her eyes. He was exaggerating, but was right about one thing. If his own strength cannot keep up with his fame, then everything is just void. He really should not waste too much time on vanity. King Xuan paused and said, Draft a document to turn down Dig Eng's endorsement request, please. Han Sen was taking Wang Mingmeng to Devil Desert in order to get the S-Class license as soon as possible. Han Sen spared no effort to make Wang Mingmeng max out on all types of Geno points other than the sacred ones. Fortunately, Wang Mingmeng was resourceful, so it should not take too long and he was not her only protector either. She would only ask him to accompany her to the extremely dangerous places like Devil Desert. There were quite a lot of sacred blood creatures in Devil Desert, and Han Sen would like to take a chance and see if he could gain a sacred blood weapon. If he could, then in the future, he would not have to run from the sacred blood creatures like the Silver Bird, but could try to kill them. Wang Mingmeng rarely went to school. The reason she had chosen heavy warframe society was that there was no constraints there so that she could spend most of her time in God's sanctuary. In addition to Han Sen, there were several other special squad members taking her out on hunting trips. Coupled with adequate advanced meat for her consumption, Wang Mingmeng improved fast. Currently she could fight a mutant creature alone. Han Sen leisurely followed Wang Mingmeng riding the mutant three-eyed beast, watching her fight. All he had to do was to summon the golden rock worm to clean up the creatures she had killed. Now Han Sen's targets were limited to mutant and sacred blood creatures. However, Wang Mingmeng still needed some primitive geno points, so they were still hunting for rare primitive creatures. Brother Han, there seemed to be a group of creatures eyeing us from above, said Wang Mingmeng, sitting on the back of her big white bear. It has been a while. I wonder why they did not attack us. Han Sen nodded, as he had already noticed them. It was a group of black feathered beasts. They were primitive creatures with a monkey-like body and a pair of black wings. Han Sen had spotted them before, but they usually appeared in small groups instead of a large group like this. There were at least three dozen black feathered beasts gathering in the sky right now. These black feathered beasts were hovering over them, but did not mean to attack. Han Sen had some doubts about this. Although they were intelligent, he did not believe that they could tell he and Wang were strong from their looks. With so many of them, the beasts could have tried to attack. When Han Sen was wondering, he suddenly heard faint sounds of fighting ahead of them. The two exchanged a look and urged their mounts up a dune. From there, they saw a group of people being attacked by thousands of black feathered beasts, some of which were mutant creatures. Surrounded by black feathered beasts, the group had no way to escape. They were fighting hard, but there were bodies of both the black feathered beasts and humans on the sand. So these guys hovering over us are just the sentinels. No wonder they had not attacked us. We were never their goals. Han Sen was scared by how intelligent the creatures could be. They even had a strategy. That looks like Huan Fu pinking. What's she doing here? Wang Mingmeng watched for a while and looked surprised. Her eyes on a woman in red armor among the group of people. Huan Fu pinking. Who is she? Han Sen paused as he had never heard such a name in Steel Armor Shelter. Judging from Wang's reaction, she seemed important. She is the daughter of Huang Fu Hao. The Huang Fus and Wangs have been friends for generations. We have been cooperating in many businesses. She is two years older than me and has entered God's sanctuary two years before I did. Her shelter should be Faith's shelter. Why would she be here? Wang Mingmeng asked, Brother Han, can we help them kill the creatures? Do you know the rest of them? Han Sen did not answer, but asked. No. Wang Mingmeng shook her head after looking carefully. How tight are you and Huang Fu pinking? Han Sen asked again. We have known each other since we were little and our families have business collaborations. Wang Mingmeng thought and replied. Then we'd better stay here, so that they would not assume that we wanted to steal the creatures. Han Sen narrowed his eyes and said. Wang Mingmeng instantly understood what he meant and stayed quiet. Obviously, Han Sen believed that the group was able to cope with the group of black feathered beasts. If the two of them rushed over, the group might misunderstand their intention. After a while, a young man of the group summoned a pair of white wings, flew up and started a killing spree. He is great. Wang Mingmeng was slightly surprised to see the young man moving. Your friend is better, Han Sen smiled and said. Her, Wang Mingmeng looked to Huang Fu pinking in surprise, only to find her shooting arrows under several people's protection. Compared to the winged young man, she seemed less impressive. Every arrow she shot would kill the beast that poses the most danger to the group. And even a mutant beast would be shot dead by her. She looked ordinary, but her threat to these creatures is greater than the young man. She is both calm and capable. I think she is probably better than I in archery, said Han Sen, squinting. 
Wang Mingmeng observed carefully and found Han Sen was right. Huang Fu Pingqing's arrows seemed out of order, but would always hit the most dangerous black feathered beast. Suddenly, with a strange cry from afar, the cloud-like black feathered beast scattered quickly, leaving thousands of dead bodies on the sand. The group of people clearly had noticed the two of them a while ago. Some of them stayed to clean up the field, and Huang Fu Pinking walked over to the two together with the young man who had beast soul wings. Ming Meng, so great to see you here. Huang Fu Pinking held Wang Ming Meng's hand and said dearly, Sister, I was afraid that you might misunderstand, so I did not go over to help. You will not blame me, right? Wang Ming Meng blinked and said, Of course not, I understand that you meant well. Huang Fu Pinking said, and looked to Han Sen in surprise. Aren't you the spokesperson of SKTS? I did not expect to see a celebrity here. It is my honor to meet you. Huang Fu Kinking had reached out her hand. It seemed that she was genuinely happy to see him. Miss Huang Fu, you flatter me. I just got lucky. Han Sen felt a chill. Although Huang Fu Pinking had a beautiful smile and cordial manner, he had an instinct that she was more dangerous than Son of Heaven. The poisonous plants were always beautiful. Since Ming Meng is my friend and you are hers, then we are friends and you can call me Pinking. She then introduced the young man with her, this is Wang Dongling. He has been a great help in the shelter. If it weren't for him, I could never get here and chat with you. Wang Dongling's face was grim when seeing Huang Fu Pinking talking to Han Sen like that. But now hearing her remark, he suddenly smiled and said hi to Han Sen and Wang Mingmeng. After the four chatted for a while, Han Sen learned that Huang Fu Pinking and the rest had traveled from Faith Shelter and across the Devil Desert to reach here. It is really good to see you here. Can you take us to Steel Armor Shelter? Huang Fu smiled and asked. Wang Mingmeng was ready to agree, but Han Sen suddenly said, Miss Huang Fu, we are not far from Steel Armor Shelter. Here is a map and if you follow this, you will get there in days. We have just arrived and will not head back now. Huang Fu looked surprised for an instant before she put on a smile and gave the map to Wang Dongling. That being the case, I have to trouble Mr. Wang to take the group there. I have so much to talk about with Ming Meng and will join you on your hunting trip. Wang Dongling's face slightly darkened. He quickly said, Pinking, it is too dangerous for you to be here alone. I will ask the rest to go to Steel Armor Shelter and I can stay to protect you. Han Sen could not help frowning. Huang Fu Pinking and Wang Dongling decided to stay without his consent, while the rest of the group took the map and went to Steel Armor Shelter. Miss Huang Fu, do you need these black feathered beasts' bodies? Han Sen pointed to nearly a thousand dead black feathered beasts on the ground. So much primitive meat. Even if I want it, I won't be able to take it back. If you can use it, be my guest. Huang Fu wondered what Han Sen could possibly do with it. Han Sen thanked her and summoned the Golden Rock Worm King, which was now the size of an ox. It quickly squirmed to the bodies and started to swallow. Huang Fu Pinking and Wang Dongling were both shocked by how the worm ate its food. They had seen nothing like this since there were not a lot who kept advanced beast soul pets. Mr. Han, is this a sacred blood beast soul pet? Huang Fu looked at Han Sen and asked. It is, but it's basically useless. All it does is eating. Han Sen laughed. He gained the beast soul of the Golden Rock Worm King when he was with Wang Mingmeng, so he did not hide it from them. Plus, everyone knew it was hard to make a beast soul pet transform, let alone a sacred blood one. Han Sen was trying to seize every one opportunity for him to feed the Worm King. You are full of surprises. It's so impressive that you have a scared blood pet. I've always wanted one. If you could sell it to me, I promise that I will pay handsomely, Huang Fu said unexpectedly. Before Han Sen answered, Wang Dongling could not help saying, Pinking, what do you need a beast soul like this for? It is almost impossible to make a sacred blood beast soul transform. Without a lot of sacred blood meat, that could never be done. Han Sen chuckled inwardly and thought, This guy is so dumb. That was just a probe. She does not really want to buy the Worm King. Huang Fu heard Wang Dongling and said with a smile, I just really like it. Would Mr. Han be willing to sell? Han Sen smiled faintly and said, Miss Huang Fu, if you like it, of course I could sell. But I have spent quite some energy to feed the Golden Rock Worm King and the price would be high. I suggest that we barter. I could trade this sacred blood beast soul with another. What do you think? Huang Fu pondered and said, I also need sacred blood beast souls. Do you accept cash? I am willing to buy it with a hundred million. Han Sen slightly shook his head. I am sorry for Miss Huang Fu. I am not short of money and would only consider another sacred blood beast soul. It is really a pity. Huang Fu seemed to feel genuinely sorry. The conversation had ended. Huang Fu never wanted to buy the beast soul pet, but her probe did not get her what she wanted to know. But Han Sen did make her feel alarming. She had an intriguing smile on when seeing him. 
because Hu and Fu Pinking and Wang Dongling had joined them, Han Sen did not need to do much. He simply protected Wang Mingmang to hunt and did not fight himself. Wang Dongling, on the other hand, had been very eager to show off in front of Hu and Fu. He was constantly killing creatures, making Wang Mingmang quite unhappy. Wang Mingmang planned to practice her skills in Devil Desert. Mr. Han's Warframe skills are the best among the unevolved. I wonder which aspect are you good at when it comes to martial arts. Huang Fu Pinking wanted to see how well Han Sen could fight when they saw the mutant creatures, but Wang Dongling was quite eager to show off and her plan failed. There is nothing in particular that I am good, Han Sen casually replied, wondering if he should end the trip early. With these two following, he could not achieve anything. With his skills in Warframe, Mr. Han must have spent all his time on that, Wang Dongling cut in. Han Sen almost laughed out loud. Wang Dongling was definitely the worst teammate ever. He did not understand the minds of Huang Fu at all and was playing cover for Han Sen. Huang Fu frowned. As astute as her, she was impatient about Wang Dongling, who had disrupted her probe for Han Sen. Wang Mingmang also felt amused. Seeing it getting awkward, she said, Brother Han is in the archery department, so he is good at archery, but definitely not as good as pinking. Han Sen being an archery student was reported by various media, and Wang Mingmang felt it was okay to share that. So Mr. Han, you are in the archery department. We shall have a little competition later. Huang Fu did not pay any special attention to Han Sen before and only learned his name via the Dig In commercial. Knowing he was an archery student, she was quite delighted. I think we should forget it. My archery skills are quite ordinary. Han Sen was tired to cope with Huang Fu. As pretty as she was, this woman was too cunning. Han Sen did not like women like her. Pinking, do not embarrass him. He must have spent all his time on warframes instead of archery. If you want to compete, I can join you. I have practiced archery for a long time, Wang Dongling said with a smile. Han Sen and Wang Mingmang exchanged a glance, and both of them twitched the corners of their mouths. This guy was so dumb that he was almost cute. Huang Fu was about to burst with rage. She thought, Wang Dongling you must be a pig. Han Sen is obviously Wang Mingmang's protector. If Han Sen had nothing special about him, would the Wangs trust Mingmang alone with him in such a dangerous place? Huang Fu was so mad that she stopped talking. The four continued into Devil Desert. After a while, Han Sen suddenly looked up at the sky and said grimly, We should go back. So soon, Wang Dongling slightly hesitated, not understanding what make Han Sen say so. Huang Fu Pinking and Wang Mingmang looked in the direction of Han Sen's sight and saw two black feathered beasts circling in the sky. You are worried about the black feathered beasts? Huang Fu lowered her voice and asked. Han Sen nodded. These days there have always been black feathered beasts around us. Maybe it has something to do with that large group of them. Wang Dongling said with a confident smile, Mr. Han, you worry too much. They are merely beasts and not as intelligent as you think they are. And even if they come here, I could kill as many as there are. Han Sen did not have time to explain to Wang Dongling. He summoned his mutant three-eyed beast mount and called Wang Mingmeng. Mingmeng, let's go. Han Sen had seen what the sacred blood fox king could do, and these black feathered beasts might also have a king like that. Constantly seeing them around gave him a bad feeling. Since he had taken Wang Mingmeng here, he needed to be responsible for the safety, not to mention the trust she placed in him. Sister, let's go together. Wang Mingmeng summoned her big white bear and asked Hong Fu Pinking. Huang Fu nodded and summoned her mount, following the two. Wang Dongling had to summon his mount and follow them. He murmured, just a few black feathered beasts. What's to be afraid about? Han Sen simply ignored him, and guarded Wang Mingmang run at full speed. Half an hour later, the sky darkened. It was daytime and in a desert, but the sun was suddenly gone. The black feathered beasts rushed toward them like bats. The four were filled with aghast. This group was even bigger than last time. They must be more than 10,000. Among them many had wings like iron, which indicated they were mutant. Among the black feathered beasts, there was a red one over 9 feet long and its wingspan more than 60 feet roaring and snapping. In its roar, the horrifying black feathered beasts were like soldiers, launching organized attacks at them. A scared blood black feathered beast, Huang Fu cried. Wang Dongling's face was grim. He summoned beast soul armor, his white wings and a pair of beast soul knives, throwing himself at the black feathered beasts. He seemed to plan to get rid of the black feathered beast king first. But Han Sen put away his mutant mount and jumped on the big white bear's back. 
He shouted, Ming Meng, to the southeast cliff. Wang Ming Meng rode the big white bear at full speed over there. Standing on the bear's back, Han Sen summoned his horn bow and mutant black stinger arrows, aiming at the black feathered beasts. Huang Fu did not expect Han Sen to act so decisively. She threw a glance at Wang Dongling who was in the center of the beasts, and urged her mount to follow Han Sen and Wang Ming Meng. In the meantime, she summoned beast soul bow and arrows, and turned back to shoot at the beasts from time to time. Her archery skills were truly great, and she had more than one beast soul arrows. With her mount carrying her at full speed, she managed to shoot seven beast soul arrows at the same time, killing the seven black feathered beasts closest to her. Han Sen did not mind her. Whenever there was a black feathered beast coming close, he would simple whack it with her horn bow. With the Geno points he had, he had unparalleled strength. Although the bow was no blade, it was still sacred blood and blew the black feathered beasts away instantaneously. None could approach the white bear. Huang Fu's mount had great speed and kept up with the white bear, sharing the protection from Han Sen. At least she did not need to worry about beasts on his side. Wang Dongling regretted immediately after flying among the black feathered beasts. There were simply too many of them. Groups of mutant black feathered beasts surrounded him, leaving him no chance to approach the sacred blood one. His situation was highly risky. Although he had a pair of knives and was using them to the extreme, he could not block the black feathered beasts coming at him in all directions. One got a chance and bit on his unprotected thigh. Ouch! Wang Dongling screamed and kicked the beast away, turning around to run. But the group of mutant black feathered beasts would never let him go easily. Flapping their iron wings, they snapped at him and he was stuck in a bloody fight. Soon his skin was ripped apart everywhere and blood was welling. At this time, Han Sen and Wang Mingmeng had rushed to the cliff which was more than 60 feet tall, standing aloof in the sand like a yellow cake. The bastards are too fast. We can't run away. Let's fight them here. At a corner, Han Sen carried Wang Mingmeng and jumped down from the big white bear's back. He turned his back to the cliff and stood in front of Wang Mingmeng. Having summoned a black chopper, he slashed at a black feathered beast coming at them, cutting it in half. This was one of the two mutant beast souls he gained from Gu Ming. It was called the beast chopper and was much more useful in a melee like this than lighter weapons. Huang Fu Pinking also jumped off her mount and came next to Han Sen and summoned a pair of daggers, fighting off the black feathered beasts. She knew that if they fought as a team, there might be a chance for them to survive, whereas she would be doomed if fighting alone. But even if they were against the rock and did not need to worry about attacks coming from behind, Huang Fu still felt her harding racing. She regretted taking the risk alone. Wang Dongling had some strength, but no brain, and was by no means helpful. Ah, uh, Wang Dongling screamed and screamed, making the three's hearts sink. But they did not have much energy to think about him, as they could barely deal with the overwhelming black feathered beasts. Blood soon colored the rocks and sand on the ground red. The bodies of the black feathered beasts almost buried Han Sen and the girls, limiting their space of movements. Bang! Suddenly a bloody body fell from above in front of the three. It was a headless body, and looked like it belonged to Wang Dongling. And in the sky, the black feathered beast king was grabbing the head of Wang Dongling, and let out a cry of triumph. The scene sent a chill down Huang Fu's spine. Her face became grim as she felt doomed. With so many black feathered beasts, it would take them a while to kill them all even if the beasts did not fight back, not to mention the mutant and sacred blood black feathered beasts. And now they had been trapped in the bodies of the black feathered beasts. If they did not manage to go out, they would be torn apart before the king came to them. When Huang Fu was in despair, she saw a giant golden object in a sudden. It turned out to be the golden rock worm king. Summoned by Han Sen, the Golden Rock Worm King quickly ripped at the beast's bodies. With its size like a rhinoceros, the Worm King pushed away all the bodies blocking the three away. The black feathered beasts threw them at the Worm King. However, the Worm King's shell was already really hard and the claws of the beasts could not harm it at all. The Worm King did not mind them and continued to devour the dead bodies. With the help of the Worm King, the three had gained space to move around, wielding the chopper seamlessly. Han Sen killed all the black feathered beasts that dared to come close. Primitive black feathered beast killed. Beast soul of primitive black feathered beast gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 primitive geno points. With so many black feathered beasts killed, Han Sen eventually gained a primitive beast soul. Huang Fu killed about the same number of beasts as he did. Dancing with her daggers and using different martial arts, she caused the great damage to the beasts, making Han Sen quite surprised. But the black feathered beasts were so great in numbers that they could never kill them all. Han Sen frowned and knew this would not work. The sacred blood black feathered beast king was determined to kill them. Last time they scattered because Huang Fu had lots of men with her, and now there were only a few humans, so they had come back. 
The Beast King did not care about its own kind. Han Sen knew their strength could not last them very long. Lin Man, stay here and I will lead the beasts away. After I have finished, run back and leave the desert, Han Sen said. Huan Fu felt that he must be lying. The only reason Wang Ming Meng was safe was his protection. Once he was gone, how could she fight all these black feathered beasts? And with so many black feathered beasts here, how many could he lead away? Even if he could get half to chase him, Wang Ming Meng still needed to deal with the rest. In Huan Fu's view, Han Sen was simply making an excuse for leaving Wang Ming Meng and escaping on his own. When Huang Fu Pinking was guessing, Wang Ming Meng said, Take care, Brother Han. Are you really one of the Wangs? Can't you see he is running alone? And you are still worried about his safety? Huang Fu thought, but she suddenly saw Han Sen reached out a hand, and a blue suite of crystal beast soul armor covered Wang Ming Meng's body from head to toe. The armor was simply like a beautiful piece of art, showing off Wang Ming Meng's nice body shape. She suddenly looked like a goddess of war from heaven. At the same time, Han Sen summoned his horn bow and black stinger arrow and shot the arrow at the Beast King. The horn bows attached great strength to the arrow, which buzzed as it flew across, and Han Sen had tied a thread at the arrow's knock at some point. With the other end of the thread in his hand, he was carried by the arrow and went close to the Beast King. Holding the thread in one hand, one a sharp green dagger in the other, Han Sen slayed every black feathered beast that dared to approach him. This dagger was the other beast's soul that he gained from Gu Ming. The chopper was too heavy and big, which would weigh him down as he rushed to the Beast King. That was why he had used the dagger instead. Watching Han Sen using an arrow to approach the sacred blood Beast King, Huang Fu was dazed. Originally, she had thought Han Sen was about to leave Wang Mingmeng alone and escape. So, she had made up her mind that as long as Han Sen moved, she would follow him to make her way out. But in fact, Han Sen was trying to approach the Beast King flying in the sky like this. She had not expected this to happen. What was the use of doing this? He could not even fly, so how could he cause the sacred blood Beast King any harm? Once the arrow slowed down, he would be shredded into pieces by the numerous beasts. Stupid. He is more stupid than Wang Dongling, Huan Fu thought. Glancing at Wang Mingmeng, Huan Fu found that with the armor, the black feathered beasts could not even leave any mark on it, let alone hurt the girl. Sacred blood beast soul armor. Huan Fu was shocked and her expression became complicated. With such armor and his strength, he could have easily go out himself. However, he had chosen to risk his life and leave the armor to Wang Mingmeng to protect her. This man is either mad or arrogant. Huang Fu looked up and saw Han Sen in the sky. The arrow had lost the momentum because of his weight and the obstruction from the black feathered beasts. Han Sen did not make it to the sacred blood beast king, and mutant black feathered beasts started to throw themselves at him. He had lost all means of defense in the air. But at this time, Huang Fu suddenly saw a red shadow. Suddenly Han Sen was covered in red armor and his short and black hair had become long and blonde. With a ruby crown on his head, he was glistening in the sun. Once he had shapeshifted into a fairy queen, Han Sen felt the world had slowed down. All the mutant black feathered beasts seemed to act in slow motion. Seeing the first mutant beast approaching, Han Sen held his hands down on it and jumped over its head, his dagger cutting its throat. Mutant black feathered beast killed. Beast soul of mutant black feathered beast gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 primitive geno points. Han Sen was not moved at all by the voice. Without a pause, he stepped on a mutant beast and sent it down to the ground. With this step, Han Sen instantly reached another mutant beast. Beheading it with his dagger, he turned to push another beast to jump up and dodge the blow from two other beasts. Huang Fu was shocked by Han Sen's ghostly move in the air. His smooth movements and killing made it hard to believe that he was human. At least Huang Fu had never seen anyone who could accomplish this in First God's Sanctuary. I have never heard of such a person in steel armor shelter. Huang Fu thought Han Sen must be one of the chosen, but he was not even in the final rounds. But then she thought that although Han Sen was impressive, it was Dollar who represented steel armor shelter this year. This way, it was understandable that Han Sen never became the champion of his shelter. In the middle of her thoughts, Huang Fu suddenly saw Han Sen jump from the back of a mutant beast and summoned his horn bow, shooting an arrow and followed it to throw himself at the sacred blood beast king that was commanding the beast's attacks. This time Han Sen was really close to it. The beast king screeched and simply flew higher, flapping its giant red wings, making Han Sen miss. Han Sen stayed calm and shook the thread in his hand. Once again he drew the string and shot the arrow which carried him to the Beast King. Now he was even closer. He slashed at the Beast King's throat with the dagger. Seeing it was too late to fly away, the Beast King roared and grabbed the dagger with its red paw, 
blocking it from moving further. And its other paw clawed at Han Sen's face like a red lightning bolt. Han Sen let go of the dagger and grabbed its arm with both hands. Like a snake, he coiled around the Beast King's body using Ghost Haunt. With a twist, he broke one of its fingers. Roar! Screamed the sacred blood black feathered Beast King, flapping its wings and rolling around, wanting to get Han Sen off its back. No matter how it rolled, Han Sen stuck to its back and could not be touched. Hearing the screams of the Beast King, the black feathered beasts returned to save it. Suddenly, all beasts surrounding Wang Mingmeng and Huang Fu Pinking went to save their king and rushed to Han Sen. Sister, let's go, called Wang Mingmeng on the back of her big white bear, disappearing in the direction of the desert's border. You won't wait for him. Huang Fu looked at Wang Mingmeng, feeling odd. Han Sen went there to save Wang, and she would just leave. Wang Mingmeng said calmly, Others might not be able to do this, but Brother Han is. I would only become a burden to him if I were to stay. When I get somewhere safe, he will come to me. Huang Fu paused. Although Han Sen was indeed very strong, Wang Mingmeng's trust seemed a bit too much. It was a group of beasts with a sacred blood king. Huang Fu did not believe Han Sen could easily make it back. Sister, we should go, Wang Mingmeng said and urged her white bear to accelerate. Glancing at the beasts in the sky rolling like clouds, Huang Fu followed Wang Mingmeng with complex feelings. Seeing the girls had left, Han Sen was relieved. He shapeshifted back to himself and put on the black beetle armor. Still on the sacred blood beast king's back, he repeatedly punched at the back of its head. The sacred blood beast king was quite tough. With the Geno points Han Sen had at this point, his strength was considerable. However, the Beast King was only bruised after taking a dozen punches from him. Screeching in pain, it buried itself in a dune below. Han Sen thought, has it lost its mind? Holding the Beast King with his arms, Han Sen planned to take its life when it was in the sand. However, the place where they landed was full of shifting sand. Both the Beast King and Han Sen fell in deep. Under the protection of the sacred blood armor, Han Sen did not suffer from too much impact. Thump! Han Sen and the sacred blood beast king fell on the rocks. Bearing the pain, Han Sen looked up and was surprised to find them in a huge underground cave. Han Sen could not tell how large the cave was. Stalactites were so tall that they were like skyscrapers. Many unknown vines were wrapped on the rocks, and there was an underground river. And on the surrounding rocks and vines, blue lights that looked like stars were everywhere. They lit up the dark cave and with Han Sen's good vision, he could see everything clearly. The sacred blood black feathered beast king tried to wiggle free, but was pinned back down by Han Sen. Growling, it did not struggle again. As Han Sen was wondering why it had stopped, he saw the lights were disturbed by the beast king's growl, and started to fly toward Han Sen and the beast king. What is that? Han Sen was shocked. After taking a closer look at them, he noticed that the lights were each a blue butterfly the size of his palm. Their blue wings were glistening, and soon the blue butterflies had reached them. Only then did Han Sen know that the Beast King was not here by accident. It was trying to use these butterflies to get rid of Han Sen. Han Sen became vigilant and slashed at a butterfly before it could fall on him. Primitive creature ghost butterfly killed. No beast soul gained. Meat inedible. As Han Sen was puzzled, he suddenly saw that dead ghost butterfly burst into blue flames. Han Sen rolled to the other side of the Beast King and the flames fell on the Beast King. It suddenly cried in pain, its fur burning. Flocks of ghost butterflies rushed over, hitting Han Sen and the Beast King one after another. Once they were in collision, they would immediately burst into blue flames. There were simply too many ghost butterflies and neither of them could many to avoid them. The Beast King growled from time to time from pain. Although Han Sen's sacred blood armor could protect him from burning, it could do nothing about the heat, and Han Sen was burned inside. Han Sen cursed the Beast King inwardly, but at this point, he was in no mood to deal with it. Han Sen threw himself in the underground river, since otherwise he would become barbecued. As Han Sen jumped into the underground river, the Beast King followed him and jumped. It was very swift considering its size. With its wings folded, it swam downstream quickly. Han Sen gritted his teeth and followed up. There were so many ghost butterflies, many of which were mutant creatures, generating great heat. But the Beast King was so fast that it almost disappeared from his sight. Han Sen would not like to see that and shot an arrow at it underwater. The arrow could not travel too far underwater. Fortunately, Han Sen was not too far from the Beast King. The black stinger arrow hit its wing and the thread attached to the arrow was entangled with its feathers. When the Beast King moved forward, Han Sen was carried to go as well. It was faster than a fish, pulling Han Sen forward. Is it an amphibian? Having followed the creature in the water for a while, Han Sen could no longer hold his breath. He had not evolved to the stage where he could breathe underwater, whereas the Beast King seemed to be able to do that. Otherwise, it would have been out of breath by this time. 
Hansen gritted his teeth and summoned the Black Stinger arrow back, leaving the Beast King alone and stuck his head out of the water to breathe. He looked around and found himself in the cave still. There were still some ghost butterflies, but only several of them, staying still on the rocks and vines. Since he had lost the Beast King and this place was not dangerous, Hansen was in no hurry. Looking at a ghost butterfly on the rocks, Hansen shot an arrow at it. With a pop, the butterfly turned into flames. Primitive creature ghost butterfly killed. Beast soul of primitive ghost butterfly gained. Meat inedible. Hansen was thrilled. He had good luck today in terms of beast soul. Although it was merely a primitive beast soul, it was a one-off beast soul like the wasp arrow that Son of Heaven once used, which was generally more powerful than the beast souls on the same level. In addition to the primitive ghost butterfly beast soul, he had also gained a primitive beast soul and a mutant beast soul from black feathered beasts. Type of primitive ghost butterfly beast soul, one-off hidden weapon. Type of beast soul of primitive black feathered beast, flying. Type of beast soul of mutant black feathered beast, flying. Hansen saw the latter two and became overjoyed. There were so few creatures near his shelter that would produce flying beast souls that few people had wings in the entire steel armor shelter. These black feathered beasts actually produced flying beast souls, which was great. He needed the wings himself as well, since he could only use the purple winged dragon wings when he was dollar. Hansen only regretted that he did not manage to kill the sacred blood beast king. Otherwise he would have a chance to get another pair of sacred blood wings. I need to go back and kill a few more black feathered beasts. Even the primitive flying beast souls could be sold at a good price, since many youths would buy them just for the look. Hansen summoned the ghost butterfly beast soul, and suddenly a blue butterfly flew into his palm, changing into a butterfly-shaped boomerang. The two wings of the weapon were thin and sharp, looking rather scary. Hansen threw the butterfly boomerang out, which whirled in the air and came toward Hansen. Hansen was startled and quickly dodged the boomerang. The boomerang's sharp edge cut into the rock behind him and burst into blue flames. S-T. Hansen was stunned by the power of a primitive ghost butterfly boomerang. If he could get a mutant one, it would probably even be a great threat to sacred blood creatures. The shape of the boomerang was quite unique, and he must learn some special methods to use it. Hansen was very intrigued. There were ghost butterflies in the cave and he could easily gain a lot of beast soul boomerangs if he killed all he saw on his way. As for the danger, he was not worried at all. If he shot the arrows hidden in the underground river, he could make a dive whenever it seemed dangerous. And he also had his mutant black barracuda mount and did not need to swim and dive himself. The ghost flame butterflies could not harm him anyway. Well, I will go along the underground river and kill all the ghost butterflies I see. Then I can exit from where I fell. If I encounter the black feathered beasts again, Maybe I could even get a few more flying beast souls to sell, thought Han Sen, going up along the underground river. The sacred blood black feathered beast king had actually taken him to a wonderland. Han Sen killed numerous ghost butterflies, which could not cause him any damage at all. Although there was no meat, Han Sen had harvested a lot of butterfly beast souls. In the end, he had gained two dozen primitive ones and seven mutant ones. Another flock of ghost butterflies flew over, and Han Sen welcomed them waving his chopper. Ouch. In the blue flames, a ball of flame that was nearly purple burned on him. He uttered a piercing scream before jumping into the underground river like a rabbit. Sacred blood creature ghost butterfly killed. Beast soul of sacred blood ghost butterfly gained. Meat inedible. When Hansen crawled out from the river, his armor was greatly damaged. Many parts were melted, bearing his charred flesh. The sacred blood armor no longer had lost all its prestige. Struggling to get up, Hansen took the armor back. It was lucky that the armor was not ruined completely and could recover over time. At the same time, Hansen was also glad that the armor had blocked most of the harm brought by the sacred blood ghost butterfly, which was very powerful. Since Hansen had gained the black beetle armor, he had not suffered so much as this time. He was burned badly all over. Had he been farther from the river or a bit slower than he was, he would have been burned into ash right now. Hansen still had some lingering fear. As his package was burned, he had nothing left, let alone medicine. Hansen had to use jade skin, hoping to ease his burn. He had to recover a little before he could leave the cave. Using jade skin, Hansen felt a coolness calming his burn and easing his pain. Hansen ignored those ghost butterflies and traveled underwater on the back of the mutant black barracuda. Once in a while, he would take a breath above the water, not daring to disturb the ghost butterflies. The ghost butterflies were countless like stars in the galaxy. If he were to kill them all, it would probably take him forever. Leaving Devil Desert safely, he hunted several creatures for food on his way, and then met Wang Mingmang and others who came to look for him. Back to school, Hansen needed rest for his burns to heal 
which gave him time to go to lectures. This day, Han Sen was in a lecture of theories of hyper geno arts. While listening, Han Sen was playing with a palm-sized butterfly boomerang in his hand. The blacksmith who had sold Han Sen's e steel weapons had custom made it for him according to the size and weight of the beast's sole butterfly boomerangs. The blacksmith's craftsmanship was impressive, and this almost looked the same as the beast's souls. Han Sen had ordered a total of 10 butterfly boomerangs. He was only using these to practice, since he would have used his beast's soul ones up before he could practice properly. Han Sen had the foundation of Sleeva Blade and had looked up many atrial arts of hidden weapons, so he was able to learn how to use the boomerang on his own. Listening to the professor, Han Sen let the butterfly boomerang dance in his hand as if it was alive. Han Sen carried it everywhere to get the hang of it. Genius, can I ask you something? After class, several students went to Han Sen, and one of the M said to Han Sen, What? Han Sen was slightly surprised, as he did not know this person. Genius, so we are from Martial Arts Society and my name is Zhu Kayan. We have registered for a black and white boxing competition on the Skynet, and it is a team challenge. We have four now and need one more player. Can you join us? After the student finished, all four of them looked at Han Sen full of hope. There are many who are good at black and white boxing. Why have you come to me? Han Sen asked, puzzled. So if it is any other game, we could afford to lose, but this one is different. We are against Sint. Germain and we cannot lose. That's why we've asked you to help, said the student excitedly. Seeing Han Sen was at loss, the students knew that Han Sen was unaware of the conflicts between Black Hawk and Sin. Germain and started to explain. Soon Han Sen learned that in terms of martial arts, the two academies were bitter rivals. After Han Sen heard them out, the students looked at him nervously. Although they knew Han Sen was great at black and white boxing, he was not a society member and did not have the obligation to join them. Han Sen saw their look, pondered and said, when is the game scheduled? If there is no time conflict with my schedule, I could join you. The students were ecstatic. It will be in the weekend. Other matches are unimportant, but the one on October 6th was against St. Germain. We really need you for this one, but we need to include your name in our registration now. No problem. I should be able to participate in that one. Han Sen smiled and said, also, do not call me genius. It does not represent all my strengths. Okay, so we will call you Hansen then. Here is the form, you have to fill it out before we submit. Zukayan handed a form to Hansen excitedly. Right, genius. Hansen. For the Skynet game, you need to register with an ID, so fill that in as well. Liu Yuhu who was one of the students reminded him. Okay, Hansen thought about it and filled the form out. Black Fist Emperor. The students saw his ID and were dazed. That was so arrogant that they did not believe Han Sen had chosen such an ID. It can't be already used, can it? Han Sen looked at the students and asked. No, it can't be. We are registering as a group, so there will be a prefix of the school name. Even if the ID is used, it will still be fine, Zhu Kayan quickly said. The students thought to themselves, even without the prefix, no one would be so daring to use such an ID. But they did not say anything. If someone else had used such an ID, they might try to talk that person out of it. However, when it came to Han Sen, it seemed okay. At this point, he had almost recovered from his burns. Recently, he had been in so many classes that he was a bit tired of studying and decided to go test his physical fitness. He had not tested his fitness in a long time and had no idea how well he could do. After reaching the test hall, Han Sen chose to pay for a private test room so that none could see his test result. In fact, Han Sen only planned to test a few key items, such as strength, speed and reflex. Bang 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 bang. With a fierce blow on the machine, the number 15.4656 showed on the screen. And as Han Sen bolted, his speed was rated 15.76665. He was rated above 15 in all his test items, which surprised him. According to the statistics of the Alliance, when one maxed out on all four kinds of Geno points, one could reach 15 in these items. If one was especially good at certain things, then one might be rated 16 or 17 in one or two items. But now Han Sen was quite lacking in sacred and mutant Geno points, and his test results were already higher than 15, which was a bit scary. If he continued like this, even Han Sen could not be not sure how high his fitness index would be when he maxed out on everything. Han Sen guessed that this was because he had practiced jade skin. Hyper Geno Arts could enhance one's fitness, but he had never heard of any improvement like his. Normally, one who had practiced Hyper Geno Arts could reach 17 or 18 when one maxed out on all Geno points, 
and might reach 20 in one or two items. But Han Sen estimated his fitness index could probably pass 20 when he maxed out, which was something unheard of before. Coming out of the test room, Han Sen encountered a man who had stopped and seemed to recognize Han Sen. But Han Sen did not recognize this guy, so he continued on. So you will participate in that black and white boxing competition. The man suddenly said. Han Sen stopped and looked around to make sure this man was talking to him. Yes, you are. Han Sen looked him up and down. This man was about 20. He was tall and slender and his face had some tough lines. He looked like a shining weapon with a unique sharpness. Ah Young Zyosin. The man's voice was without emotion. You are him. Glad to be your teammate. Ah Young Zyosin was a celebrity in the martial arts department and Han Sen had heard of him. He was the slugger in all kinds of competitions and Han Sen thought he would be in this one as well. Seeing Han Sen reaching out his hand, Aoyang was not about to shake it. Aoyang Jiaosan said coldly, I did not sign up for that. Why? Han Sen was surprised. As one of the best players, how was it possible that Aoyang was not on the team? I know we won't win, so that would be a waste of time. It's pointless to waste one's time and energy on some stupid game like that anyway. Aoyang regarded Han Sen. I have seen the match between you and Yu Mengjai. You have talent. Are you interested in joining the martial arts society? With my training, you could become an excellent martial arts player. The two of us might have a chance at the championship of the alliance tournament. Looking at Aoyang, Han Sen smiled and said, I understand now. It was because you did not want to participate that the team was one man short. And that was why they came to me. Do you want to transfer to the martial arts society? Aoyang continued to ask with no expression on his face. Well, let's make a bet. And if you win, I can promise to join your society. If you lose, you will join this black and white boxing game. Han Sen laughed. I never bet on luck, Aoyang said quietly. Black and white boxing duel, best of nine, Han Sen said. Okay, Aoyang agreed without any hesitation. Shall we flip a coin to decide who attacks first? Which side do you want? Han Sen took out a coin and put it in his palm. Tails, Aoyang said. Han Sen casually threw the coin in the air and caught it. It was Tails. You first. Han Sen saw Aoyang's fist as soon as he finished the two words. Aoyang's punch was fast and ruthless as if there was no turning back. But Han Sen did not dodge or even raise his hand. He simply stood there watching Aoyang's fist approaching his face. Aoyang's punch stopped less than an inch away from Han Sen's nose. The contrast between the dynamic and static forces was so strong that it was dazzling. Deliberate in counsel, prompt in action. Well done. Han Sen smiled. Losing is losing. Your turn, Aoyang said. A punch of that kind of speed and strength was not enough to deceive Han Sen, who did not even try to block it and was confident that it was a white fist. Do you know what idea I am going to use? Han Sen did not throw a punch, but smiled at Aoyang and asked. That has nothing to do with me, said Aoyang indifferently. No, it has. My 499 is Black Fist Emperor. So, for this punch, I will be using a black fist. Pay attention and don't copy my reaction. At least you need to block it with your hand, so that you don't get injured too badly. Han Sen said earnestly. Cut the crap. Just attack. Aoyang had been in numerous competitions and was tough mentally. He was not the least swayed by Han Sen's words. Han Sen suddenly threw his punch at Aoyang in an equally fast and ruthless manner. Aoyang Zyosin was not shaken by Han Sen's words. Staring at Han Sen, he was making his judgment based on his ability and experience. There was no doubt that this was a white fist. Aoyang Zyosin thought it was simply impossible to be a black fist. Verbal attacks would not work on me. This punch was not provocative at all and would never be a black fist. Aoyang Zyosin did not even move, calmly watching Han Sen's fist approaching. Like Han Sen, he did not even try to block it with his hands because he was confident that this was a white fist. Since Han Sen did not really use his strength, his fist would stop when it got close to his face. Deep in his thoughts, Aoyang suddenly felt a soreness in his nose, and then he fell back involuntarily before he sat on the ground. How could it be a black fist? Ignoring his nosebleed, Aoyang looked blankly at Han Sen. Han Sen offered tissues to Aoyang and said with a smile, I told you so. Aoyang did not take the tissues, but wiped the blood off his nose and stood up. He said firmly, best of nine, that was just one. Han Sen smiled and put the tissues back. Standing opposite Aoyang, he said, I'll continue then. Aoyang said nothing, staring at Han Sen. He would not miss his slightest movements, which were the basis on which he would make his judgment. Once one used great strength, one's muscles would move. The key was to see through one's disguise. Han Sen looked at Aoyang who looked grim, pursed his lips and threw another punch. This time, Aoyang had seen clearly that although Han Sen's muscles looked tightened, the direction of this punch would not be forward, 
which meant this could not be a black fist. This time you can't fool me. Ayang stood firmly, raising his arms to block Han Sen's fist. Although he had judged this fist to be white, Aoyang still raised his arms. It seemed that he had taken Han Sen for a serious opponent, so he still prepared for the worst scenario when he was confident about his decision. Boom. Han Sen's fist hit Aoyang on the arm. Aoyang's body shook but did not fall back. Aoyang was pale since Han Sen's punch was still a black fist with enough strength. He was wrong. Two, said Han Sen with a smile. Aoyang looked at Han Sen and was puzzled. Can he really hide his strength so well? Aoyang cast an odd look at Han Sen. Black and white boxing was only a popular practice in martial arts, and the key was the yin and yang. There had only been matches of black and white boxing recently. Although it could not be regarded as the mainstream of martial arts, it was now quite popular. After all, it would make a great match to watch. Aoyang had participated in a lot of black and white boxing games and seen a lot of black and white boxing masters. A lot of people had mastered yin and yang forces, but whenever they throw a punch, he could still tell. Aoyang had rich experience and was particularly sensitive about his opponent's intentions, which was an advantage for him in black and white boxing games, especially when he was the defensive side. The probability of his misjudgment was very low. Even if there were occasional mistakes, it would be because his opponent had used something he had never seen. And after he got familiar with it, it would not work anymore. But in the two rounds against Han Sen, he had felt something different from all his previous experience. That feeling was hard to describe. Han Sen's moves were misleading not only because of the false appearance of his body, but because Aoyang felt that Han Sen did not intend to hit him. There has to be flaws. If it is something unknown to me, I can always find out how it works. Once I do, he can no longer fool me. Aoyang calmed down and got ready. Again, Aoyang slowly spit out the word. Bang. Han Sen threw a punch and Aoyang raised his arms. This time Han Sen punched harder, but Aoyang could still stand still. You are very fit. Han Sen regarded Aoyang, surprised. Although he still reserved his strength, Aoyang would not be able to block it with a fitness index below 13. Aoyang did not reply, because he lost again. Again, Aoyang was not discouraged. Han Sen threw another punch, and the result was the same, Aoyang took another black fist. This time, Han Sen deliberately weakened his strength, because he did not want people to know how good he actually was. To do well in black and white boxing was not just about strength, but also about fooling your opponent. For, this is your last chance, Han Sen looked at Aoyang and said, Go. Aoyang did not hesitate to say. Han Sen threw another fierce punch at Aoyang. It was as fast as a bullet. Suddenly, Aoyang moved away and dodged Han Sen's fist. At this critical time, Aoyang did not insist on his own judgment and tried to block, but chose to dodge. Since whenever I think you were using a white fist, you used a black one. Then if I act counterintuitively, I could beat you, Aoyang said with a smile of self-confidence. But very soon, Aoyang's smile froze. Chen Ling was both happy and worried. She was happy that Han Sen had promised to participate, while worried that Aoyang had refused to participate. If Aoyang and Han Sen could join forces, maybe Blackhawk could be the champion of the Skynet competition. Although this game was not that important, but Blackhawk had not been a champion in a long time. This championship would still be a big comfort to her, a part-time coach of the martial arts society. Suddenly Chen Ling saw Aoyang coming through the door and quickly walked to him. Aoyang, I know the old players' retirement reflect negatively on our results, but you need to give the young players a chance to grow. Count me in, cut in Aoyang before Chen could finish. Do not rush to refuse. You listen to me, we have invited Han Sen in the match against Sint. Germain. If you, Chen Ling suddenly realized what he had said and was surprised. You just said you will participate. If you have the form, Aoyang said indifferently. Chen Ling quickly asked someone to bring him the application. They could not imagine how his mind was changed. Because I lost to Han Sen and he told me to. Aoyang filled the form out. But Chen Ling and the members of martial arts society were shocked. How many rounds did you play? Zhu Kayan asked. Five. Aoyang casually replied. So that is three to two. Zhu Kayan continued to ask. Five to zero. He was five. And I was zero, Aoyang said, giving the form that he had filled out to Zhu Kayan who opened his mouth so wide that it could fit a duck egg. Five to zero. Han Sen did that. Not only all members of the martial arts society were dumbfounded, but Chen Ling also looked surprised. The worst score Aoyang had seen was one to four. And his opponent was someone who ranked first in black and white boxing in the alliance. Brother Han. Han Sen saw an attractive woman after he stepped out of a gravity trainer. Hyun Fu Pinking, why are you here? Han Sen paused and asked. Not being a Black Hawk student, Hyun Fu was not supposed to show up here. I am studying as an exchange student at Black Hawk. 
In the next two years, I will stay here. Huang Fu looked at Hansen with a smile. In order to come to Blackhawk, she spent quite some efforts. Hansen thought it was a bit too coincidental. Seems that Brother Han would not welcome me. Huang Fu leaned forward, blinking at Hansen. Hansen then noticed that Huang Fu was wearing a pair of jeans, Chelsea boots, and a low-cut ecru blouse that showed a little too much, making the young man feel hot. That is quite busty, thought Han Sen, unable to move his eyes from her seductive curve. The last time he saw her, she was wearing beast soul armor, so it was hard to tell. But this time in clothing like this, her breasts would attract so much attention, not just from guys, but from girls as well. Huang Fu saw Han Sen's eyes fall on her chest and slightly leaned further. Suddenly Han Sen thought his nose would bleed if he did not leave right away. Ahem, uh -huh, Ms. Huang Fu, do you need me for something? Han Sen subconsciously rubbed his nose for fear that there would be blood. Nothing import, just to say hi. I just arrived and there must be a lot that I don't know. Please help me if you could. Huang Fu smiled. Han Sen was dazed by her look and figure. Of course, Han Sen suddenly felt it would be best if he stayed away from her. Also, two days until the auction of beast souls in steel armor shelter. Brother Han you must come. Huang Fu blinked. I will, but I'm wondering about the form of payment in the auction. Han Sen had sold a lot of stuff recently, plus his salary and endorsement fee. He had a total of more than 60 million, but it was obviously not enough to get a sacred blood beast soul with this kind of money. As long as the beast soul was not too shabby, it could easily sell at more than 100 million. Not to mention Son of Heaven who was super rich was also in the steel shelter, and Han Sen was no match to his in terms of wealth. Leave a dollar's work, and you can also barter. Huang Fu smiled at Han Sen. If you saw something you like, you could let me know and I could keep it for you. Han Sen thought, I haven't even seen the beast's souls. How would I know? Huang Fu saw through his mind and shook her hand in front of him. Her breasts were also moving and Han Sen almost passed out. There is the information of the beast's souls in the auction. Let me know if you like something and I can keep it. Huang Fu put the chip in his hands. You mean it. Han Sen was so happy that he wanted to insert the chip into his comlink right away. Don't rush. And this is not the best place to talk about things. This information is still a commercial secret at this point and we don't want others to see. Let's go, I will buy you lunch. Then, Huang Fu held the Han Sen's arm and took Han Sen out. Han Sen felt the softness on his arm and went blank, sister. I will buy you lunch. Han Sen felt that he was molested during this meal. Huang Fu sat next to him. When she spoke, her lips were almost touching his ears. The warmth from her breath ticked him. However, he was not thinking about the woman, but the beast souls. Huang Fu and her people were selling the beast souls that they had brought to steel armor shelter and made quite some money. But those were only the primitive beast souls and the beast souls for auction were at least mutant. Han Sen did not look carefully at mutant beast souls and directly turned to two sacred blood ones. One was a flying beast soul called Holy Bird, which was a pair of colorful wings. And the other one was a beast soul weapon that Han Sen had always wanted. It was a shiny silver harpoon only two feet long. Its blade and the tip were so shaped that it made one feel scared by looking at it. Han Sen fell in love with the harpoon at first glance. A harpoon required harder techniques than a dagger and was a very rare weapon. Han Sen was very interested in the sacred blood harpoon and checked its name. He then asked Huang Fu, Sister, how much is the three-blade harpoon? Huang Fu sat up and said, In principle, the two sacred blood ones had to be shown at the auction. But if you want it, I can sell it to you beforehand. In that case, we would have to trade with the estimated price. I am not the sole owner of the business and can do nothing about that. How much is it? Han Sen asked again. Huang Fu took out her cum link and showed Han Sen the price list. When Han Sen saw the price of the harpoon, he said bitterly, 230 million, that I cannot afford that. All his property added up to more than 60 million, and he had three warframes. He did not plan to sell Silver Killer and the Blue SKTS. Even if he sold the other SKTS, it would be an additional 70 million, which would still cover the price of the harpoon. The estimated price is certainly very high, mainly because this time Son of Heaven will be attending, Huang Fu said. If you really want it, I could give you an employee discount, after which it would be 180 million. Han Sen then understood the immense profit margin in the beast soul industry and also learned how much a sacred blood beast soul was worth. If you are willing to sign a contract and work for our company for two years, then the three blade harpoon can be paid as the salary to you, Huang Fu said slowly, looking at Han Sen. Han Sen hesitated and then laughed. I did not know that I would be worth 100 million per year. Huang Fu said, even if you are the spokesperson of SKTS, I would not pay that kind of money to hire you. 
but after I saw your ability in Devil Desert, I know you will be a great help for us to do business in other shelters. Do you want to join us? The reason why she went through the troubles to come to Blackhawk was to hire Han Sen. Thank you, sister. But I can't agree to the terms. Han Sen did not hesitate to refuse her. Although her people would travel to other shelters and run into advanced creatures, for business's sake, they would avoid risks, and that was not what Han Sen wanted. Well, let's change the subject then. Whenever you change your mind, you can always come to me. Huang Fu opened a bottle of wine and poured it into their glasses. Taking a sip, Huang Fu held her glass and said, As a member of the company, I have finished the work talk, and now we can talk about private matters. What are the private matters? Han Sen looked at her puzzled. Huang Fu suddenly hugged Han Sen's arm and asked with a charming smile, Brother Han, do you have a girlfriend? If not, would you consider me? Han Sen spewed the wine he just sipped on Huang Fu. Then he quickly took some paper towel to wipe it off her, but felt something was wrong. Under the paper towel were the magnificent boobs, which were bouncing when he wiped them. Hyu, Hyung Fu's cheeks turned crimson. Hyung Fu bit her lip and gave Han Sen a fierce stare, covering her wet blouse with her hands. Han Sen quickly took off his jacket and put it on Hyung Fu, covering the great view. Sister, now it's late and we should get back. We can talk next time we meet, Han Sen said. Leaving the private room embarrassed, Huang Fu thought of the places where Han Sen stroked and her face was red like a piece of red cloth. Han Sen walked away and looked at his hands. That was magnificent. Huang Fu was a calculating woman, and Han Sen was very sharp. When he touched her boobs, she had a sudden urge to kill him. Although she tried to hold it back, he still sensed it. And Han Sen also glanced at her comlink, which was blinking, and was likely to be recording. If he did anything else and she taped it and showed it to Jai Yanren, he would be seeking small gains at great cost. No, it should be seeking big gains. Han Sen corrected himself in his mind. Jai Yanren's were not small either, but somewhat smaller than Huang Fu. Wen Zixiu was now very unhappy. As an intern host and journalist of Black and White Boxing Contest show, she was assigned to work for the famous Fang Minkwen. Originally with her qualifications, she could not have been assigned to Shadow Fang Minkwen who was a big shot right now. The only reason she was here was her prominent family. She had thought she could show the world her talent under Fang's guidance. However, the first task Fang had assigned to her was to go to Black Hawk Military Academy. This black and white boxing competition on Skynet was sponsored by a well-known gaming platform, and all famous military schools had been invited to participate. Wen Zixu expected to be assigned to the schools that had ranked first or second last year, but Fang insisted that she go Black Hawk which was not even in top 16 last time. Although she had argued, Fang Minkwen still sent her there and said there would be a surprise. After Wen Zixu had done the interviews, she had even less faith in Blackhawk since she did not even see Aoyang Ziaosin during the interview. Well, I will just read more about Sint, Germain and talk more about them during the live. Wen Zixu returned the room arranged for her on campus, casually wrote a newsletter, and checked Sint, Germain's team online. She was doing a black and white boxing show because of her interest in it. Coach Chen, what do you think of this match? Black and white boxing is a one of Sint. Germain's strengths, not to mention Nalan Chengyuo's fame. What plan or strategy do you have? When Zixiu asked Chen Ling, no plan or strategy needed. Black Hawk will win, period. Chen Ling said casually. Chen Ling's answer made Wen Zixiu pause. She could not begin to understand Chen's confidence, because Chen Ling's answer was beyond her imagination. Her prepared materials were now useless. Mr. Aoyang, I would like to your opinion on Nalan Chengyuo. When Zixiu finally found a chance to interview Aoyang Ziaosin, I don't know him. Aoyang did not even lift his eyes. When Zixiu had no idea that her interviews had caused a debate in the Skynet, Fang Minkwen sent Wen Zixiu to Blackhawk not to fool her. Wen Zixiu was from an important family and as someone who cared about his future, Fang Minkwen had to take good care of her. He knew Han Sen would also participate in the game. And that was why he had sent Wen to Blackhawk. The moment Wen's show began, he promoted it in his own show, and many of his loyal fans and audience tuned to her program. Fang Minkwen was now doing great. All his shows had been successful. As he promoted Wen's show, Wen suddenly had more than 10 million audience watching. It chanced that one of the sent. Germain players was a fan of Fang Minkwen's and was watching his show in the lounge. Seeing the show promoted by Fang Minkwen was the live show of their match. He clicked in and became livid. Blackhawk, you think you are good. Wait till you see how we kick your asses, Wang Yongjun thought ruthlessly. Sent. Germain and Blackhawk had always been foes. In the most important martial arts games, Sent. Garmain had kept Blackhawk from entering top 8 multiple times. Seeing a loser so arrogant made Wang Yongjun mad. 
Cheng Yuo, come to see this. Wang Yangzhen walked to Nalan Cheng Yuo and played that interview bit again. The Blackhawk team must be out of their mind. Liu Yuncheng sneered after watching. An illusionary. Ma Cheng Kong laughed. Poor things. Wang Yangjin also laughed. Nalan Cheng Yuo glanced at the video, blinked and did not speak. He narrowed his eyes and kept eating the jelly in his hand. Cheng Yuo, you are eating too much jelly. It might give you diabetes. Wang Yangjin looked at Nalan's flawless skin jealously. Diabetes. That is an ancient disease. Liu Yuncheng laughed. The team talked and laughed, not taking Black Hawk seriously. In fact, this year, Sint, Garmin was especially strong in black and white boxing. They not only had a star player, Nalan Chengyuo, but also had three other players in the top 20. Plus the newly recruited talent Lai Yu, Sint. Germain was very likely to win the championship of the Military Academy League game. This Skynet competition should be a piece of cake for them. The only threat to them in Black Hawk was Aoyang Zayasen who was no match to Nalan and not much better than the rest in Sint. Germain, Cheng Yuo, how about you go first this time and give them a 5-0 to zero to teach them a lesson. Soon the first lineups of both teams were shown and first up were Sint. Germain's five members. Wow, these are the best they got. They are not giving Blackhawk any chance to fight back. I don't think this is necessary when they are against Blackhawk. Nalan alone could nail it. As everyone was talking, the player list of Blackhawk was also shown. With a glance, people were attracted by the first ID name they saw, Black Fist Emperor. Black Fist Emperor, who is so arrogant to use this ID. Strange, I have never heard of the ID. Black Hawk is so good at bragging, even with their IDs. Black Fist Emperor, I think it is more like Kick My Ass Emperor. Haha, ha, he's the first. We will see how this emperor was overthrown. The Scent. German players were also upset with this ID, as it implied they would be ruled by him. Black Fist Emperor is a bench player of Team Black Hawk. His real name is Han Sen, 16, freshman, never been in a black and white boxing match before. It seems he has no experience and is a new player. When read out Han Sen's information, how can a new guy be so arrogant? After the beginning of the game, both sides sent their first players to log in, and when Zixu introduced Han Sen first, Jai Yanren listened to her and was even more upset. What's with this host? She interviewed us, and why is she on the other side? She must be out of her mind. Lily was also annoyed. In fact, after Fang Mingquan heard Wen Zixu's commentary, his face became grim. He meant well when he sent her to do this show and did not expect her to take such a stand. Fang Mingquan immediately called her, Wen, you are doing the show in Black Hawk and should take their stand. If it was not because of her family, he would have said something harsh by this time. Mr. Fang, I think that the commentator should take a neutral point of view. Since Black Hawk is the weaker team, I can't lie, right? Well, then based on what you believe, which team do you think will win? Black Hawk would lose miserably, Wen did not hesitate to say. In fact, she still held some grudge that Fang sent her here. So what if I say Black Hawk will win? Fang Minkwen asked softly. That won't happen. Wen was doing the show because she liked black and white boxing. No matter how she thought about it, Black Hawk would not win. Mr. Fang, you think that Black Hawk will win? Wen now had doubts about the professional level of Fang. Whoever had the slightest understanding of black and white boxing should know that Black Hawk could not win. Black Hawk will not only win, but their victory would also be overwhelming, Fang Minquin said with a certain tone and hung up. Now Wen was regretting that she had requested to work for Fang. She used to admire his capability and had used her family connections to get into Huaxing Station. But now the professional skills that Fang Minquin demonstrated were simply disappointing. This team competition took the form of an arena race. If the first player won the first round, he could stay on and fight the next player in the other team until he was beaten. Such a game system allowed the situation where one player fought five. After the game began, Han Sen threw a punch and his holographic image online was synchronized, hitting Lai Yu's image. The professional equipment could scan Han Sen's body so that it could tell the strength he had put into the punch. Once the strength used passed a certain level, the punch would be considered a black fist, otherwise, it would be considered white. But the scanning data were invisible to the players and they would only know the result after. Lai Yu calmly stared at Han Sen. This punch was very fierce, but Lai stood still and did not even try to block. Lai was very confident of his own judgment. Han Sen's punch looked like a black fist, but from some of the details, he could tell that it was a carefully disguised white fist, and no real strength had been put into it. Because it was on the Skynet, Han Sen could not hurt him for real, so he did not even bother to defend himself. Wind Talker was just a new player, but we can tell that he is very skilled and confident in his own judgment. When Zixu praised Lai Yu, because she had made the same judgment. 
An average person might believe this to be a black fist, but she had studied black and white boxing and could tell from the details that it was indeed a white fist. But before Wen finished her sentence, an explosion sounded and Han Sen's fist had landed on Lai Yu's face. The system automatically showed the special effect of the black fist, blowing Lai Yu's image away. For a moment, everyone was dazed including Wen Zixu and the Sint. Germain players. The comments became scarce online. There are consequences for making my girlfriend mad. Han Sen's eyes were cold. He had wanted a close victory so that it would not attract him too much attention. But now he had changed his mind. In addition, he had also got a kiss waiting for him. So, he would show no mercy. Ha ha, why have the Sint? Germain team stopped commenting. Genius, well done. Blackhawk students became thrilled. Although they were not many, they soon filled the gap of the comments. Jai Yanren was more excited than everyone else. Her face flushed, she waved her fist and cried, Now you don't dare to talk nonsense, do you? Impossible. That punch was clearly a white fist. Lai Yu's face was dark. You, don't let down your guard. It seems that their new guy has some skills. Zhu Yundi urged Lai Yu. Lai Yu was a young talent who he thought could reach the level of Nellen and he lost a point to Blackhawk's new guy, which was somewhat embarrassing for him. Yes, coach, Lai Yu answered, took a deep breath, and once again turned to his opponent. Each round was best of five, and Lai Yu had only lost a point. The game began again. When Zixu continued to explain, looks like Black Fist Emperor was quite lucky, getting the first point. It must be because Lai Yu was not paying attention. Bang. Before Wen finished, Lai Yu was once again sent into the air. The system also played the special effect of him being sent to the galaxy. When Zixu was stunned, and so were the viewers. If they could explain Lai's first loss with his carelessness, the second loss was hard to justify. Those who were arguing with the Blackhawk students suddenly stopped. All that was left in the comments was support to Blackhawk. Good job. This is a true Black Fist. Where did this Black Fist Emperor come from? Two consecutive black fists, and Wind Talker could not tell either. Loser. That kid was trying to play tough and did not even block. Even the special effect changed. Ha ha. Our genius is the best. <clears throat> when Zixu did not dare to comment anymore. When Lai Yu came to the stage again, she was not as confident as she had been. Black Fist Emperor is a very good player, and this will be a fight between two powerful teams. Boom. Another loud bang. Lai Yu did raise his arms this time, so the special effect was not as dramatic. But the system still showed his image sliding backward more than 30 feet. There were even sparks from the friction. Although it was only a virtual special effect, many still got excited over it. S T. Three consecutive black fists and wind talker was gone. So impressive. Three consecutive black fists and wind talker did not see it coming. Where is he from? Wow. The scent. Germain player was eliminated with zero point by a new player at Blackhawk. Young players do not have the psychological quality. He lost the first point and continued to make mistakes and forgot to dodge. That was just a new player. What you are proud of. Next round Wang Yongjun would show you Sint. Germain's strength. Young people cannot be trusted with important tasks because they lack experience. You, what's wrong? The other player had been using black fists. Why didn't you dodge? Zhu Yuni was upset. His favorite student was eliminated 0-3. That was a shame on him. I am sorry, coach. Lai Yu was bitter. He knew that it was likely that his opponent would repeatedly use black fist, but no matter how he saw it, he still felt Han Sen was using white fist and could not bring himself to move away. Lai Yu thought Han Sen was going to use black fist but he judgment told him it was a white fist. In the end, his judgment trumped his instinct. And that was why he had lost. Do not be sad. I will avenge you. Wang Yongjin laughed, patted Lai's shoulder and went up. Remember, since his name is Black Fist Emperor, he must be very confident in his Black Fists. Black Fist Emperor, I will reduce you to Black Fist Eunuch. Wang Yongjin stood opposite Han Sen confidently. Because it was an arena match, Wang Yongjin followed Lai Yu to become the second player and was automatically determined to be the defensive side, which was also a compensation mechanism for the party which had to fight continuously. Wind Talker is lacking in experience, but Wang Yongjun is a veteran, so that Black Fist Emperor's tactics would not work that easily. The game started again. Han Sen threw a punch out that looked extremely fierce. Wang Yongjun looked carefully, and felt just like Lai Yu did. From many details he could tell it should be a white fist, and he should not dodge. However, after watching the match between Lai Yu and Han Sen, Wang told himself, that was how Lai Yu lost, and I cannot make the same mistake. Then he moved backward to avoid the punch from Han Sen. Wang Yongjun is worthy of his fame. His tactical goal is clear and his execution is also in place. This blow should be. 
When Wen Zixu was in the middle of her passionate commentary, she suddenly stopped. Beep, Han Sen's fist froze in the air, and a sign of a white fist lit up. How could it be a white fist? Wen Zixu shout out loud, her eyes wide. Damn, I should have believed that my judgment was right. Wang Yangjun bitterly swinged his arm, regretting. Yangjun, what are you doing? Do not get confused and believe in your own judgment. Zhu Yundi shouted to Wang Yangjun anxiously. Wang Yangjun gritted his teeth and went up for the second punch. Watching Hen Sen's fist approaching, Wang Yangjun saw clearly that like the last blow, this one was also a white fist judging from the hardly noticeable details. Boy, you want to use the same trick twice. You can't get me like this. Wang Yangjun stood upright and reached out a hand to block Hen Sen's fist. With my experience, I could deal with this boy simply by using my instinct. Bang! Han Sen's punch fell on the hand of Wang Yangjun, and Wang was suddenly thrown away. He rolled in the air and thumped to the ground. Black fist, it turned out to be a black fist. At this time, the scent. Jeremy's supporters became silent and so did Wen Zixiu, forgetting to comment. Bang! There was no suspense, Wang Yangjun was eliminated 0-3. And this was just the start of this madness. Liu Yinsheng and Ma Chengkong who followed Wang simply could not stop Han Sen's performance. 3 to 0, still 3 to 0. 3 to 0 in 4 rounds. The audience's comments had become wild. My god, who is this guy? Black Fist Emperor. So domineering. Even players in top 20 like Wang Yangjun, Ma Chengkong, and Liu Yinsheng were unable to get a single point. Cruel? It is too cruel. Black Fist Emperor, where did such a guy come from? Han Sen. The name seems ring a bell. He is our genius at Black Hawk and spokesperson of SKTS. How can you be so dumb no knowing him? So it is him. I just searched the Skynet. Wow, isn't he driving Warframes? How come he is also so great at black and white boxing? Four of the Sint. Jermaine team members were already eliminated by a new guy. Black Hawk will not only win, but their victory would also be overwhelming. Thinking of Fang Minquan's words, Wen felt bitter and ashamed. Nalan Chengyuo, there is still him the number two player in the alliance. He had lost to none but that person. He will not lose. Thinking of the last player of Sint. Germain, Wen Zixu felt like she had grabbed on the last remaining gambits. Nalan Chengyuo, the best martial arts student Sint. Germain had ever seen, had shown excellence in various competitions. In addition to black and white boxing, he could rank top three in almost every item he had signed up for, and his overall ranking in the Military Academy League Martial Arts Tournament. His skills were beyond the level of a military school student. Nalan was even more popular than the chosen in military schools. Nalan, this one you must win, Su Yundi said grimly. Hello, I am Nalan. Standing opposite Han Sen, Nalan Chengyuo greeted his opponent. His ID was simply Nalan. Hello, I am the Black Fist Emperor. If you feel it's too long, you can call me Emperor, Han Sen said with a smile. Chen Ling's hands were sweaty. She knew Han Sen was strong, but did not realize he could eliminate four members from Sint. Germain. But even so, Chen Ling was still very nervous. After all, now Han Sen had to face Nalan, who was a legend in the Military Academy League. Nalan had lost to no one but the monster from the Alliance Central Military Academy, especially in the black and white boxing. Even the guy from the Alliance Central Military Academy only beat him 3-2. According to a well-known black and white boxing expert, Nalan had a pure mind, and it seemed that he had some kind of ability to see through the false. Any disguise in front of him was useless, so it was almost impossible to cheat him. And Han Sen was clearly a player very good at cheating. Theoretically speaking, Nalan was undoubtedly Han Sen's nemesis. That was why Chen Ling is worried. Lily, can he beat Nalan? Jai Yanren tightly grabbed Lily's arm and asked. Although she did not pay much attention to martial arts contests, Nalan Chengyuo was so famous that even she had heard about him. Although Jai Yanren believed in her boyfriend, she was still so nervous that her palms were sweaty. This is really hard to say. If the opponent is someone else, the genius will definitely win. But Nalan, Lily also hesitated. So what? Sen will certainly win, Shi Jikin cried. Sen is someone that will only be beaten by me. And before I do, no one can beat him. Zhang Yong said. Lu Meng smiled. Sister-in-law, you rest assured. Sen will not lose. This made Jai Yanren blush, but also made her feel more relaxed. On the Skynet, a middle-aged man was also watching the match between Han Sen and Nalan. This middle-aged man was named Bai Yishan. 
he was a rare surpasser at his age. Bai Yishin was famous among surpassers not only because he had many Geno points, but also because he was among the few that could be called martial arts master. Bai Yishin came from an aristocrat family. Since childhood he had been obsessed with martial arts. Dedicated to the research work of hyper Geno arts, he was also a professor and the youngest meister at the Saint Hall. Many S-class Super Geno Arts came from his research. Meanwhile, he also taught at the Alliance Central Military Academy and enjoyed a high prestige in the military and alliance. In his busy schedule, the reason for him to take time to watch such a game held on the Skynet was not his interest in the black and white boxing game itself. In the eyes of a surpasser, this kind of game was simply like children playing house. What intrigued him to watch was Nalan Chengyuel. Recently, Bai had been doing research on a hyper Geno art called Yin Yang Blast whose concepts were complex, but did share some similarities with black and white boxing. It was also about yin and yang forces. The birth of each hyper Geno art had to witness a lot of experiments. Otherwise it would not be allowed to be sold or promoted at St. Hall. If a hyper Geno art involved a great risk, it would be classified as banned and could not be sold. Yin Yang Blast that Bai Yishin was studying was one of the hyper Geno arts that was demanding on those who practiced it. Although the practice of the hyper Geno art did not involve too much risk, it might generate risks in using. But Yin Yang Blast had cost Bai Yishin nearly 10 years of hard work. And if he hadn't found an incomplete ancient copy of the magic of Yin and Yang, he would never have been able to invent Yin Yang Blast, which was very unique and powerful. Its only flaw was that it was too demanding on the user's prejudgment abilities. The two volunteers from the military who had practiced Yin Yang Blast all ran into issues when using it in combats. One had died and one became disabled. Yin Yang Blast was about to be classified as banned. But after all, this is what Bai Yishin had come up with and he did not want to see Yin Yang Blast buried. That was why he tried his best to get another chance of experiment. In order to ensure the success of this experiment, Bai Yishin needed to pick a person that he thought could control Yin Yang Blast. After a lot of screening, Bai Yishin had his eyes on Nalan Chengyuo. What Nalan was practicing was a Kala Mantra, so his faith was immovable and he had a great perspective on Yin and Yang. But Bai Yishin was only listing Nalan as a candidate and had not decided. This time he was trying to determine whether Nalan would be a good fit by watching the black and white boxing game which despite its simple form, shows the fundamentals of yin and yang. Before Nalan showed up, Hansen's performance had amazed Bai Yishin. It was not how strong he was or how well he had mastered the yin and yang forces, but his ability of psychological gaming and prejudgment that made Bai Yishin regret not seeing the boy earlier. This kind of ability is so rare and perfect for yin yang blast. If he was not just lucky, he should be the one. Bai Yishin knew how valuable Han Sen's abilities were. This required both talent and effort. And among the people he had met, Han Sen was the best in this aspect so far. Bai Yishin listed Nalan as a candidate exactly because of his ability to see through his opponent's thought. But now he could tell that Han Sen was even better at that. Let me see how well you could do. Bai Yishin watched the game, interested. In the online black and white boxing competition, after Han Sen observed Nalan, he threw a punch as fierce as an uncaged tiger. In Nalan's eyes as clear as water flashed a trace of surprise. He grew up practicing a Kala Mantra and had a mind that was like a mirror. No fiber or dust could pass unnoticed. Although he was still very young, he had a character that was suitable for practicing a Kala Mantra and had become advanced in this hyper Geno art. Most people's minds were affected by a lot of distractions and he could see through them. With Han Sen's blow, he could not see what his opponent was thinking which naturally made him a little surprised. Even though he could not see through Han Sen's mind, Nalan could see through his body. The body could make a lot of deceptive appearances, but under the Akala Mantra, he could see almost every inch of Han Sen's muscle. It was almost impossible to fool Nalan. After all, one would have to move certain muscles to use real strength, and there was no way around that. For Nalan Chengyuo, this kind of judgment was not difficult. Han Sen had no secrets in the eyes of Nalan. All his muscles and even the speed of his breathing were imprinted in Nalan's mind. White fist, Nalan made his own judgment. There was no doubt that it was a white fist since Han Sen used hardly any muscles that he would use for other moves. Although Nalan had determined it was a white fist, he still raised his arms to parry. It was not because he had no confidence in his judgment, but out of his respect for the opponent. Bang, Nalan's expression suddenly changed as Han Sen's fist landed on his arm and threw him away. It was determined as a black fist. It turned out to be Black Fist. Nalan was slightly startled. The audience was deadly silent. When Zixiu opened her mouth wide and her eyes almost popped out of her head, 
she could not believe Han Sen got another point against Nalan Chen Yuo. This is not possible. Zhu Yundi also felt incredulous. Except for the guy in the Alliance Central Military Academy, he had not ever seen anyone who could get the first point facing Nalan. After a brief silence, people who were watching online became wild. My god, he scored first against Nalan. Is he about to achieve 5-3 to 0? Sent. Germain will go insane. S hash T that's amazing. This guy is not just great with a Warframe. Black Fist Emperor. If he could give Nalan a zero, I will call him your highness. Your highness, please accept my allegiance. It's just one point. Don't get excited too early. The comments were exploding. And in the end, no one could see what they were saying since the page rolled down too fast. Except for in the match against the guy from the Alliance Central Military Academy. People had not seen Nalan fail for a long time. Black Hawk students were cheering and Jai Yanran was so excited that her face reddened. Bai Yishin was intrigued. Touching his chin, he asked himself, this is really interesting. One is pure and insightful an angel from heaven, the other has strong control, but is more like a cunning devil from hell, who can do better in the end. In the game, Nalan had restored his zen. A failure like that was not enough to shake him, but he had to admit that he had underestimated Han Sen. Han Sen's techniques were not as good as the guy from Alliance Central Military Academy, but he was more cunning. Maybe his flaws had made him strong. You're good. Nalan stood opposite Han Sen and said, Thank you. Han Sen accepted the compliment. Ready. Nalan's eyes were calm and steady, without any emotional fluctuations from his failure. Han Sen did not hesitate to punch at him. An ordinary punch as it was, it attracted the attention of millions of people. All were nervously staring at Han Sen's fist. Among all the people, Nalan was the calmest. He watched Han Sen's punch quietly. It was almost exactly the same punch as the last one and seemed to be a white fist again. No matter how Nalan saw it, it was a white fist since the punch simply could not carry the kind of strength that a black fist would require. There were still a lot of flaws in Han Sen's move, but now Nalan knew that Han Sen had immense control of his muscles and the barely noticeable flaws that only he could see were traps Han Sen had set. But Nalan did not panic. Even if he could not tell whether it was a white fist, Nalan could still make a reasonable judgment. And that was the judgment of Han Sen as a person. Since Han Sen used an ID such as Black Fist Emperor, he must be a person with absolute self-confidence. In the four previous rounds, Han Sen had attacked 12 times, only three of which were white fists. And Nalan had paid attention to every detail and knew that Han Sen would have the smile on his face whether he used a black fist or a white one. But when Han Sen was using a black fist, his smile would be slightly more tilted than when he was using a white fist. An average person would not see the difference, and only someone as observant as Nalan could notice this clue. Nalan knew that this was due to Han Sen's preference of black fist. Han Sen must really enjoy the kind of pleasure of hitting his opponent, and was excited to experience that. That was why he would smile a little more. And this subtle clue was again tested to be true in the previous punch. Nalan Cheng Yuo had confirmed that Han Sen had the same kind of smile when using the black fist. That's right. This one must be a white fist. Nalan's eyes lit up. He crossed his arms and was ready to block the white fist. Han Sen's smile at this moment was the one he would put on when giving a white fist. Boom. With the sparks generated by the system, Nalan Cheng Yuo was blown away. Nalan had lost again. Two points in a row. Not even the guy from the Alliance Central Military Academy could do that to Nalan. Thinking back of what she had said and done before the competition, Wen Zixu felt her face burning, as if she had been slapped by someone. Wen Zixu even touched her face, as if that feeling was real. As strong as Nalan Cheng Yuo, he had been shaken by the situation. Biting his lips, he fixed his eyes on Han Sen. Has he been calculating right from the start? Bai Yishin saw Nalan Cheng Yuo's look and sighed. Nalan is still too young and is easily shaken. He has lost already. But Bai Yishin's gaze at Han Sen became hot. Maybe this person is the best candidate to practice Yin Yang Blast. And the fact was exactly like how Bai Yishin had predicted. Nalan Cheng Yuo's mind was shaken completely. He could no longer maintain his keen observance nor his calm. In the third round, he was blown away by Han Sen. At this moment, even Han Sen's friends could not believe that their school had beaten Sint. Germain completely. It was a victory they had never seen before. After a short silence, all the students from Blackhawk started to cheer, and they were shouting Emperor. In the online community, people had also gone insane. Sint. Germain had lost like never before and it was accomplished by the guy whose ID name was Black Fist Emperor. He is indeed an emperor. All players in front of him had to bow their heads, even Nalan Cheng Yuo. Wow, has sent. Germain ever lost like this in their history. Haha, I feel like this game rule should be changed. 
When night falls, by the glistening pond and under a willow tree, a young couple were standing together. Close your eyes. Why should I do that? Please, no. If you don't close your eyes, I'll leave. You can't eat your own words, so close your eyes. Okay, no peeking. All right, all right. Seeing Han Sen had closed his eyes, Jai Yanren whose cheeks were red tiptoed and leaned her face towards Han Sen's. However, before her pink lips touched his face, she saw that he opened his eyes and watched her with a faint smile. Feeling ashamed, Jai Yanren wanted to stop and turn away. Yet Han Sen hands had held her small waist and she suddenly fell in his arms. His mouth covered hers. Hmm. When Han Sen was enjoying making out with his beautiful girlfriend, his comlink suddenly rang. Han Sen wanted to turn it off but his girlfriend pressed answer. Suddenly, a sexy woman in white lingerie with her boobs almost popping out showed up in the holographic image. I'm sorry, Sen. It seems that I am interrupting you guys. I will hang up, the sexy woman said with her face gloomy and hung up. You asshole. Jai Yanren stepped on Han Sen's foot madly and turned away. I can explain. Han Sen chased after her. I don't want to listen. Jai Yanren did not really want to run. She turned her head away childishly. Having to explain to her while walking, Han Sen blamed Huan Fu Pinking secretly. He believed that she was doing it on purpose. In her dorm, Huan Fu Pinking was in a great mood and humming a song. Of course she meant it. She had been informed that Jai Yanren and Han Sen went to the lakeside, and that was why she had calculated the time and changed into the right outfit before she dialed Han Sen's number. You won't be able to run from me, Huan Fu Pinking said to herself while enjoying her bath. Han Sen went to the auction that Huan Fu Pinking mentioned, and the two sacred blood beasts soul both ended up with skyrocketing prices. He had nothing to bid within the auction. The sacred blood flying beast soul was bought by Lin Beifeng with $178 million, whereas the three blade harpoon was even more popular and was won by Son of Heaven in the end with $230 million, which made Han Sen feel quite unbelievable. He had wanted to sell his SKTS and put in all his savings, but had to let that thought go, because he simply did not have enough. The crazy prices made him want to sell his own sacred blood beast souls at one point. He could become rich immediately. Even if he could sell his sacred blood beast soul each at just 100 million, he would have several hundred million dollars by now. However, this kind of money was not enough for someone rich to buy an interstellar spaceship, so it really was nothing. After the auction, Han Sen was thinking where he should go hunting. The moment he walked out of steel armor shelter, the sky suddenly became dark. It is noon now. How come it suddenly became dark? Is it going to rain? Han Sen felt weird because the sky was very clear just now. When he looked up, Han Sen almost jumped. There was not a piece of cloud in the sky, but a giant island floating above the steel armor shelter like a mountain upside down, blocking the sun and covering the shelter and its surrounding areas in the shadow. Mystery Island, it is a mystery island, exclaimed someone. Han Sen also recognized that it was a mystery island. He had only seen it online before. It was his first time to see a mystery island in the real life. The mystery island was a floating island that occasionally appeared in the sky. Each mystery island had a sacred blood creature guarding it, and according to people's experience, if someone killed a sacred blood creature on the island, one would get its sacred blood beast soul for sure. Therefore, seeing the island meant chance of getting a sacred blood beast soul. However, it was not easy to fly that high and land on the mystery island. Neither primitive nor mutant flying beast souls could carry one that high. Only sacred blood beast souls could, which was the threshold to land on the island. Han Sen became thrilled. Steel Armor Shelter did not have many flying beast souls to offer, and people here had not even heard of any sacred blood wings, except for his purple winged dragon. The other pair of wings known to people in addition to his was just sold by Huan Fu Pinking, and was now in Lin Beifeng's hand. Han Sen felt amused. Huan Fu Pinking must be regretting right now. As she waited a little longer, the sacred blood wings would be even more expensive than the three-blade harpoon. Son of Heaven is definitely also regretting not having bought the sacred blood wings. Han Sen found a secluded spot and summoned the black beetle armor which had recovered from the previous damages and his purple winged dragon beast soul. He could not wait to fly to the mystery island. When he was up in the air, he saw from afar that from the other direction someone else was also flying toward the mystery island. Lin Beifeng is fast enough, Han Sen thought and approached that person. But when he was closer he saw that it was not Lin Beifeng. But son of heaven, what's wrong? Didn't Lin Beifeng buy that pair of sacred blood wings? How did it end up in son of heaven's hand? Han Sen frowned, feeling puzzled. Although son of heaven's eyesight was not as good as Han Sen's, Han Sen's eye-catching golden outfit was easy to recognize. After seeing Han Sen, son of heaven speeded up toward the mystery island. 
Obviously, he did not want to be approached by Han Sen. Han Sen was still far from Son of Heaven and decided to go to the island directly. This is a great opportunity to kill Son of Heaven. Now that he is alone, and none of his gang member is with him, maybe I could even get rid of him right now. Squinting his eyes, Han Sen flew toward the island. Son of Heaven's wings were no slower than purple-winged dragons. Han Sen was not able to close in. The wind became cold when he went higher up, but Han Sen felt nothing because he had sacred blood armor and jade skin. On the other hand, Son of Heaven was not that lucky. His armor only covered his upper body and he was shuddering. If it was not because Son of Heaven had almost maxed out on all his Geno points, even with the sacred blood beast soul wings, he wouldn't be able to fly up to the mystery island. After flying for a while, Son of Heaven's eyebrows and hair became white with ice. Damn it, why is the wind so strong? Son of Heaven cursed. It was also the first time for him to come to a mystery island. He had seen it before, but he did not have sacred blood beast soul wings and was not able to go up. Son of Heaven had slowed down. It seemed that he was really frozen. When Han Sen was hesitating whether or not he should rush over, he saw someone else flying toward the island. Steel Armor Shelter has more sacred blood wings. Who is the owner? King Xuan. Feeling odd, Han Sen took another look and it was Thumb who was flapping a pair of bat-like wings. Han Sen frowned. Although he knew Thumb, but they could not be called friends and Thumb did not know that he was Dollar either. Using the identity of Dollar and as a competitor for the sacred blood beast souls on the mystery island, he was now Thumb's enemy. While Han Sen was still thinking, Son of Heaven quickly flew to Thumb, which surprised Han Sen. Although Son of Heaven and Thumb had some collaborations, they represented two major gangs in the shelter. It seemed odd that Son of Heaven had proactively approached Thumb. How about you and I work together to get rid of Dollar first? Son of Heaven said to Thumb, Why would I work with you? Thumb curled his lips and said, I can sell you the Warframes that you want with 10% off. Son of Heaven said without blinking his eyes, 20% off, sad Thumb. All right, but you have to help me gain this sacred blood beast soul. Deal. After reaching the agreements, the two flew to Han Sen. Han Sen saw them, but did not seem to panic. Dollar, I am so sorry. I respect you a lot and do not want to antagonize you. However, Son of Heaven has paid well and I have to fight you. If you leave now, I will not stop you, Thumb said to Han Sen aloud. I understand. But I have to get the sacred blood beast soul on the island, Han Sen said calmly. Cut the crap. If you still want the discount, you know what to do. Son of Heaven summoned his bloody red sword and slashed at Han Sen. Holding his round shield with one hand, and a broadsword in the other, Thumb rushed to Han Sen as well. The shield was the one that Han Sen gave to Thumb, so Han Sen knew how good it was. However, Han Sen did not plan to retreat. Drawing his Shura Katana out, he cut it to Son of Heaven's sword. Son of Heaven of course recognized the Katana, which might be stronger than the Z-Steel weapons, but was not even close to his sacred blood sword. Not only was Dollar's weapon inferior to Son of Heaven's, but Son of Heaven had almost maxed out on all his Geno points and with his Hyper Geno art, so he was definitely stronger than Dollar in physique. A few months ago, when Dollar was fighting Kin Xuan, he was not even able to beat her. Son of Heaven did not think that the guy's strength could be compared to his in such a short amount of time. Even though Dollar's strength was similar to his, Dollar would lose his balance after trying to block Son of Heaven's sword. By then, HW would have to take the deadly attack from Thumb. There was a dull noise of metal on metal. Bang! Son of Heaven was blown away by Han Sen. He was only able to steady himself after a few seconds and his face darkened. How could he have become so strong? Son of Heaven could not accept the fact that Han Sen's strength was so much greater than his. He had almost maxed out on all Geno points. Thumb who had to come to Dollar growled and attacked with his broadsword. However, Han Sen's katana was so fast that when Thumb had only drawn his broadsword, Han Sen's katana was already hitting his shield. Bang! Thumb was also blown away, which shocked Son of Heaven even more. He had seen Thumb's strength and how great his shield was. Dollar could ignore Thumb and his shield, which made him wonder how strong Dollar was right now. Han Sen originally only wanted to test how well could he do at this point. It seemed that the effect was even better than he had imagined. Even Son of Heaven who had almost maxed out on all Geno points was inferior to him. The enhancement brought by Jade Skin was indeed tremendous. But then he thought of Zhu Longin who was able to use Jade Skin to cut a mutant weapon like it was made of tofu after being severely injured and believed that he could do so much more with this hyper Geno art. Son of Heaven and Thumb became serious and attacked Han Sen at the same time. Han Sen used one katana to fight two foes and forced them to step back using Bladestorm. In Steel Armor Shelter, those who were watching their fight with binoculars were dumbstruck. Although they knew that Dollar was very strong, 
They did not realize that he was so strong that even Son of Heaven and Thumb combined could not stop him. Brother, I'm here to help you. Another person flapped a pair of wings and came close. It turned out to be Hyunfu Pinking. This woman is trouble. Han Sen frowned. Hyunfu Pinking was obviously calling Son of Heaven, who was the young master of the starry group. Being the granddaughter of Hyunfu Qingcheng, president of Ares Marshall Hall, she could not be his sister. But Han Sen had no time to think about it. Hyunfu Pinking was not weak. If they were fighting one-on-one, -on -one, Han Sen could easily beat her. However, with two strong enemies attacking him at the same time, she would create a lot of troubles. The three were attacking Han Sen at the same time, who moved quickly and used his katana to block all the blows, which made the onlookers surprised. Dollar is great. He could even handle three enemies at the same time. Had he showed up, Lin Feng might not have become the first chosen. So strong, how can he be so strong? Son of Heaven and Thumb are both going to max out on all Geno points. King Chuan said softly, It is shocking that Dollar has made so much progress since the contest. It's just been a few months, because he is Dollar. King said, holding his binocular. It is such a shame that Dollar was not in the final round of the contest, or he could have beaten Lin Feng, Yuan lamented. When people were feeling amazed, they suddenly heard metal smashed. Han Sen's katana was not sacred blood after all and could no longer take the hits. When cut by the bloody sword of Son of Heavens, it was smashed into pieces. Without a weapon, Han Sen had to turn away. Although he could fight all these three people, he could not kill Son of Heaven without a sacred blood weapon. Stop! Son of Heaven would not let him go and smack the bloody sword at him. Han Sen's eyes became cold and he suddenly shapeshifted into the bloody slayer. He waved his fist at the bloody sword and knocked the sword away. Han Sen wanted to keep hitting Son of Heaven, while Thumb and Hyun Fu Pinking had come over, waving their weapons. Han Sen forced Thumb back with one fist, and used his palm as a knife and struck at Hyun Fu Pinking. Ding! Hyun Fu Pinking's strength was weaker after all. Her sword was struck away and a silver three-blade harpoon cut through the sacred blood armor on Han Sen's arm. Blood was flowing. What a sharp harpoon! Han Sen flapped his wings and flew higher. The three persons were chasing after him, but the higher they went, the stronger the wind was. With Jade Skin Han Sen did not fear the wind, yet the rest three were trembling and gradually slowed down. They had to watch Han Sen land on the island and disappear from their sights. I was just wondering why Hyun Fu Pinking would be willing to sell the sacred blood beast souls. So she was only working together with Son of Heaven. What Han Sen did not understand was why the flying beast soul bought by Lin Beifeng would appear on Son of Heaven and Lin Beifeng was definitely not working together with them. There was little point in thinking about that right now. Without a sacred blood weapon, it was not very likely he could kill Son of Heaven today. Such a great loss. My katana was ruined and all that I have at this point is a mutant spear. Han Sen had decided that he would gain the sacred blood beast soul on the mystery island to compensate his loss. When he came above the cloud, Han Sen finally saw the entirety of the island. Above the ocean of clouds, there were magnificent mountains, among which one was outstanding. The sacred blood creature should reside in that mountain. Han Sen went towards the mountain as his full speed, wanting to kill the sacred blood creature before everyone else and gain the beast's soul. Before he could approach the mountain, Han Sen stopped and was appalled. He did not dare to go any closer because of what he saw. On top of the mountain there was a tall tree with a huge canopy and exceptional fragrance. An angel-looking creature with white wings behind its back and a halo above its head was standing under the tree with both hands placed on the hilt of a sword stuck in a rock. The sword looked like it was made from diamond and glittered in the sunlight. A humanoid sacred blood creature. And it even has a sacred blood gear. Han Sen was pleasantly surprised. If he could gain a sacred blood shapeshifting beast soul from this creature, it would be undoubtedly powerful just like Bloody Slayer and Fairy Queen. According to people's experience, all humanoids were exceptionally powerful, even the Bloody Slayer which was not that close to a human. If it was not for the one-off sacred blood arrow used by Son of Heaven, the Bloody Slayer would not have been killed. The three gangs were attacking the Bloody Slayer at the same time and even the combined effort was almost thwarted. Han Sen did not believe that himself was as strong as the Bloody Slayer, and he sensed that this creature was probably even stronger than Bloody Slayer. If Hansen could shapeshift into the Bloody Slayer for a long time, he would have some confidence. However, there was a time limit to that, and he might get himself killed if he risked to go over the limit. More importantly, the three people following him were about to arrive. If Hansen started to fight the creature right now, they would be able to take advantage of it. Thinking of this, Hansen did not hesitate to hide in the mountain and start observing. There was normally only one sacred blood creature on one mystery island. 
Han Sen did not worry he might run into any danger and sat down on a tree where he could watch the sacred blood creature, waiting for the three to come. In less than half an hour, the three persons had arrived, faster than Han Sen had thought. The three also saw the angel-like humanoid creature and reacted the same way Han Sen did. They stopped far from the creature and did not dare to approach. Dollar, come out. Let's talk. Son of Heaven stepped back and called after consulting with Thumb and Hu and Fu Pinking. Obviously, they were also terrified of that creature and were also worried that Han Sen might take advantage of them. Han Sen ignored them. Half a day had passed, and Son of Heaven did not dare to go into the mountains. Dollar, let us talk. None of us can profit from this if we do nothing. Son of Heaven was worried. If it was some other sacred blood beast soul, he would probably let go. However, a humanoid sacred blood beast soul was very rare. If he missed this one, he might never see another in his lifetime. Dollar, I will offer you fifty million dollars to help me kill the creature, but the beast soul must be mine, said Son of Heaven. I will give you fifty million for the beast soul. Son of Heaven held back his curse and said, What would you want in return for this beast soul? Name your price. One sacred blood beast soul, Hansen said. Dollar, I am only getting a sacred blood beast soul by killing this creature. Don't you feel that you're too greedy? Son of Heaven wanted to kill Han Sen at that moment. I do not have to tell you the value of a humanoid sacred blood beast soul, right? Dollar, a humanoid beast soul is indeed precious, but you are asking for too much. How about we both compromise? We will offer a hundred million for the beast soul. Huang Fu Pinking smiled sensually and said, I am not interested in money. A sacred blood beast soul or may the best man or woman win. You decide, Han Sen said decisively. Since you do not know your place, I will have to teach you. Son of Heaven suddenly growled and moved to attack Han Sen. Huang Fu Pinking also summoned her bow and arrows and shot seven arrows at Han Sen at the same time. Han Sen decided not to waste time on them and flew away. However, there was no wind on the island and Han Sen was not fast enough to lose them. Huang Fu Pinking's arrows also distracted Han Sen and slowed him down. Son of Heaven, if you promise to give me a sacred blood beast soul now, it is not too late. Otherwise you will regret it, exclaimed Han Sen. My only regret is not killing you earlier, said Son of Heaven, gritting his teeth. Then you will continue to live with regret, Han Sen laughed. Suddenly, Han Sen changed his direction and rushed to where the creature was. The rest were dumbstruck. Thumb slowed down and said, he went after the creature. Should we follow him? Son of Heaven said, do not slow down. Follow him. That bastard would never go risk his life. He is only trying to lose us. Thumb felt it was a reasonable explanation. Dollar could never be so stupid that he would hand his life over to the sacred blood creature. The three were following Han Sen as close as they could, but soon they felt that something was wrong. Han Sen went all the way to the mountain and did not intend to change direction or stop. Brother, it feels weird. We should stop, said Huang Fu Pinking. Son of Heaven also felt that and gradually slowed down, but it was too late. Han Sen had already gone into the mountain. When he was 300 feet from the sacred blood creature, it suddenly opened its eyes, golden lightning bolts shining in its pupils and blonde hair dancing in the air. A sword as gorgeous as a diamond was also drawn from the rock. Spreading its wings, the creature flew up and threw itself at Han Sen. Han Sen moved towards the three at full speed. They suddenly understood that he was trying to force them to fight the creature. Shameless bastard, let's run, cried the son of heaven. No way. We cannot make it. The creature is faster than we are, Thumb said calmly. We should work together to kill Dollar first, said Son of Heaven, seeing Han Sen was only fifty feet from them. The sacred blood creature had come behind Han Sen and slashed at him with its sword. Shapeshifting into the bloody slayer, Han Sen summoned his mutant spear and used it to block the sword. Crack. As a mutant weapon, the spear was cut into halves by the diamond sword. Shocked, Han Sen threw himself at the three. The three wanted to attack Han Sen, but was all appalled by how powerful the creature was. All of a sudden, Han Sen was already in front of them. When they were ready to attack Han Sen, he stopped less than 15 feet from them and turned to face the sacred blood creature. Having summoned his chopper, he used it to parry with the sacred blood creature. The chopper was a commonly seen beast soul weapon, so he was not worried that people might tell who Dollar was from it. Crack. The chopper was also cut in half by the diamond sword. Han Sen fell to the ground and dodged the sword of the creature. Now the sacred blood creature was faced with the other three. Without hesitation, the creature cut to Thumb who was closest to it with its sword. Thumb gritted his teeth and used his sacred blood shield to block the diamond sword. Ding! Thumb was forced back more than 50 feet before he could stop himself in the air. With a roar, he shapeshifted into a giant bear more than 9 feet tall. 
With his shield in one hand and his broad sword in the other, Thumb ran toward the sacred blood creature. He exclaimed, Dollar, now if we work together, we will have a chance to kill it. If you run away right now, if we could not gain any benefit, we will not leave anything to you. Just now when fighting with Han Sen, Thumb did not really want him dead. After all, he held no grudge against Han Sen. All Son of Heaven offered was a discount and that was not worth risking his life. Come to the ground. We are not its match in the air, Han Sen cried while flying to the ground. Son of Heaven and the rest also knew that the flying speed of the creature was too fast for them to keep up with, so they followed Han Sen to the ground. Thumb was the last to follow. Using his sacred blood shapeshifting beast soul and sacred blood shield, he barely blocked the creature's sword. All four of them were now on the ground. They all took back their wings and shapeshifted into different creatures to attack the sacred blood angel-like creature. Han Sen had seen the strength of sacred blood creatures. He knew that with his own power, he could never kill the creature. The only chance was to collaborate with the three. He also had to try to kill the creature while they were still able to shapeshift, because the angel-like creature was too strong. Thumb was now a giant bear. Using his shield, he was fighting the creature head-on. Deep marks were left by the diamond sword on the sacred blood shield. Son of Heaven had turned himself into a huge lion. Hyung Fu Pinking did not shapeshift, but was shooting arrows from far away to limit the range of motion of the creature. Without a humanoid shapeshifting beast soul, she would not be able to use the weapon she was best in if she chose to shapeshift. Although all four of them were attacking the creature, they still did not cause much damage. Hansen found a chance to cut at the creature, but his mutant dagger did not even break its armor. Damn it, without a sacred blood weapon, I could never kill this creature. Hansen felt depressed. All he needed right now was a sacred blood weapon. It was such a shame that he had not bought the three-blade harpoon, otherwise he would not be so helpless right now. Carry on. My shapeshifting would not last very long, exclaimed Thumb as he was blocking the blows from the creature. Most attacks from the creature were handled by Thumb. If his shield were not sacred blood, it would have been broken a thousand times. Son of Heaven was also worried. Had he not given Luo Tenyang his sacred blood ape beast soul, which were ruined by Han Sen, he could do much better. Now with the lion beast soul, he could not use weapons after shapeshifting, so he could not commit his full strength. The three men could all last around two hours with shapeshifting. As time went by, they could not hurt the creature whatsoever. We could not keep doing this. Someone lend me a sacred blood weapon. Han Sen had to ask. Without a sacred blood weapon, all he could do was to distract the creature. There was no chance he could cause any damage, and their shapeshifting time was almost up. But none of the rest responded. It was a great risk to transfer a sacred blood beast soul to Han Sen. Who could tell if he would run away the moment he got the beast soul? Even if he did not run, no one was willing to see him killing the creature. Since we could not beat it, we should go home. Running out of shapeshifting time, Han Sen turned away to leave the mystery island. Without Han Sen, the rest could never beat the creature. With Thumb's defense, they also left the mystery island. The sacred blood creature of mystery island would not leave the island. So after they left, the sacred blood creature went back to the tree on that mountain. The plan to besiege the sacred blood creature had failed. After some discussion, the three went back to the shelter, because they did not believe that Han Sen would go find the creature alone. That creature was not something an individual could kill. Impressive. The beast soul of this creature must be amazing. Han Sen went back to the mystery island after dark. He needed to kill this creature, otherwise his katana and two mutant weapons would have been ruined for nothing. In fact, he had one sacred blood weapon, which was the sacred blood butterfly boomerang. However, it was a one-off weapon. If he did not have to, Han Sen would not use it. Going back to the mountain, Han Sen saw the sacred blood creature under the tree, its hand still on the hilt of the diamond sword and its eyes closed again. He did not have time to pay attention in daytime. Now under moonlight and starlight, he noticed how gorgeous this creature was. It was definitely a she. The jade armor covered her body, yet still showed off her long legs and curves. The white wings and long wavy hair accentuated her beautiful facial features. Pretty yet aloof, she was really like an angel. Had he not seen how well she fought, Han Sen would even be reluctant to hurt such a beautiful creature. She is so strong. I only have one chance. If I don't succeed, I might not even be able to escape. Han Sen was considering which beast soul he should use. A sacred blood beast soul armor would not be enough. It might keep him alive, but what he needed now was to kill the creature. The fairy queen was summoned. Han Sen's body was covered in red armor and the ruby crown appeared on his head. His black hair became blonde. Han Sen also summoned the horn bow and mutant black stinger arrow. 
Pan Sen was confident in his ability to hide his intentions, but when he aimed at the creature, she suddenly opened her eyes full of golden lightning bolts. Whoosh! The diamond sword was drawn from the rock and cut at Han Sen. Han Sen did not shoot the black stinger arrow. He did not dare to. Once the arrow was cut by the sword, it would be ruined. This arrow had cost Han Sen a lot of efforts and Han Sen would not want it to be ruined like the mutant spear and chopper. Watching the sacred blood creature approaching him, he felt she did not seem as fast as she was. The ability of the fairy queen had turned the actions of the creature into slow motion in his eyes. Watching the sword cutting at himself, Han Sen suddenly took back his bow and arrow and made an incredibly fast move. Spartacle. The footwork that Han Sen had been working hard on was eventually put to use. Even the sacred blood creature's sword was not fast enough to follow his body. Instead of stepping back, Han Sen narrowed the distance between him and the creature. The sacred blood butterfly boomerang appeared in Han Sen's hand and was thrown at the creature. With an unlikely trajectory, the boomerang approached the creature in the blink of an eye and was about to cut her throat. However, even at such a short distance, the sacred blood creature was still able to take back her sword and slash it at the butterfly boomerang. The moment before the sword touched the boomerang, the boomerang suddenly made an incredible dive and then cut the creature's throat from below. Boom. The horrifying blue fire exploded and covered the entire body of the sacred blood creature. It's almost looked like she was going through a nirvana. This angel was not a friendly one. Bathing in fire, she was still trying to attack Han Sen. Using both Fairy Queen and Spartacle, Han Sen was able to dodge all her attacks. In fact, the creature's speed and strength were no longer comparable to before because of her injury. She gradually slowed down and her sword fell to the ground with a clank. Her body turned into lights and scattered like fireflies. Sacred Blood Creature Holy Angel Killed Beast Soul of Sacred Blood Holy Angel Gained Neat and edible. She really is an angel. Han Sen was excited. He was not too surprised by the fact that the meat was edible. He had read before online that the sacred blood creatures on the mystery island were most likely inedible. Wrapping the diamond sword with the cloth he had prepared, Han Sen left the mystery island in the dark. Son of Heaven must still be thinking how to kill the holy angel. There is no way that he would know that I've killed it. I'm really curious to see his face when he has prepared everything and find no creature there. Han Sen returned to Steel Armor Shelter in a great mood. Putting the diamond sword on the table, he couldn't wait to check out his newly gained beast soul of Holy Angel. A teenage girl with long dark hair stood barefoot in front of Han Sen, wearing a white dress, her eyes blinking. Beast soul pet, another one. Looking at the Holy Angel in the form of a pretty little girl, Han Sen did not know how to react. This was such a big change. She had lost her wings in Halo. You could not even tell that she was an angel. There was nothing fearful about her and she looked just like a cute human girl. Despite her cuteness, she could not fight at all. He did not even know how long it would take for a sacred blood beast soul pet to transform. Fortunately, Han Sen also had gained sacred blood gear, the diamond sword, otherwise he would be very upset. After all, he had traded one katana, two mutant weapons, and a sacred blood butterfly boomerang for the sacred blood pet. One thing was for sure, the sacred blood holy angel was worth a lot of money. Sacred blood pets were rare, and a pet as cute as this one, which looked almost exactly like a human, could be sold at a great price, maybe even higher than the price of any practical sacred bloods. Can you talk? Han Sen looked at the holy angel and asked. She looked so much like a pretty human girl. The holy angel widened her eyes and smiled at him, looking innocent. Seeing that she could not talk, Han Sen took her back and took up the gorgeous diamond sword. The diamond sword was like an ice sculpture and was slightly heavier than a steel sword. Han Sen waved the sword around and thought it was very smooth to use. What a great sword. It is very much worth what it has cost me. Han Sen felt more and more at ease waving the sword around, thinking it was easier to use than the katana. As for the sharpness and toughness of the sword, there was no question, since it could cut through his sacred blood armor. Even the sacred blood shield of thumbs was left with deep marks, whereas the sword itself was still intact. It was easy to imagine how good it was. It is such a shame that the sword could not be taken back like a sacred blood beast soul. I could only carry it with me and use it here in God's sanctuary, Han Sen thought. The sword had a very memorable look. Since Son of Heaven, Huang Fu Pinking and Thumb had all seen it, it would be a lot of trouble if he wanted to use it in the future. He could only use it when he pretended to be Dollar. Otherwise any of them could guess that Han Sen was Dollar. Leaving God's sanctuary, Han Sen's Kumlink immediately rang. Seeing Huang Fu Pinking's number, Han Sen bristled. It was because of this woman that his girlfriend was still mad at him. Having answered the call, he wanted to talk some sense into Huang Fu Pinking, teaching her right from wrong. 
While he just opened his mouth, he was rendered speechless. Huan Fu Pinking was in a bubble bath, covered under foam. He could only see her arms and the top of her globes, which still made his heart race. Brother Han, am I interrupting something? As she asked, she lifted one of her legs and started to caress it. Han Sen felt his nose was about to bleed. He touched his nose and said seriously, Miss Huang Fu Pinking, do you need me for something? If not, I have to go. Han Sen could not help throwing another glance at her leg. Of course I need you. Did you know that there is a mystery island floating above the steel armor shelter now? Huang Fu Pinking smiled sensually. Of course I know that. But I could never go up there since I do not have sacred blood wings. Han Sen became nervous. That's a problem easy to solve. I can lend you a flying beast soul. Huang Fu Pinking turned around in the water and moved closer to the Kumlink. Looking at the close-up of her white globes, he was about to explode. Han Sen said hurriedly, Don't joke with me. Why would you lend me such a precious sacred blood? I am not joking. If you want it, you can come and get it right now. My door is open, Huang Fu Pinking said, blinking. You could say what you want here and now. Han Sen did not believe Huang Fu Pinking would be so generous. Since you won't come over, we should find somewhere to discuss. How about the cafeteria in Section A? Huang Fu Pinking said, No, I'd rather talk in the shelter. Since this was breakfast time, if someone saw Huang Fu Pinking and him together, he could never prove his innocence. Although Huang Fu Pinking was sexy and as pretty as Jai Yanren, Jai Yanren was more Han Sen's type. Huang Fu Pinking was too cunning. Even though she looked great, it was tiring to talk to her. When she first came to Steel Armor Shelter, she pretended not to know Son of Heaven, so that the young master could help raise the price of many beast souls. The sacred blood flying beast soul was thus sold at a high price to Lin Beifeng. Because of the appearance of the Mystery Island, Son of Heaven had to buy it back from Lin, who ended up making some money. Such a woman would not invite him to a date for no reason. She must want to discuss with him the sacred blood creature on the Mystery Island. He knew that Holy Angel was gone now which other people were not aware of, and they were still preparing to hunt the creature. Maybe I can even gain something from this, Han Sen said to himself. However, he was still not sure how Son of Heaven and Huang Fu Pinking knew each other. This time Son of Heaven had spent several hundred million on buying the sacred blood flying beast soul from Lin Beifeng and borrowing a sacred blood shape shifting humanoid beast soul from Qin Xuan. In addition to the price he paid to hire Han Sen and Thumb. All of his efforts were for the beast soul of this sacred blood creature on the island. Han Sen simply took the sacred blood flying beast soul and a sacred blood beast soul arrow Huang Fu Pinking lent him and followed all instructions of Son of Heaven quietly. Secretly, Han Sen was amused. Son of Heaven, you've spent so much effort. When you land on the mystery island and find the sacred blood creature gone, I wonder how you would look. Everything was ready and Son of Heaven took thumb and Han Sen to fly towards the mystery island again. When they arrived at the island, Son of Heaven did not go immediately into the mountain, but let the team rest for half a day so that they were all prepared and energetic. For this humanoid creature's beast soul, Son of Heaven had considered everything. Han Sen did not say a word and simply followed what Son of Heaven said. He was only looking forward to seeing Son of Heaven's disappointment when he found that the Holy Angel was gone. At last, Son of Heaven led Han Sen and the Thumb into the mountain. Where is the sacred blood creature? From afar, Son of Heaven used binoculars to watch the top of the mountain, but did not see the holy angel. Son of Heaven accelerated towards the mountain, but did not see a trace of the creature at all. Feeling reluctant, Son of Heaven circled around the mountain top and the Ask Thumb and Hand Sen to search elsewhere on the island. But in the end, they found nothing. Dollar, I will kill you. Son of Heaven bristled and gave up in the end. He hated this person even more than he did a murderer. On the way back, Son of Heaven's face was dark. It seemed that his anger had controlled him completely. Han Sen would not provoke him, but was dying with laughter inside. Back in his room at the shelter, Han Sen summoned the three-blade harpoon and tried it out. He loved how it felt in his hand and could not wait to fight a sacred blood creature with this weapon. It is time that I go to the Devil Desert again. With this three-blade harpoon, the sacred blood fox king and black-feathered beast king could no longer escape from me. Han Sen was excited, but before he went to the Devil Desert, he had received a message from Qin Xuan, who asked Han Sen to see her. Her voice is a bit weird and she did not mention what it was regarding, which made Han Sen feel puzzled. It should not concern the special squad, otherwise she would just say it. Han Sen could not think of anything Qin Xuan would need him to do. At the same time, Qin Xuan was holding some paperwork and had a strange look on her face. Why would Professor Bai from the Saint Hall choose Han Sen? Qin Xuan muttered to herself as she read. 
Such a big shot as Bai Yishan would like to transfer Han Sen to work for the Saint Hall as his assistant. When he contacted the management of the special squad, they were all quite shocked. Feeling equally surprised was Ken Xuan. As the same time, she felt more confident about her choice of talent. Come in. Qin Xuan saw Han Sen was outside her office and said, Han Sen was the biggest gem that she had found in Steel Armor Shelter. He was a little greedy and cowardly, but his growth was faster than she had expected from him. Seeing Qin Xuan smiling at him, Han Sen felt a bit scared. Han Sen, you have done well recently. Qin Xuan smiled at Han Sen. Under your guidance, Han Sen said quickly. Well said. Qin Xuan's smile became brighter. This made Han Sen more nervous. He cleared his throat and said, So why have you called me here? So Professor Bai Yishan from the Saint Hall wants you to work as his assistant. Do you want to go? Without further ado, Qin Xuan told Han Sen what has happened. A professor from the Saint Hall wants me as his assistant. Han Sen paused and realized that he had nothing to do with the Saint Hall. And Professor Bai was also a stranger. It is many people's dream to work for the Saint Hall, not to mention under Professor Bai Yishan. It is a great opportunity and you should think about it. Qin Xuan grinned. She wanted to make Han Sen her successor, but if he did not want the same thing she did, there was no point in keeping him. What do you think? Han Sen looked at Qin Xuan and asked. He felt it was a bit weird, since he had never even heard of this professor. So, you think I should go? Han Sen pondered. On the contrary, I hope you could stay. Qin Xuan shook her head and said. You know that I have high hopes for you. Of course I wish that you could continue to stay on the squad. In a couple of months, I will become an evolver and enter Second God's Sanctuary. I will recommend you as my successor to lead the squad. All right then, I'll pass and follow you. Han Sen said decisively. In the Saint Hall, there might be a lot of benefits, but he still sensed something fishy about this. In addition, he was practicing jade skin. If he walked around experts of hyper geno arts all day, they might be able to tell that. Han Sen believed that based on his credentials and knowledge, he was more likely to become a guinea pig in a place like the Saint Hall. He would not go even if Qin Xuan did not try to keep him on the squad. And now he was also doing Qin Xuan a favor, so that was two birds with one stone. Qin Xuan's eyes lit up. She did not expect Han Sen to agree so fast and give up a great opportunity because of what she had said. You're great. I chose the right man. Qin Xuan was excited and patted Han Sen on the shoulder. Keep up the good work. Although leading the squad might not be as glamorous now, you would have a harder time at the Saint Hall because of the glass ceiling there. I assure you that you would never regret today's decision. I did not think that far. As long as I can follow you, that's good enough for me, Han Sen said quickly. Qin Xuan blushed and the thought of Han Sen's words when she hypnotized him. Well then, I won't keep you here. Watching Han Sen leave, she thought, he was just too young, otherwise I might consider him as a suitor. Hey girl, you're so good at this. Han Sen found Jai Yanren soon. There were better players than Jai Yanren on campus, but only a few. And they either did not want to beat her or did not play on Battle.net at all. It's not fun playing on campus. I'm playing on the Skynet platform. This player's good. He has beaten me three times, each time by 10 plus points, said Jai Yanren. Which virtual room are you in? Let me avenge you. Han Sen was ready to sit at one of the holographic equipment. Use my account. Jai Yanren got up and offered him her seat. Han Sen sat down, but pulled her back into his laps. Let go. Jai Yanren blushed and pretended to struggle. Stop. If you leave, how can you see justice served? Hugging her from the back, Han Sen invited that player to continue to play. How can you move like this? If you lose, I will not forgive you, said Jai Yanren. That's not a problem. This is the unevolved section, and I will not lose even with my eyes closed, Han Sen said. Such an egoist, Jai Yanren teased him. This is confidence. If you don't believe that I will win, let's make a bet. If I win, you need to kiss me. Han Sen laughed. And if you lose, Jai Yanren curled her lips. If I lose, I will kiss you. Han Sen said shamelessly. Nice try. Just do well. You must be Jai Yanren from Blackhawk. Seeing the message, Han Sen looked to his girlfriend suspiciously. The latter shook her head and was at loss. The platform randomly matched me with him. I don't even recognize this ID. Could he be from our school? Han Sen checked the ID name, which was quite arrogant, the third hand of God. Just reply to ask if he's from our school. We don't have a lot of players at this level and I know all of their ID names. This one is not one of them, said Jai Yanren. When Han Sen was ready to reply, he saw another message from the opponent. I am Lu Badao from the Hand of God Society at Alliance Central Military Academy. My nickname is Three-Handed King. You should have heard about me. Jai Yanren was surprised. The Three-Handed King from the Alliance Central Military Academy is among the top 10 in the Military Academy League. 
I wonder how he found out about my ID name. No matter how he found that out, I will not let a guy who had his eyes on my girlfriend off the hook easily. Han Sen grinned and sent a message over, I will not make friends with those who are weaker than I. Lu Bado sent a message back, I have just beaten you four times, each time by more than ten points. And you call that weak. I was eating just now and have just finished, replied Han Sen, ha ha, okay then. We'll play another round, and let's see what you say when you lose again, said Lu Badao, sending an invite to fight. Han Sen clicked yes without hesitation and the countdown started. What are you doing? Jai Yanren smiled and asked. Nothing, just to remove all his desires to play the game Hand of God. He has to pay for wanting to steal you, Han Sen said with his eyes narrowed. Jai Yanren did not speak but blushed. She felt sweet at heart and enjoyed watching her boyfriend getting jealous. Lu Bada was overjoyed. Last year, he watched the promotion videos of the Hand of God societies from all military schools and was stunned by a beautiful female player named Jai Yanren. However, Black Hawk did not compete against the Alliance Central Military Academy and was not even among the top eight. So, there was no chance for him to meet Jai Yanren. Lu Badao had to ask around to find out Jai Yanren's ID on the Skynet gaming platform. When he wanted to friend her, he found that her privacy setting was set to reject all friend requests. Lu Badao had almost forgotten about that bummer and was suddenly randomly matched with Jai Yanren today by the system. He did not notice it was her in the beginning and thought his opponents had good techniques. That was when he checked her ID and found out it was Jai Yanren's. Holding back his joy, he beat her a few times to show off his power before he texted her and asked if she was Jai Yanren. Learning it was her, Lu Badao was even more excited. He was prepared to show her how strong he was and hopefully he would be able to earn her heart. When he was about to touch the spot, a finger suddenly crushed it and his opponent gained a point. Well done, you're offering her points early on. Liang Yiming thought Lu Badao did it on purpose. Had to, Lu Badao said reluctantly. It was not part of his plan. I should pay more attention. Lu Badao still thought he was just being careless and reached toward another spot. Before he hit the spot, the finger once again crushed it. Lu Badao panicked a little as his opponent had beaten him to all the spots he wanted to hit eight times in a row, leaving him with no point. Badao, this is a little extreme. The beauty's level is okay. Be careful or you might even lose. Liang Yiming still thought Lu Badao was doing this on purpose. Lu Badao, however, was no longer in the mood to joke around. He was completely focused on the game, with his forehead sweaty. He did not want to let his opponent win, but lost nonetheless. Very soon, Liang Yiming could tell that something was wrong. Blue veins stood out on Lu Badao's temple, and his fingers were dancing like crazy. Still, no point was gained and the other hand in the holographic image could always hit the spot first. Liang Yiming widened his mouth. He knew very well how good Lu Badao was. Although Lu Badao was relatively weak among the Alliance Central Military Academy players, he would be absolutely the first place in any other military school. However, until now, Lu Badao still had not gained a single point, which was almost unbelievable. In the 100-point game, the opponent had already gained 80 points, while Lu Badao still had nothing. At this point, Lu Bada was covered in cold sweat. His movements became stiff due to too much pressure. The hand of his opponent was like a devil's hand in Lu Badao's eyes. Although the military school would teach hypergeno arts, there were nothing advanced. However, the military school students had certain benefits when it came to purchasing hypergeno arts. After graduation, it would depend on their achievements in the army whether they could buy more advanced hypergeno arts. Different from the Saint Hall, the hypergeno arts sold in military schools came with only one bottle of geno solution, and the D-class arts and under did not require any geno solution. Both Jai Yanren and Kalili were juniors and according to the rules they could purchase the 2B class and 4C class ones. Hansen could also purchase 1C class at this point. However, he was not interested in the less advanced hyper geno arts after seeing Holy Angel and Spartacle. King Chuan still owes dollar an S class license. How can I try to retrieve it? Hansen kept thinking about it but had no good solutions. King Chuan asked Dollar to get it in the steel armor shelter. However, it would be so dangerous with the strong guys and son of heaven in the shelter who hated Dollar's guts. The three of them came to the school's Hyper Geno art store and there was no shop assistant but all vending machines. The tutorials were up for download after payment and the Geno solutions would pop from the vending machines. Jai Yanren, what do you think I should buy? Halili could not decide. Genius, give me some advice, she then said to Han Sen. Maybe you could try the B-class momentum and windbreak. A strange voice next to them sounded. The three students looked to the direction of the voice and saw a well-dressed, mild-tempered middle-aged guy. He seemed to be at most 50 years old. How do you know that those two suit me? 
Lily looked to the middle-aged guy in surprise. He smiled and replied, The hypergeno art that you are practicing now should be Jetaforce. Lily was even more shocked. You can even tell this. Are you a professor at the martial arts department? The guy did not reply and continued, Jetaforce focuses a lot on the speed, and you have made a lot of progress so that momentum and windbreak will bring you a step further. Really? Lily was overjoyed but still could not believe him completely. I believe your linear acceleration should have reached 13 in fitness index and your muscle strength 12.5, so you're the perfect candidate for those two. Ah, uh, stared at the middle-aged guy, unable to believe that he could even tell this. Her linear acceleration was 12.98 and her muscle strength was 12.51, almost exactly the same as what he said. At this point, Khalili had believed that middle-aged was a professor in martial arts department. She gladly thanked him and said, I will buy momentum and windbreak then. Lily swiped her card and purchased those two. Han Sen and Jai Yanren regarded the middle-aged guy in surprise. He must not be an ordinary professor with such keen observation. Do you need my help? The guy asked Han Sen and Jai Yanren. You should really use the professor's help. Lily checked out the details of her newly purchased martial arts and felt they did suit her very well. I don't have any quota left. How about you? Jai Yanren said to Han Sen. All I have is a C-class quota and it will not be really useful to me, so I'll pass, said Han Sen. That's not right. Although advanced hypergeno arts are powerful, the foundation is also very important. Even C-class arts could lay a great foundation for many hypergeno arts. If you practice it well, it would even be helpful when you become an evolver or surpasser. The middle-aged men looked at Han Sen and continued. I will recommend you to practice a C-class and you will find out how helpful it is. That makes a lot of sense. Genius, you should try it, suggested Khalili. Hansen shook his head, no, thank you. Hansen had just bought the three-blade harpoon and mailed some money to his family. Now all that was left in his account was $200,000. Even if it was cheaper in a military school, the C-class martial art would still cost $500,000, so he did not really have the money. The professor meant well. And you need it anyway so let's just purchase it, Jai Yanren also said. Bro be honest, all I have is $200,000 at this point. I cannot afford that Han Sen had to say. That's fine, I have it. Jai Yanren smiled and transferred $500,000 to him. Since my girlfriend is rich, I'll get it then. Han Sen did not refuse and turned to the middle-aged man. Professor, what's the C-class hypergeno art that you recommend? After going back to his dorm, Han Sen checked out the details of E-Blast that he just purchased, playing with a bottle of purple Geno solution in his other hand. This is neat for a C-class martial art. Han Sen was surprised. He had little hope for a C-class martial art, but this one was even more complicated than Spartacle. Maybe it's a C-class because it is very hard to practice, and the result is not great. Since it was in the military school and Han Sen had purchased the martial arts from the vending machine, he did not suspect there to be any issue. Most importantly, after he had checked out E-Blast, he was immediately attracted by the content. It was exactly something he would have wanted. But after checking it out, Hansen did not immediately start to practice E-Blast. Nor did he use the Geno solution. He locked them all in his locker. Although E-Blast did not seem to have any problems, Hansen felt that the middle-aged man acted weirdly. As observant as Han Sen, he could even tell that the middle-aged man came for him, and helping Khalili pick her hypergeno arts was merely a cover. Therefore, Han Sen did not immediately start to learn E-Blast. Han Sen was not wrong. The middle-aged man was in fact by Yishan from the Saint Hall, and the E-Blast bought by Han Sen was the Yin-Yang Blast invented by Bai. Bai Yishan believed that Han Sen was the perfect candidate to practice Yin-Yang Blast. He had tried the official way and did not get Han Sen's consent. In a few days, the Saint Hall would pass the resolution to ban Yin Yang Blast. At that time, even Bai Yishan himself could not teach Yin Yang Blast to anyone else. Using a banned hypergeno art was a severe crime in the Alliance, and the punishments included death sentence. So, Bai Yishan's had to make Han Sen learn E Blast in these few days. Those who had practiced the hypergeno art before it was banned would be exempt from the law. Originally, Bai Yishan did not want to use this method. However, he had no time to prove himself in the Saint Hall and had to make Han Sen learn. In the next two days, Bai Yishan was observing Han Sen through the on-campus cameras. His face darkened, because obviously Han Sen did not use the Geno solution or practice Yin Yang Blast. Otherwise Han Sen's features would have certain change. As the inventor of Yin Yang Blast, Bai Yishan's knew that very well. What's wrong? Why haven't he practiced Yin Yang Blast? 
Bai Yishan became nervous. He had applied for the eligibility to practice Yin Yang Blast on behalf of Han Sen as a volunteer. As soon as the Saint Hall banned Yin Yang Blast, they would collect the copy of Yin Yang Blast from Han Sen and ask him to sign a non-disclosure agreement. If at that point, Han Sen still had not used the Geno solution, then the solution would be collected as well. So after that, even if he remembered the tutorial of Yin Yang Blast without the special solution, he would not be able to succeed. When Bai Yishin was feeling nervous about it, he saw Han Sen walking towards the teleport station, wanting to enter God's sanctuary. Bai Yishin panicked. The resolution would be passed in the Saint Hall in two days. If Han Sen went to God's sanctuary, he would lose his last opportunity to practice Yin Yang Blast. Bai Yishin had to go stop Han Sen. Han Sen. Bai Yishin stopped Han Sen before he went in the teleport station. You are. Han Sen recognized Bai Yishin but did not know what his name was. My last name is Bai, and we've met the other at the martial arts store. I recommended you to Bai Yi Blast. Why didn't you start practicing? Bai Yishin didn't even think that much at this point. With this question Han Sen was even more certain that Bai Yishin had some agenda. Professor Bai, I'm sorry I don't really have time. I'll practice it later, said Han Sen casually. No, you have to start practicing within two days, Bai Yishin said hurriedly. And why is that? Asked the Han Sen, staring at Bai Yishin. Bai Yishin knew that it was out of the question to cheat him into practicing Yin Yang Blast. He hesitated and said, I'm sorry, Han Sen. I had to do that. You're the most suitable candidate among everyone I've seen, and you refused my offer to come to the Saint Hall. I just did not want to see Yin Yang Blast banned. Bai Yishin said apologetically. Hearing Bai Yishin, Han Sen had a thousand thoughts in a sudden. This is a surpasser and a meister at the Saint Hall. He had been studying martial arts for years and is a walking treasure. God won't even forgive me if I don't blackmail him. Han Sen have checked Bai Yishin's ID and searched him on the Skynet. A celebrity like him had millions of photos online. Han Sen smiled and threw a gaze at Bai Yishin. He thought, don't blame me. You're the one who had the wrong idea first. Han Sen, I hope that you could start to practice Yin Yang Blast right now. Bai Yishin said quickly, Professor I want to ask you something. Why didn't you go find an evolver or surpasser to practice your invention? Asked Han Sen. I've thought about it but Yin Yang Blast was based on ruler, and ruler has a requirements for those who practice it, which is the age of them should not be over 20. Although I had made a lot of improvements, the limit is still there. For those over 20, they would make very slow progress in practicing Yin Yang Blast. They could spend 10 years and make less progress than a young person in a few months. Bai Yishin sighed. So I'm the most suitable candidate to practice Yin Yang Blast under 20. That's right. Otherwise I wouldn't go to the extreme and try to lie to you. Bai Yishin nodded. So I'm your only candidate now? Asked Han Sen. Yes, it will be too late for me to go find someone else. I really hope that you can help me too. Han Sen cut in before he could finish, so what can you offer me? What? Bai Yishin paused. I mean compensation. Since Yin Yang Blast is about to be banned, it means it's dangerous. And for me to take such a risk for you, I need to be compensated. Don't you agree? Han Sen smiled. Bai Yishin hesitated. He had never seen the young man like this. He never had to ask for a favor and people always came to him and back to learn the new martial arts he invented. Okay, if it is necessary, I could pay you. How much money do you want? Bai Yishin would do anything to keep Yin Yang Blast relevant. 100 S Class Saint Hall licenses, said Han Sen. Bai widened his eyes, as if Han Sen was a lunatic. He had never seen a young man so daring. After a long while, Bai Yishin looked at Han Sen and asked, Han Sen, do you understand what 100 S Class Saint Hall licenses mean? You are the one who invented the S Class Hyper Geno Arts, so what does it matter? If you think it's too many, 99 will do as well, said Han Sen. Han Sen got up and was ready to go. He had reviewed Yin Yang Blast and understood that there was no harm in practicing it. The risk was mainly in its usage. Wait, I could pay you a lot of money, said Bai Yishin. Professor, I am not so poor that I would risk my life for money, said Han Sen softly. There is no risk in practicing Yin Yang Blast. And based on your talent, you don't have to risk much using it. Bai Yishin tried to explain. I'm sorry, Professor. I'm afraid I cannot help you, said Han Sen. Bai Yishin had no idea whether or not he made the right decision to pick this guy. He said helplessly, The Saint Hall gives me two seconds class licenses per year. I have used some and given some away. Now all I have left are five. That's all I can offer. Think about it. Han Sen was satisfied with such compensation. He had reviewed Yin Yang Blast and knew that it was not dangerous to practice. Bai Yishin was very glad that he had the S-Class licenses with him. Otherwise this greedy devil might never agree to help him. Bai Yishin had never seen a young man like Han Sen. 
All other young men he met were respectful and never asked for anything. After signing the contract with Han Sen, Bai Yishin gave the five S-Class St. Hall licenses to Han Sen. These universal S-Class licenses would only be given to people on his level. An average professor would not even be able to have one. Although he is greedy, he did fulfill his promise. I hope that he could make Yin Yang Blast shine. Maybe one day Yin Yang Blast could be made public again. Bai Yishin tried to comfort himself. Han Sen nodded and went directly to the teleport station after Bai Yishin had left. The creature he was feeding had evolved into a sacred blood creature. He was feeding a color shifter this time. It was a primitive creature like a chameleon. The reason he had chosen a color shifter was its beast soul. Its beast soul was a shape-shifting one. After using the beast soul, one would not only be able to gain better fitness, but could also get protective coloration. If one stood in the same spot for a while, then the protective coloration would allow one to be integrated into the surroundings, as if one was invisible. However, when using the beast soul of a primitive color shifter, the color shifting was slow and not really that effective. If you could get the beast soul of a sacred blood color shifter, then the effect would be much better. My dear God, Jesus Christ, Buddha, please show your mercy. Han Sen was praying to all kinds of gods while killing the color shifter with his three-blade harpoon. Sacred blood color shifter killed. Beast soul of sacred blood color shifter gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 sacred geno points randomly. Maybe the gods had heard his prayer. Han Sen actually gained the beast soul of the color shifter. Hearing the voice in his mind, Han Sen jumped. Putting the meat in his pot on the stove, Han Sen started to feed a primitive cloud beast. He had fed one before, but failed to gain its beast soul. After some experimenting, Han Sen was overjoyed because the sacred blood beast soul of a shapeshifter was even better than he had thought. As long as he stood still, he would immediately become part of the surroundings. Even someone like himself could hardly tell, and the protective coloration would also extend to his armor and weapon. However, once he moved, the speed of color shifting would not be able to catch up with his movements, and a keen observer could always tell. Even so, Han Sen was very happy with the result. There was no doubt that this beast's soul was fantastic for assassination and running for life equally. Han Sen, it's almost the semi-annual assessment. I've never seen you on the training field of archery. Can you pass? Shi Jiking muttered when Han Sen came back to the dormitory. Han Sen then realized he had been in the school for half a year, and the assessment was impending. If he failed the assessment, it would be a lot of trouble. I should do fine. Han Sen had confidence in himself. He had studied hard for the past few months, and the most important archery assessment was his strong suit, so he was not worried either. However, others might not agree with him, for example, his student advisor Sidhu Yang. As one of the leaders in revitalizing the archery department in Black Hawk, Sidhu Yang had high hopes for the freshmen in the department. Han Sen was obviously a bad student in her eyes. Although his grades were good, they were not outstanding and she could never see him in archery lessons. As a member of the archery department, instead of participating in archery contests, he kept competing in Warframe and black and white boxing contests. What was worse was that he even went to shoot a commercial. These behaviors told her that he did not commit himself to study. Sidhu Yang felt it was necessary that she have a talk with Han Sen. As a specially recruited student in archery department, Han Sen's behavior was a big disappointment to her. However, Sidhu Zhang did not go to Han Sen straight away. She planned to talk to him after the semi-annual assessment. After his grades were out, her words would make much more sense to him. Archery needed tons of practice. One day without practice meant you would fall behind. According to what Han Sen had done in the past few months, Sidhu Zhang believed that his grades would definitely fall. The semi-annual assessment began. When it was the turn of the group that Han Sen was in, many students who had finished their assessment or were still waiting for it came to see how well Han Sen could do. The genius is great at war frames and black and white boxing. I wonder how well he could do with archery. He's in the archery department. That's what he does. Of course he's even better at archery. For sure he's the first place. The students' discussion was upsetting to Sidhu Yang. It seems that Han Sen is really popular. One of the supervisors Liu Dong smiled and commented. Sidhu Yang said with some contempt, being popular does not mean that he will do well in the assessment. I wonder if the students will worship him after looking at his grades. Liu Dong looked at Sidhu Yang in surprise. Normally speaking, a star student like Han Sen would be popular among the instructors. However, this student advisor did not seem to be a fan. Does he have bad grades in archery? Asked Liu Dong. Just average. I barely see him, replied Sidhu Yang. While the two are talking, it was Han Sen's turn to shoot at the fixed target. 
He made 10 shots instantaneously, all of which ended up on the bullseye. Liu Dong widened his eyes. Coach, you call this average. You're so humble. Liu Dong thought she was being humble. Skills like this would definitely get the student an S-level rating. Sidhu Ziang also paused, because Han Sen was more than accurate. He was really fast. The genius is so amazing. It was like he shot 10 arrows at same time. For sure he will have an S-level rating in the assessment. The semi-annual assessments in military schools divided grades into 8 levels S, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A student would get a rating in each subject, ratings below D level would be considered fail, and all subjects below D needed to be retaken. If the overall rating was below D, then the student would most likely have to drop out. Coach, I'm jealous that you have a student like this in your department. Sidhu Ziang could not believe that without showing up at all, Han Sen could maintain his grades and even show improvements. No need to be humble, coach. We could all see Han Sen's level. Sidhu Ziang did not say a word and cast an odd look at Han Sen. After the fixed target test, it was the moving target test. When it was Han Sen's turn, the bow and arrow became a rifle gun in his hands. Wherever he wanted to hit, there was no missing. Again, he was rated S. In the combat simulation, Han Sen acted like a professional soldier. There was no miss, no error, and no accidental injury. With his high speed, he got an S without doubt. His grades did not bring Sidhu Ziang joy, because with his skills, he never thought of joining the school team or the archery society, which was unforgivable in her eyes. As a specially recruited student in our department, he never thought about contributing to his own major. I need to teach him a lesson. Sidhu Ziang of course wanted to use him. However, since Han Sen did not apply to join the school team, she did not want to ask him herself. In her heart, she had already treated Han Sen as one of the core players to participate in the tournament. But she had to make him suffer a little before that. In her room on campus, Sidhu Ziang watched the video of Han Sen's assessment repeatedly. In the end, she dialed the number on her comlink, and it went through. Ziang, it's been a while since you came to visit me. A man's voice sounded in her comlink. After a long while, Sidhu Ziang turned her comlink off and had a smirk on her face. She had to ask for her dad's help this time to frighten Han Sen into joining her team. Before Sidhu Ziang's dad retired, he was the famous Nazi in the military. The soldiers trained by him with Go Limp when hearing his name. After Sidhu King retired, he came to Black Hawk and became a vice president, but there was not much to be done. When he just came to Black Hawk, the president asked him to train the archery students. However, within the few days, no student could get out of bed, since they were either injured or sick. The archery students were about to write a blood letter co-signed by 10,000 people, which scared the president. Sidhu King was then asked to do no more. Sidhu Ziang had repeatedly told Sidhu King to train Han Sen according to the highest standards. I'll see how long you can last. Sidhu Ziang thought of the miserable look of Han Sen under her dad's training and secretly celebrated. After the semi-annual assessment, Han Sen was celebrating with his roommates, Jai Yanren and Kalili in the cafeteria. Han Sen, we are all human. How come there is such a difference? I did not spend time in the relationship or playing. All I did was training in the archery department and all I had was an A. You're never in our department and was driving warframes and playing with your girlfriend all the time. How come you got an S? It's not fair, exclaimed Shi Jikang. Come on, you're in the heavy warframe society all the time as well, said Lu Meng. Lu, whose side are you on? Shi Jikang stared at Lu Meng. Not yours. Lu Meng laughed. The next morning, Han Sen was waiting for Hu and Fu pinking in front of the teleport station. He got a text from the Office of Academic Affairs when he just saw Hu and Fu pinking. In the text, he was asked to attend a training by Sidhu King. I'm so sorry. I have to go. Han Sen showed Hu and Fu pinking the text. Hu and Fu pinking took a look and frowned. If this is the Sidhu King that I have heard of, I'm afraid you're in trouble. What about him? A vice president of Black Hawk. He used to be an archery coach in the military and had a nickname Nazi. Han Sen did some research on the online school community and got a better idea who Sidhu King was. Based on the text from the Office of Academic Affairs, Han Sen came to an indoor training facility. When he arrived, he felt that something was off. In the entire facility, he was the only trainee. The student advisor Sidhu Ziang and a nice-looking, well-dressed middle-aged man were waiting for him. Han Sen, this is Coach Sidhu King. From today, he will be training you for a month. You need to study hard under his guidance. Sidhu Ziang patted Han Sen's shoulder and left. Sidhu Ziang smirked secretly. Boy, I'll come back and see how miserable you are in a few days. By that time, you will beg me to take you with me. Han Sen shrugged and came over to Sidhu King. The coach smiled at Han Sen. Han Sen, I've heard about you. You're very popular in our school. 
I heard that you are voted the most desirable date by girls. You have good grades and many talents. You flatter me, coach. When talking to Sidhu King, Han Sen maintained the standard stance of a soldier, which he learned during the military training. Sidhu King smiled and reached his right hand in front of Han Sen. There was a piece of metal of one inch by one inch. It looked like Z-steel. Sidhu King's hand suddenly gained the color and texture of gold. It was nowhere near human's hand. Crack. With a light squeeze, Sidhu King's fingers flattened the Z-steel. This is a little gift for you. Sidhu King put the piece of Z-steel in Han Sen's hand with a smile. Han Sen understood very well that it was a warning. But it was indeed impressive. Han Sen could not achieve that so far. He had read about this kind of strength on the Skynet. It was a kind of martial arts that could only be practiced by evolvers. All right, here begins our training. We will start with the horse riding stance. Ordinary people would think that archery relies on the strength of one's arms and fingers, which is wrong. Most strength needed in archery comes from the waist and belly. This morning we will practice your core strength with horse riding stance. Sidhu King instructed Han Sen to make the stance and sat down in the chair, watching him. Coach, a small request. One of my hobbies is black and white boxing. During the training, I'm not allowed to go on the Skynet, and this is not something I can practice alone. After training, could you join me? Sidhu King was very interested in black and white boxing and no longer required Han Sen to make the horse riding stance. Han Sen walked over to Sidhu King with a smile. He had learned from Hu and Fu Pinking that although Sidhu King taught archery, his biggest hobby was black and white boxing. Come on, you attack first. Watch me and I'll teach you how to do defense the right way. Sidhu King thought highly of himself in black and white boxing due to his decades of practice. Han Sen's request pleased him very much. Sidhu King's expression gradually changed. Originally he wanted to instruct Han Sen, while later on he started to treat him like a serious match. In the end, Sidhu King was extremely shocked. How did you manage to do that? Sidhu King stared at Han Sen. He was not able to win a single round in a dozen matches. Sidhu King suspected that the student might have cheating equipment on him. That was easy. The way you use your strength was outdated. For example, when you use the black fist, the muscle on your arm. Han Sen said something in the theories of the yin-yang blast. Sidhu King nodded hard, looking like a primary school student listening to his teacher. Ahem, I'm sorry, I've said too much. I should go back to do the horse riding stance. Sidhu King stopped him and put Han Sen in his own chair. Pouring Han Sen a cup of tea, the coach put a smile on his face, forget about that. Please continue. That doesn't seem to be right, Han Sen blinked and said. What's not right? I have watched your test videos. You are doing great. I will show you some tricks later and you just need to practice them. Sidhu King suggested, let's do this, you can show me how to improve black and white boxing skills, and I can show you archery techniques. If you have anything that you don't understand, you could always ask me about it. Then I'll continue, asked Han Sen. Please, insisted Sidhu King. Han Sen grinned and continued to talk about black and white boxing, while Sidhu King took up the bow and arrow to show Han Sen some special archery techniques. Don't stop, Han Sen urged Sidhu King. He found that the coach had stopped demonstrating as he listened to Han Sen. Yes, yes, Sidhu King said and continued to shoot the arrows. After two days, Sidhu Zhang felt it was about time to check on Han Sen. She would go see how miserable he was and the try to make him join the team proactively. Imagining the look on Han Sen's face, Sidhu Zhang couldn't help smiling and quickening her steps. The moment she stepped in the training facility, what she saw made her pause. Opposite to her imagination, the popular student was even sitting in her father's chair, drinking a cup of tea. Her dad, on the other hand, was shooting arrows next to Han Sen, smiling to the student from time to time. Hyung Fu Pinking was somehow informed that Han Sen's training was over and came to find him to accompany her in the hunting trip. Hyung Fu, won't you bring more people? In the steel armor shelter, Han Sen looked at Hyung Fu Pinking in surprise. She had a lot of strong friends, but did not bring anyone. You're quite enough, said Hyung Fu Pinking with a smile. She herself was quite strong as well. With Han Sen here, unless they ran into sacred blood creatures that were especially tough, they would never be in trouble. Normally speaking, a sacred blood creature that was the king of a group would be weaker than the sacred blood creatures that were alone. Black Feathered Beast King was not that strong among all the sacred blood creatures Han Sen had seen. Its beast's soul was sacred blood wings, which were quite useful. The two rode their mounts toward the Devil Desert and ran into a lot of primitive creatures on their way. Unfortunately, in two days, they had not even seen a mutant creature. When they came to the place where they ran into the group of black feathered beasts, they did not see a single creature. They must have either moved away or been hunted down. Last time when I was here, I saw a sacred blood creature in the Sand Valley. 
I was not able to kill it at a time. Are you interested? Have a look there. Hyunfu Pinking suggested with a smile. What kind of creature is that? Han Sen looked at her in surprise. She was leading a strong team last time and the creature that they were not able to kill was definitely very strong. Looks like something inedible. It looks like a warframe made from a piece of rock, only smaller. It was about six feet tall, very tough, strong and fast. Even a sacred blood weapon could only leave a shallow mark on it. Hyun Fu Pinking added, apart from that, it also had a black hammer that should be a sacred blood gear. Last time on my team, one was killed and one was severely injured by the hammer. We should go check it out. Han Sen was very interested. As long as a sacred blood weapon worked, he had some chance to kill it. For a six-foot-tall rockman, it would be easy to cut its neck. Brother Han, do you think you could kill this creature? Han Sen smiled back at her. Hyung Fu, I believe you did not bring me here just to let me look at it. I could lend you the sacred blood beast soul arrow. But if you gain its beast soul, I need to claim half of it, said Hyung Fu Pinking. She had planned this out when she took him here. He had a sacred blood bow and she had a sacred blood arrow, so they could shoot at the sacred blood creature from outside the sand valley. If they could kill it, then it would be great. If not, the creature would be injured and provoked to come out of the valley. And then they could try to kill the creature together. Hyung Fu Pinking did not fear that the creature might hurt herself since she had sacred blood wings anyway. I will do without the arrow. After I kill this creature, I will buy you dinner. Han Sen summoned a pair of wings and flew toward the sand valley. Looking at Han Sen flying with a pair of primitive wings, Hyung Fu Pinking was shocked. Brother Han, you do not mean to use a primitive pair of wings to enter the valley. The wings were from a primitive black feathered beast, so they were slow and ineffective. They were just enough to keep Han Sen from falling into the sand. Han Sen used to have a pair of mutant wings, which he sold to Hyung Fu Pinking for the three blade harpoon. He also had the purple winged dragon beast soul, which was Dollar's signature, and he could not use that. Han Sen smiled and did not answer, flying into the sand valley. The valley was full of quicksand, and the creature was standing above the sand. For unknown reason, its heavy body did not sink. 300 feet into the sand valley, Han Sen was discovered by the creature, who immediately lifted its hammer and ran over like a tank. 100 feet from Han Sen, it jumped up and swung its hammer at him. Although Han Sen had put on the phantom ant armor, the impact from a such heavy weapon would still kill him. Hyung Fu Pinking saw that Han Sen was in danger. His wings were too slow to bring him away from the creature's blow. If he chose to land on the ground, he would not be able to run away from the hammer either, because he would be trapped in the shifting sand. The sacred blood creature had such strength that even someone who had maxed out on all Geno points would not be able to spar with it. Not to mention Han Sen's weapon the harpoon was extremely short. Hyung Fu Pinking summoned her beast soul bow and arrow, wanting to shoot an arrow to help Han Sen and buy him some time. Before the arrow left the bow, Han Sen had already taken back his wings and fell to the sand. He stepped on the ground but was not trapped. Under his feet, the golden rockworm king the size of a car suddenly appeared. Although the rockworm king had not transformed, it did not fear the sand since it originally came from the desert. Leveraging this step, Han Sen used Sparticle to avoid the attack from the creature and approached it. The three-blade harpoon flashed on the neck of the sacred blood creature like a silver lightning bolt. The three-blade harpoon was sharp enough to cut sacred blood armor, and Han Sen's strength was even greater than someone having maxed out on all Geno points. With one strike, the creature's rock-hard neck was cut off, its head thrown into the air. The headless creature still managed to make several steps forward before the hammer fell from its hand into the sand. Then the creature gradually sank into the sand. Tiyun Fu Pinking was dumbstruck. She could not believe that the creature which her entire team did not manage to kill was easily beaten by Han Sen. At this point, she regretted selling the three-blade harpoon to Han Sen. With the weapon, he was too formidable. How did this guy get so far? Was it really just because of Ken Xuan? Hyung Fu Pinking could not believe that was the only factor in Han Sen's success. Son of Heaven was equally, if not more resourceful than Kin, but Son of Heaven was not as strong as Han Sen. In addition, even with Kin Xuan's help, Han Sen would not have gained the same resources Kin Xuan did. When he eventually pulled the hammer out of the valley, Han Sen asked Hyun Fu Pinking who was dazed, Miss Hyun Fu, how much do you think this sacred blood gear is worth? Hyun Fu Pinking walked to him, reached out to lift the hammer and failed. She slowly frowned, this thing is too heavy. Those who had enough strength to use it would not need it, while those who did not have enough strength could not make any use of it. 
I would say it could sell at 4 to 5 million tops. And even with that price, we would need to find the right person to buy it. Several million is also quite some money. Whenever you have another auction, would you list it as one of the items? Han Sen was short of money recently, and the several million was not a small number. Of course, but you have said that you will buy me dinner, and that I'm counting on that, Hyun Fu Pinking said was a smile. Of course, said Han Sen quickly. He understood that it was not easy to sell a sacred blood gear. Back then when Kin Chuen bought the golden axe, only a very strong man in the special squad could use it. This hammer was much heavier than the golden axe and it would be very difficult to find a buyer for it. Before Han Sen made it back to school, he was summoned by Kin Chuen. When he saw her, he felt something must be off. The entire team of the special squad and steel armor shelter were present, which was rare. Young Manly's face was dark. Gambler and those who were friends with Han Sen were blinking at him, and Han Sen was not sure what they meant. Sit down please. Kin Chuen asked him to sit and looked across the room. She said, in a month I will be able to finish my first evolution and enter Second God's Sanctuary and need to make the transfer now. She paused and looked at Young Manly. I have recommended Young Manly to become the head of Steel Armor Gang. She then looked at Han Sen and said, as for the head of the special squad, I would like to nominate Han Sen. Han Sen was surprised and did not expect this to happen. Now he came to understand why Young Manly's face was dark. Although it sounded like the head of the gang was more powerful, it was not a formal organization. On the other hand, the special squad was in the military system. Being a member of the special squad, Young Manly would actually be under Han Sen's supervision. As for the steel armor gang, Han Sen did not go there again after he entered the military school. Young Manly had thought that based on her ability and qualifications, she should naturally become the new head of the special squad. However, she did not realize that Kin Xuan would recommend Han Sen to become the next head. Han Sen was very glad to see Young Manly being upset. He had never liked her, but being her subordinate, he had to listen to her. Now, he had become her boss. I believe I am the better candidate for the head of the special squad, said Young Manly. This is already decided. It is an order. I will hear no discussion about it, said Kin Xuan and got up. Okay, this is the end of this meeting. Han Sen and Young Manly, you two stay, the rest of you could go back to work. Han Sen's friends gave Han Sen a secret thumb up and left the conference room. Young Manly, I should have nominated you as the new head of the squad but you do have a temper. Just focus on the gang and the try to evolve as soon as possible. Kin Xuan said softly, Young Manly was more than her subordinate. I believe I have what it takes, Young Manly said sullenly. Han Sen, what do you think? Kin Xuan looked to Han Sen and asked. I will not let you down, Han Sen said resolutely. At last he was able to boss Young Manly around and that he would never let this opportunity go. In addition, being the head of the special squad also had its benefits. Not only could he utilize the human resources within the squad, he could also make connections with the upper level. The pay was much better as well. More importantly, as the head of the special squad, he had the authority to purchase internally. Not only could he now access Sacred Blood Beast Souls and S-Class Saint Hall licenses, he could enjoy the discounted price. In the entire squad, the head was the only one who could enjoy this. Great, Kin Xuan smiled and nodded, and then turned to Yang Manly. Since you think you are the better candidate, you two can have a competition. If you could win, then I will take back my decision and recommend you instead. Okay, I will take any competition and will never lose to him. Yang Manly immediately stood up. She used to be the instructor of Han Sen and Archery and did not believe that she would lose to him. Not only archery, young Manly did not think she would lose to him in anything. Since you are both good at archery, let's do archery. Kin Xuan asked Han Sen, do you have any objections? None. I could compete on anything but having a baby, said Han Sen with a smile. Young Manly gave him a fierce stare. He was implying that she couldn't do much except for giving birth to a child. Then let's go to the virtual training field, said Kin Xuan and walked out. After going back to school, Han Sen went to the holographic equipment hall and entered the virtual training field designated by Kin Xuan. Kin Xuan did not ask them to have the competition in the training field of the shelter, for she did not want anyone else to find out about the result. No matter who lost, the person would suffer in his or her honor, which was not something Kin Xuan was willing to see, because they were both future leaders that she had hand-picked. This is one of the classical game rooms on Sagittarius. It is called White Bird's Forest. You will see a path in the forest two miles long. When you go through the path, there will be black and white birds on the trees. You cannot shoot the white birds, but only the black ones. If you mistakenly shoot a white bird, you will be out. And we will decide who the winner is based on the number of the black birds you shoot. If your numbers are the same, the winner will be the one who finishes faster. Do you have any questions? After explaining, Kin Xuan looked at them. 
No, answered Yang Manli and Han Sen at the same time. Okay, you shall begin now. Han Sen and Yang Manli started their test respectively and entered the White Bird's Forest. Although Qin Xuan did not want anyone to know the results of this competition, an acquaintance happened to see both of them when they entered Sagittarius. Su Xiaokiao often went to Sagittarius to practice his archery, despite his carefree appearance. Sagittarius was obviously more fun than shooting at a target. How come the three of them would log in on Sagittarius at the same time? What are they trying to do? Su Xiaokiao suddenly became curious and followed them into the game room. The game room was open to everyone, but after one entered the scene it would become a unique experience for the player. Su Xiaokiao saw Han Sen and Yang Manli had both started the White Bird's Forest test and hesitated. He could use the observing mode and pay to watch one of them. However, he was alone and it was impossible for him to watch both. Su Xiaokiao only paused for a moment before he chose to watch Han Sen's test. It was not because Su Xiaokiao thought Han Sen was the better archer, but because everyone in Bullsai knew how great Yang Manli was. Su Xiaokiao was not sure how well Han Sen could do, so he was intrigued to see Han Sen's test. After entering the observing mode, Su Xiaokiao saw Han Sen waiting to begin the test. Su Xiaokiao was familiar with this game room and had trained here before as well. This was a scene easy and difficult at the same time. Anyone could easily pass the challenge by running through without shooting any white bird. However, if one was fast but did not shoot many blackbirds, one's score would be very low. And if one killed the blackbirds slowly, one would still get a low score. Also, the scene was set in the nighttime and the forest was very dark, so some blackbirds would blend in the darkness and it was easy to miss them. Su Xiaokao would normally get a D rating and occasionally see if one could kill more than 90% of the blackbirds and guarantee one's speed. One could be rated A. As for the highest rating, S, almost no one could achieve that. He started to record this test. At this time, the countdown ended, and Han Sen embarked on the path of the White Bird's forests. The moment he started walking, he had already shot an arrow. It seemed like he did not even look. Also, he was shooting non-stop while walking. There was barely any interval between his arrows, which went in all directions. Tin Xuan also chose to watch Han Sen's test. Yang Manli was her subordinate and best friend, and she did not need to watch to know her skills. All she wanted to find out was whether or not Han Sen could give her another surprise. Having done detailed analysis and research on the guy, she was surprised by his potentials. He was from an ordinary family and was able to get this far. Other people might think that Han Sen had benefited a lot from her help, but King Xu and herself knew very well that his achievements were all accomplished on his own. Even the help she had offered to him was because of his contributions. If Qin Xuan had not hypnotized him to learn the truth, she would strongly suspect that Han Sen was dollar. Although Yang Manli is very powerful, she is not the best leader, and Han Sen is much better in that regard. Qin Xuan sighed. It was not an easy position to be in, pressured from the upper and lower level at the same time. If Qin Xuan could choose, she would rather be just a soldier whose only responsibility was to fight. But since she was put on the spot, she had to shoulder her responsibilities. King Xuan believed that Han Sen was the better candidate to take care of all kinds of issues. When the test began, all King Xuan's attention was attracted by Han Sen. She was unable to move her eyes from him. This is amazing. Unbelievable. Su Xiaokiao clenched his fists and thoroughly enjoyed himself. King Xuan was extremely shocked. Although King Xuan was not a great archer, her eyesight was much better than Su Xiaokiao's so that she could notice more details that escaped Su Xiaokiao. Han Sen almost started shooting immediately since the beginning, and King Xuan never saw his arrows miss. He never hurt any white bird. Sometimes, King Xuan only saw the black birds after he shot the arrows. Some arrows were significantly slower than others and did not even aim at the black birds in the beginning. However, the arrows would always end up in the bodies of black birds. If it was occasional, King Xuan would not be impressed but she had seen the situation happening repeatedly. His judgment, eyesight, and archery were all super impressive, King Xuan had to admit. If Han Sen were to be rated S, there was no doubt that Yang Manli would lose. This was a result that King Xuan was willing to see. After all, if a leader of the team did not have the absolute authority, the stability of the team would be endangered. If Han Sen was able to beat Yang Manli in her strongest field archery, he would be able to establish the necessary authority to deter Yang Manli from questioning his ability. Yang Manli was very satisfied with her performance. She had outdone herself because of her strong desire to beat Han Sen and prove herself to King Xuan. Although she was still rated A, her score was among the top in a level. 
She had killed much more blackbirds and had also increased her speed by three minutes. As Yang Manly walked out of the test scene, she saw that both King Xuan and Han Sen were there and thought, he is out so early, which meant he was even faster than me. Then he must have not killed enough blackbirds or have even shot a white one. Here's my score. Yang Manly directly demonstrated her report to King Xuan. A level, 964 blackbirds killed. Well done. You've made a huge progress by only missing 36. King Xuan read the statistics in the report and complimented. Indeed, a score like this was outstanding him on the unevolved. So, King Xuan thought secretly, Yang Manly would have been invincible in steel armor shelter. It's just there is Han Sen. How about you? Yang Manly asked Han Sen. She was not happy that her position was stolen by a teenager. Han Sen did not speak and showed her his report. With only one look, Yang Manly suddenly narrowed her eyes and looked incredulous. A golden S on the report told her that she had lost. He must have killed all a thousand blackbirds, and he was also faster than her. How is that possible? Yang Manly could not believe that Han Sen was so strong. Half a year ago, she trained him and he had made such progress in just six months. S level. Many professional archers would not even be able to get such a rating. Although Han Sen was in the archery department, his progress was still awe-inspiring. According to Yang Manley's knowledge, Han Sen was in the Warframe contest and black and white boxing competition. He even starred a commercial. How much time did he have left to practice archery? Yang Manley regarded Han Sen. No matter how reluctant she was to admit this fact, the fact is the fact. S level, she could not even try to compete. All right, this is a done deal then. King Xuan did not say much, but felt satisfied with Han Sen's performance secretly. When the three left the online community, Su Kao was still thrilled, watching the video he just took. I had never thought Han Sen's archery skills are so strong. Su Kao watched the video repeatedly and could not stop. The hunting frenzy was like the best movie, full of excellent frames. Han Sen's figure stood aloof and cold, and his movements smooth and perfect. Without any edit, this video was comparable to any well-designed movie. You're keeping such a secret from me. Now it's time for a punishment. Su Kao grinned and uploaded the video to the farm of Sagittarius. He also named it S-Level, White Bird's Forest. Su Kao hesitated for a second and still blurred the facial features of Han Sen to protect his identity. S-Level, for real. I don't believe it's real. Many watched the video with suspicion and started a heated discussion in the forum. This is unbelievable. Must be special effect. I just checked on the official website. And this test was indeed rated S. Super. How did he do it? I watched more than 10 times and could not stop myself. I'm totally hooked. Young Manly also saw the video. Because of the timestamp of the video, it was easy for her to tell that it was Han Sen in it. Looking at Han Sen, Young Manly got goosebumps. This kind of performance would be any archer's ultimate pursuit. He was more than accurate. It was like he could predict everything. No matter for archers or snipers, the toughest thing was never the accuracy, but the judgment under complex situations. Obviously, Han Sen was one of the best archers she had seen in this aspect. He did not aim at any target when he made the shot, but was able to tell where the target was going to be. Young Manly felt a chill. If she and Han Sen were shooting at each other, she might not even be able to make a single shot. It was a feeling hard to describe. King Xuan was right. He is a natural, thought Yang Manly, after finishing watching the video. The video was very popular in Sagittarius, but its popularity ended among archery lovers. Archery was, after all, a less popular skill. After going back to school, Han Sen wanted to call his girlfriend when his comlink suddenly rang. Sidu Xiang was summoning all the archery team members. At the training field of the school team, Han Sen saw Shi Jikeng, Lu Meng, and Zhang Yang, who were also summoned by Sidu Xiang. Today I have summoned you to show you some recordings of a student, who will become one of your rivals this year. Sidu Xiang turned the holographic device on and projected the video. It was an edited video of one person shooting at different times, and most of the scenes were shot in the venue of the military school league tournament. In more than 40 minutes, the entire school team was so quiet that one could even hear a needle dropping on the floor. After the video ended, Shi Jiking wiped the cold sweat on his forehead and said, OMG. Are you sure this guy is just a military school student instead of an Evolver professional archer? We are against him. Impossible. We'll definitely lose. He must not be human. He is our opponent and absolutely a military school student. I believe you have all heard of him. Jing Jiwu, the captain of the archery team of Alliance Central Military Academy. People call him Monster. In his freshman year, he had led their archery team to become the champion of the tournament. Sidu Xiang nodded and did not say anything. She turned to Han Sen and asked, Han Sen, what do you think? 
We can only know after a match, replied Han Sen with a smile. The senior team members cast odd looks at him. If the comment was from any other freshman, they would definitely tell the person all about the bad performances of Black Hawk in history. However, it was Han Sen who said it, so they remained silent. After all, Han Sen was the genius on campus and had achieved great success in other items. Deep down, they still felt contemptuous about what Han Sen had said. Sidhu Ziang was satisfied with Han Sen's remark. She was glad to see that at least one person had morale on her team. Black Hawk had been a loser for so long that it was natural for the senior team members to lose confidence. We will watch another video, also from an unevolved person. Sidhu Ziang played another video, the background of which was a virtual gaming platform. It is the White Bird's Forest from Sagittarius. Someone suddenly recognized that. When the video started to play, Han Sen was surprised. It was the video of him taking the White Bird's Forest test. I have seen that. It is a real video and has been recognized by Sagittarius. Han Sen, do you think this person is stronger than you? Sidhu Ziang asked Han Sen. She wanted Han Sen to lead the team in this tournament. If he did not have the resolve to win, she would have to reconsider despite his good skills. I should be on more or less the same level. Han Sen cleared his throat and answered. It was him in the video, so of course it was the same. Han Sen's comment sounded arrogant to others. The level of the guy in the video was clearly beyond that of a monitoring school student. Although Han Sen did well in Warframe and black and white boxing, he rarely went to archery classes. Like what Sidhu Ziang was thinking before, his teammates felt unsure about Han Sen's archery skills and were reluctant to believe that he had the same skill level. Han Sen, do you have a minute? A sensual female voice sounded when they were going back to the dormitory. Han Sen's roommates all widened their eyes, staring at Huang Fu Pinking who had walked up to Han Sen. What's the matter? asked Han Sen reluctantly. Have you forgotten what you have promised me? Huang Fu Pinking smiled and asked. She then turned to his roommates. Do you mind if I borrow him for a second? Not at all. Shi Jikin blinked at Han Sen. Han Sen remembered that he had promised to treat her to dinner. Now that she had even come to him, he had no other option than to follow her. First hooked up with our campus belle, now the new goddess. How come I never got lucky? Said Shi Jikung admiringly. Because your skin isn't as smooth. Why would the pretty ladies like a rough guy like you? Lu Meng tried to put him down. When the beauties get older, they would understand the benefits of being with the rough guy. Rebutted Sam. Lu Meng threw a contemptuous gaze at Sam, who was tough looking and full of dirty jokes. Han Sen checked the name on the building and it was really a restaurant called Queen. And next to the name were three stars. Huang Fu Pinking took Han Sen to a private room on the top floor. The declaration of this room was a bit strange, different from a regular restaurant. The sofa was crescent-shaped, facing a wall covered by a curtain. The table was also an arc facing the wall. As Han Sen was wondering, Huang Fu Pinking had sat down on the sofa and took the remote to open the curtain. Behind the curtain, the wall was made of one-way glass, and they were actually on the balcony. When looking down, they could see a gigantic martial ring. On the martial ring, a heated combat was going on. Outside the ring was a cheering and shouting crowd. With another click on the remote, the sound could suddenly be heard. What do you want to order? Huang Fu Pinking clicked the remote again and the holographic images of different dishes and prices were all projected. It's my treat, so you should order. Han Sen was completely attracted to the two persons in the combat. They were both evolvers and it looked like they had already gained a lot of Geno points. They both had practiced great hyper Geno arts. The man had both his arms looking like black metal, and the woman was wearing a pair of shorts, with her long legs gleaming like silver. One used fists and the other legs. They both had extraordinary strength and speed. Whenever there is the flesh-on-flesh -flesh clash, it sounded like metal. Han Sen was strong among the unevolved. Compared to these evolvers, he still fell short. What do you plan to do after graduation? Asked Huang Fu Pinking, without answering Han Sen's doubt. What plan could I have? I am in the military school and I will naturally be enlisted. Han Sen said casually. Huang Fu Pinking poured Han Sen a glass of wine and herself one. After taking a sip of the wine, she continued, Do you know why this restaurant is named Queen? Han Sen shook his head and thought, How am I supposed to know that? I'm not part of your organization. Because there is a real queen here, Huang Fu Pinking said seriously. Queen? Han Sen paused. There was no queen in the alliance, the highest political figure was the president, followed by the senators and generals. Not the queen of the alliance, but the queen on the martial ring, explained Huang Fu Pinking, pointing to the martial ring. Han Sen then noticed that the two evolvers had left of the ring, and a host had walked to the center and said in an excited voice, Now the highlight of the evening, the queen of ours will fight her thousandth combat. Will Her Highness remain undefeated? 
Let's wait and see. Please welcome the queen to the stage. Next, the lights were off in the entire martial ring, and the only spotlight hit on a tall woman in combat suit. She walked towards the ring wearing a butterfly mask to cover her face. She was about six feet tall and looked like a fierce weapon herself. The moment the woman walked out, all the audience started to cheer and calling her name with the same rhythm. The woman stood on the ring, raising her left arm and pointing her index finger and middle finger to the sky. With this gesture, the audience started to stand up and the atmosphere has become much heated. Today challenging Her Royal Highness is Zhu Zhikang from the Iron Fist Martial Hall. With the introduction by the host, a man around 30 years old also came to the martial ring. Han Sen did not listen to the host, but kept her eyes on the woman who was called the Queen. She had to such a fierce manner that it looked like she had seen a million deaths. Han Sen himself also had a fierce vibe, but compared to her, it was nothing. When Han Sen was regarding Queen, the combat began and Su Zhiking turned his fists into golden alloy and smashed them at Queen. The strike was fast and fierce, compressing the air as it went. Even with Han Sen's eyesight, he could not tell how Zhu Zhiking started the strike. Han Sen thought to himself, Indeed, I am no match to strong evolvers. This is such a formidable strike. This was the famous super alloy fist, an S-class hyper geno art of the evolver section in the Saint Hall. Even among revolvers, only a few could use it well. This man was obviously much stronger than the last man. Soon Hansen discovered that what Zhu Zhiking was best at was not his fist, but his footwork. His footwork was so fast that he approached Queen in just two steps. He also managed to make the fiercest strike in her weakest angle. Queen did not even move, letting the fist tougher than iron hit her temple. Banged, the fierce strike hit the woman's temple, only making her head move slightly. Very soon, she recovered and gazed at Zhu Zhikang with coldness. Zhu Zhikang looked incredulous. He could not believe that his signature could not even hurt this woman. My turn. Queen raised her left hand shaped like a knife, her white skin suddenly turning red. Seeing her raising her hand, Zhu Zhikang could no longer take the pressure and summoned his beast souls. His upper body was suddenly covered in armor and a long knife appeared in his hands. With a growl, Zhu Zhikang smacked at Queen with his knife. Like a lightning bolt, the blade was about to cut Queen. Her eyes cold, Queen did not mean to dodge. When the knife was in her face, she suddenly waved her hand at it. Her hand met the beast's soul blade and the weapon broke in the middle as if it were made of wood. And her hand did not even stop there and move past Zhu Zhikang. Crack. Zhu Zhikang's beast's soul armor was broken, blood flowing from the gap. Queen moved her fingers and her hand became normal again. Zhu Zhikang thumped to the martial ring and never got up. In the cheering of the audience, the medical team immediately rushed over and tried to save Zhu Zhikang. Queen raised two fingers to the sky again giving rise to even louder cheers. Then she walked off the martial ring and disappeared in the channel. Hansen's eyes lit up. He had seen many videos of the combats between evolvers, but none of them was as good as Queen. Obviously, Queen was among the top evolvers. In the thousand combats, she never lost to a single person from any other martial hall. She is the queen here and our best student. If you are willing to join the Ares martial hall, you could enjoy the same cultivation that she went through. You have great talents and might even do better than she. Huang Fu Pinking said with a smile. She must not be just an ordinary student. Han Sen refused to believe that Queen was an ordinary student at the Martial Hall. Of course not. And if you are willing, you could become extraordinary as well. She blinked. How? If you marry me and become related with the Ares Martial Hall, then you would certainly be extraordinary. Han Sen choked on the water he just drank. Han Sen, unevolved. Status, none. Lifespan, 200. Geno points needed for evolution, 100. Geno points gained, 100 ordinary Geno points, 100 primitive Geno points, 64 mutant Geno points, 50 sacred Geno points. After leaving the shelter, he looked around and suddenly saw a red rope tied on a crooked tree. This was the signal he told Lu Wynan. At the time, he was only saying it casually and did not really want to cooperate with Lu Wynan. After all, they had fought each other, and Hansen could not be sure that Lu Wynan would not hold a grudge. It looked like Lu was quite anxious. Why are you looking for me? Han Sen turned into Dollar and walked to Lu Wynan. Brother, you have come finally. I have waited for you for so long. Lu Wynan came over excitedly. What do you need? Han Sen frowned. Brother, I found a sacred blood creature in Dark Swamp. But I was not able to kill it, so I want your help. Lu Wynan explained everything. Lu Wynan had been waiting for Han Sen for several days. He could not take care of the sacred blood creature, but he did not want to seek the gang's help either, because the gangs would take a big cut. That's when he thought of Han Sen and left the signal. 
When he was about to give up, Han Sen really came. What? You found a humanoid sacred blood creature? Han Sen stared, his eyes wide. Yes, it was covered in black armor and was holding a black spear in its hand. It was riding a black unicorn horse, which could float above the swamp, Lu Wynan described. A spear and a mount, what kind of creature is that? Are you sure you did not see a human? Han Sen looked at Lu Wynan incredulously. Brother, I kid you not. Although it looks like a person, you will see that it is definitely a sacred blood creature. So did you fight it? What's the outcome? Han Sen asked Lu Wynan. Lu Wynan blushed, it was too strong and its mount too fast. I had to use my iron feathered bird to escape. Han Sen suddenly understood that Lu Wynan must have been completely beaten, and that was why he had come to Han Sen. So if I could kill the sacred blood creature, how do you suggest we divide the gains? Asked Han Sen. Whoever gains the beast's soul gets to keep it. As for others, I think the humanoid would be inedible, and all there is to share are its spear and mount. What do you say we each pick one, and I will let you pick first? Lu Wynan asked. Take me to check it out first. If I could kill it, then we can talk about how to divide. If not, then it doesn't even matter, Han Sen thought about it and said. Okay, Lu Wynan gritted his teeth and agreed. Han Sen did not kill him last time, which gave him some faith in Han Sen's character. If he were talking to another person, he would not show that person the creature first, as the information was his value in the deal. Half a day into the swamp, Han Sen found a mutant centipede more than six feet long. He cut the centipede in half with the diamond sword and cooked the insect for some mutant geno points. The tough shell of the centipede was like tofu under the diamond sword. Lu Wynan saw the sword and his eyes lit up. Brother, this must be the sacred blood gear from that creature on Mystery Island. Did you manage to get its beast soul? You know your stuff. I did not get the beast soul, replied Han Sen casually and summoned Meowth to share the meat. Han Sen did not turn Meowth into its transformed state. It still looked like a kitty cat, eating meat at Han Sen's feet. Such a pity that I cannot summon the Golden Rock Worm King, thought Han Sen. The Worm King was always with Han Sen instead of Dollar, so he did not want to blow his own cover. Brother, you're still feeding it. Lu Wynan thought the cat was harmless as before and reached out to touch its head. Roar. Before his hand could touch Meowth, the cat suddenly turned into the transformed state, a black tiger biting at Lu Wynan. Lu Wynan was indeed great at escaping. Using his incredible footwork, he was able to take back his hand and run from the tiger. Meowth had already thrown itself at Lu Wynan and was ready to launch another attack. Meowth, come back to eat. Han Sen called. He was counting on Lu Wynan to lead the way and did not want him to be killed. Lu Wynan pointed at Meowth and shouted, Isn't it mutant beast soul pet? How come? Han Sen did not reply and continued to eat. Lu Wynan suddenly understood, it evolved. Yes, I was lucky. Han Sen thought to himself, if you see Holy Angel, you would know what a truly valuable pet looks like. Thinking of Holy Angel, Han Sen was a little upset. He had tried to feed her mutant meat, and she would not even look at it. When Han Sen was eating sacred blood meat, she became very interested. Unfortunately, Han Sen couldn't afford to feed her sacred blood meat yet. After the two persons and one cat were fed, they continued their trip. Because the centipede was too large, Han Sen was not able to gain a single mutant geno point with his full meal. After flying for several days in the dark swamp, they reached the destination. Unfortunately, all the mutant creatures they saw were too large, and Han Sen only gained one mutant geno point. They were at a water meadow. In the green grass stood a unicorn horse, on the back of which sat a knight covered in shiny black armor, with the black spear in his hand. Only by looking at it from afar, Han Sen was certain that it was not a human being, like Lu Wynan had said. The armor of the knights was neither metal nor stone, it was more like shell of the turtle or some kind of beetle. And there was no gap between the parts of the armor. It was very odd. Han Sen was sure that this was a sacred blood creature, and one that was very hard to deal with. It was much stronger than the stone man that Helen showed him. Just by looking at its spear and mount, Han Sen was sure that it was not an ordinary sacred blood creature. Humanoid creatures were already very strong, and this one even had a mount, which was something that Han Sen had not even heard of before. Brother, am I right? Is it a sacred blood creature? Hiding in the grass, Lu Wynan whispered to Han Sen. Yes, it is indeed a sacred blood creature. However, it looks very strong and I am not very confident that I could take care of it. Han Sen told him the truth. The sacred blood creature was so strange. Han Sen did not think it would be weaker than the holy angel from the mystery island. However, he did not have a second sacred blood ghost butterfly at this point. This kind of rare sacred blood creature must be worth a lot of money. If we happen to get its beast's soul, then we will be able to make a fortune. 
After the two had finished the discussion, they sneaked up on the sacred blood creature hidden in grass. Han Sen thought, no matter how strong the sacred blood creature was, as long as it could not fly, it will not be too risky for the two of them. When they were 500 feet from the sacred blood creature, it suddenly looked to their direction. Han Sen saw very clear that behind the helmet of the sacred blood creature were a pair of red eyes, as red as the flames in the hell. Before Han Sen and Lu Wynan could react, the sacred blood creature quickly urged the black unicorn horse to charge them and raised his black spear. Watch out, this guy is too strong. Han Sen grabbed the diamond sword with both his hands and used jade skin to its full. The unicorn horse had an incredible speed. It could also float above the water and did not sink. Almost immediately, the sacred blood creature was merely a dozen feet from Han Sen. With its high speed, it quickly used its spear to stab Han Sen in the chest. Han Sen used Bladestorm to slash the diamond sword at the creature. The spear and the sword clashed. Han Sen was blown away with the sword in his hand by the magnificent strength of the creature. Han Sen was among the top of all humans in First God's Sanctuary. However, he could not block a strike from the sacred blood creature. After being thrown a couple of feet up in the air, he rolled in the water meadow for quite a while before he could stop himself. Lu Wynan who was trying to launch a sneak attack at the unicorn horse was dazed. He knew very well about Han Sen's strength, and even Han Sen was blown away. Lu Wynan quickly ran away when he saw that the sacred blood creature had made a turn to face himself, but Lu Wynan's footwork was incredible. He wiggled away like a fish and summoned his iron-feathered bird to carry himself into the sky. The sacred blood creature did not chase after Lu Wynan, but turned to Han Sen. The unicorn horse was so fast that it was immediately in front of Han Sen, and the spear was about to reach the guy. Boom. The two fierce monsters started a huge fight. Lu Wynan who was up in the sky was dumbstruck. He never thought the sacred blood creature would be so strong. Dollar was absolutely a celebrity in Steel Armor Shelter. Just a while back, he killed the sacred blood creature on the Mystery Island alone, beating Son of Heaven to it. Such a strong man was not able to beat this creature at all, which was beyond Lu Wynan's imagination. Han Sen was also shocked. This sacred blood creature was not weaker than Holy Angel at all. Its skills to use the weapon was also so incredible that Bladestorm seemed weaker. Although Han Sen had seen the Sly Fox King and Black Feathered Beast King, as well as the powerful Holy Angel, he still marveled at the spear skills of this sacred blood creature. He believed that few in First God's Sanctuary could match the creature and spear skills. Brother, let's go now. Lu Wynan cried to Han Sen in the sky. Although Han Sen was no match to the creature, he did not want to retreat. It would not be that easy for the sacred blood creature to kill him right away, so he wanted to test what is the weakness of the creature. Han Sen was attracted by the odd spear skills of the creature. Although it seemed that the creature would only stab and sweep with the spear, Han Sen discovered that both the stabbing and sweeping carried a strong spinning force. When the creature was stabbing, the spinning force would turn the spear into a drill that could penetrate anything, even a suit of sacred blood armor. When the spear was used in the sweep, it would make the perfect shield, and that anything touched the spear would be blown away. Magnificent spear skills. Han Sen was observing as he fought. However, he was still not able to tell how the sacred blood creature was making it work. As Han Sen was not able to continue fighting the creature, he summoned Meowth in its transformed state. Meowth threw itself at the creature, while the unicorn horse suddenly gave the pet a kick. Meowth did not anticipate this at all and was suddenly sent into the air. Fortunately, Meowth was very strong and the kick did not really hurt it seriously. With some blood on its mouth corner, it growled and ran toward Unicorn Horse. Han Sen took Meowth back and flapped his wings to fly up, leaving the creature alone. OMG, that was so scary. How come there would be such a formidable sacred blood creature in the dark swamp? Said Lu Wynan, controlling the iron feathered bird to fly near Han Sen. I was right. It was not one sacred blood creature, but two. Han Sen was still staring at the sacred blood creatures from above. You mean the mount was an independent sacred blood creature? Lu Wynan suddenly understood what he meant and cried, then how can we ever win? Han Sen regarded the sacred blood creature and remained silent. It was still possible. He had Meowth, which could be used to distract the unicorn horse. However, Han Sen was not great at riding a mount and could not fight on Meowth's back. Also, the spear skills of the sacred blood creature were so strange that Han Sen had not thought of a solution. He was only able to fight that long using Spartacle, which helped him dodge many key attacks from the creature. If he were on Meowth's back, he would not be able to use Spartacle, which would make him vulnerable to the creature's attack. In addition, he had to borrow the strength of Bloody Slayer, which made him unable to use a mount. 
He thought about it and decided that Meowth could only function as a distraction and he had to be the one who did the fighting. You are not able to fly anyway, so there is nothing you could do to me. If I cannot beat you this time, I will come ten more times. One day, I will definitely kill you, thought Han Sen to himself. He then found a place to rest with Lu Wynan until they were ready to fight the creature again. When he had recovered, Han Sen went to the water meadow. Before he reached the destination, Han Sen saw the sacred blood creature emerging from a lake, which puzzled Han Sen. Han Sen did not find anything peculiar about the lake, which was quite shallow. There were a lot of grass growing in the water and around the lake. Otherwise, there was nothing special about it. Maybe the guy is a neat freak and went down for a shower. But then he should have left its mount. Hansen could not tell the reason and decided to forget about it. He took up the diamond sword and summoned Meowth, charging the creature in the form of Bloody Slayer. Hansen and Meowth fought the creature together, but they could only last for about 20 minutes. The spear skills of the creature were so great that Hansen's arms were only still functioning thanks to Jade Skin and Sparticle. Even his sacred blood armor was broken. Hansen did not hesitate to fly away and take back Meowth. If it were not for Meowth, Hansen could not even last 20 minutes. With his wings saving him each time, Hansen fought the creature once in a while for a week. Brother, it doesn't make sense to continue. How about we seek other people's help? Lu Wynan saw Hansen continue to fail and became worried. Although Hansen would not die, it was clear that he was not the creature's match. Although Hansen kept failing, he started to understand the weird spear skills of the creature. Now he was even more interested in the spear skills than the creature itself. The spear of the creature would not only spin, but it could spin both clockwise and counterclockwise. When it was spun clockwise, anything touching it would bounce off. When it was spun counterclockwise, anything touching it would be drawn in. This was similar to Yin Yang Blast, which could reach the same effect by combining the Yin Force and Yang Force. Like Yin Yang Blast, the clockwise and counterclockwise spin also depended a lot on understanding the opponent's psychology, which was similar to black and white boxing. The sacred blood creature was formidable in that it could always use the spinning force spot on, which puzzled Han Sen. Han Sen was a master of tricking his opponent, yet the creature could always predict his movements and use the corresponding force. Can it really read my mind? Fought Han Sen. Lu Wynan was very upset and said to Han Sen, Brother, you keep trying. I will hunt some mutant creatures nearby and try to spot other sacred blood creatures. These days, Lu Wynan had seen countless failures of Han Sen's and now he had given up. Even with more help, these two sacred blood creatures could hardly be killed. With their speed and strength, even a large group of people could not block them from running away. Hansen agreed and was still thinking why the sacred blood creature could see through his mind. He thought over all the fights with this creature in these days and was even more certain that the creature could see through his mind. Otherwise, it was impossible for the creature to make the right decision every single time. If it really could read my mind, then regular attacks would not work, thought Hansen, touching his chin. If he wanted to beat the creatures, the only way was to conceal the actual force he was using. Even if the sacred blood creature could see through one's mind, the best it could do was to tell the target of the attack, instead of what kind of force would be used. In order to achieve that, Yin Yang Blast was a great option. With the same strike, the Yin Force and Yang Force would create completely different effect, which was perfect to beat this creature with. However, Han Sen was still worried, unfortunately I have just started with the Yin Yang Blast and could not even use it to its full potential. In the next two days, Han Sen fought with the creatures multiple times, and was even more certain that the creature could tell what his target was. Han Sen had to start practicing Yin Yang Blast, which was the only method through which he could kill the creatures alone. More people would not really be a help, because the creatures could always manage to run away. Not to mention Han Sen was not really willing to share with other people such special sacred blood creatures. It was fairly easy for Han Sen to practice Yin Yang Blast because he had already accumulated a large number of Geno points. However, to switch between the Yin Force and Yang Force was not easy. Han Sen had gained some experience in switching forces during his fight with the creatures and made some progress. However, it still took him more than half a month to reach the first phase of Yin Yang Blast and use the forces properly. In the beginning, Lu Wynan would come back at times. Recently, however, Han Sen rarely saw him. Han Sen did not know if Lu Wynan had given up or gone to seek others' help. With no one around, Han Sen thought about using his bow and arrows to shoot at the sacred blood creatures. However, he did not even have a sacred blood beast's soul arrow. Even if he could hit the creature, a mutant arrow could not cause enough harm anyway. 
Luckily, Han Sen had reached the first phase of Yin Yang Blast and was ready to try it out. Taking a deep breath, Han Sen carried the diamond sword on his back and shapeshifted into the bloody slayer. Clenching his fists, he threw himself at the sacred blood creatures. The reason why he did not use the diamond sword was not that he did not want to, but that his level in Yin Yang Blast was not enough for him to integrate the forces in his weapon. This time, Han Sen was completely focused. Without the sword, he could get seriously hurt once he made a mistake. Han Sen was not sure why the creatures were lingering here. Han Sen had been here for almost a month, and the two creatures did not mean to leave at all. They were always around the lake, and sometimes in the lake. Seeing Han Sen was here again, the creatures were not surprised at all. The knight immediately charged Han Sen with its spear, which reached Han Sen's neck almost instantaneously. Han Sen growled and used Spartacle to dodge the spear with his four hooves moving rapidly. Han Sen wanted to hit the knight in the face, but did not control his strength very well, which was why the blow ended up thumping the creature in the chest. Han Sen quickly moved backward after the blow, because the unicorn horse had already come toward him. Fortunately, in nearly a month, Han Sen had seen how the mount fought many times and was prepared for it. I used the yin force, which should have some effect on him. Han Sen was not certain about the result. The creature stared at Han Sen with a pair of bloodshot eyes and did not charge again. A second later, blood began to flow from the corner of its mouth. Han Sen was pleasantly surprised. He did not realize that the yin force had such a great penetrating effect. He believed that the armor of this creature was no weaker than any sacred blood armor, while he was still able to use the yin force to hurt its inner organs. Roar. When Han Sen was getting excited, he suddenly saw the sacred blood creature growling and charging with a spear in his hand at a greater speed than before. Han Sen did not dare to spar with it without a weapon anymore. He drew his diamond sword and blocked its attack. Bang! When their weapons clashed together, Han Sen lost his balance and moved back, while the sacred blood creature had blood welling from its mouth. Using fierce spear skills, the creature was unstoppable. This is so weird. How come it became even stronger after getting hurt? Han Sen decided to give up after taking two hits from it. He quickly summoned Meowth to distract the knight so that he could fly away himself. When he was up in the air, Han Sen took Meowth back and thought he was safe. Feeling a chill all of a sudden, he tried to fly higher, but it was too late. A black lightning bolt went across the sky and hit a wing of Han Sen's with a strong spinning force. Crack. Although the wings were also covered in sacred blood armor, it could not stop the spear carrying a strong penetrating spin. A wing was pierced by the spear. Han Sen was covered in cold sweat. He was fortunate that the spear merely hurt his wing. If it were his body, he would be dead by now. His instinct and experience gained in all his fighting and hunting saved his life. Han Sen wanted to explore the lake, but the sacred blood creature would not leave the area, giving Han Sen no chance. In addition, Han Sen did not want to take the risk in case there were anything dangerous in the lake. I should finish off the sacred blood creatures first before exploring the lake. Han Sen had made up his mind to kill the sacred blood creatures. Now he had a better command of Yin Yang Blast. As long as he practiced it more, it would be easy for him to kill the creatures. It seems that I have to understand what's going on in the lake before I can ever kill them. Han Sen flew in the sky and watched the lake from above. The lake was around six feet wide, shallow and clean. In daylight, it was easy to see the aquatic plants growing on the bottom. When the knight rode the unicorn horse to enter the lake, the head of its mount would still be above the water. Han Sen looked around and did not see anything but some aquatic plants. He had also watched the sacred blood creatures healing in the lake. They basically did nothing and became healed after a little while. Is the water special? And that must be why the creature would not leave here. Han Sen guessed, but did not believe that was the reason. There were so many lakes like this in Dark Swamp. All these lakes were formed through rain. Since other lakes did not have any special features about them, Han Sen did not think that this lake would be different. There must be something in the lake, Han Sen told himself. After observing carefully for a long while, he still could not tell what was in it, at least not anything visible. When Han Sen was there for almost two months, he was able to use Yin Yang Blast quite well, much faster than the previous candidates selected by Bai Yishan. It took at least two years for those soldier volunteers Bai Yishan picked to get the hang of this hyper geno art and Han Sen only spent two months. Han Sen did not know if it was because he was talented, or because he had a large number of Geno points, or because he had practiced Jadeskin. At this point, Han Sen was able to fight with the sacred blood creatures well, but it was still difficult for Han Sen to kill the creatures. In darkness, Han Sen shapeshifted into the color shifter and moved in the direction of the lake. The sacred blood creatures were on the other side of the lake, but Han Sen was still taking extra care when moving. 
until he slowly entered the lake. The sacred blood creatures were still unaware of his presence. Under the effect of the color shifter, Han Sen's body and belongings were all integrated into the water. No one could sense his presence. Han Sen's assassination skills did not go to waste. As he was controlling his breath, neither creature noticed him there. Not realizing the danger nearby, the creatures came to their usual spot. When they were about to reach the spot, the unicorn horse suddenly neighed with terror and kicked about. A long wound almost split open its belly. Blood and inner organs fell into the water, coloring it red. The knight immediately fell off its mount into the water. Han Sen was excited. His target was the unicorn horse to begin with, and without the mount, it would be much easier to kill the knight. Struggling in the water, the unicorn horse was too injured to fight. The sacred blood knight stabbed Han Sen with its spear furiously. Moving sideways, Han Sen dodged this blow and shortened their distance, his three-blade harpoon slashing at the creature. The creature lifted its spear and blocked the harpoon. All of a sudden, Han Sen threw a punch at the creature's chest with his left arm. The creature was indeed strong and managed to block Han Sen's fist with its spear swiftly. Without being affected by the spinning force, Han Sen's fist avoided the spear and still hit the creature in the chest. The Yin Force suddenly penetrated its armor and hurt its inner organs. Without moving its body, the sacred blood creature suddenly spitted blood and swept the spear violently toward Han Sen. Han Sen remained still and suddenly became one with the water, confusing the sacred blood creature temporarily. Jumping out of the water, Han Sen threw another punch at the creature, who learned from the previous experience and spun the spear in the other direction. Unfortunately, Han Sen was using the Yang Force this time. With the clockwise spinning, Han Sen's fist was drawn toward the creature's chest even faster. Boom. The sacred blood creature fell in the water with a splash. Han Sen did not stop and threw himself at the creature. Previously when the knight had its mount, Han Sen couldn't approach it. However, they were now both in the water and the unicorn horse was dying. There was no suspense in how this was going to end. The water was suddenly red and Han Sen heard the voice. Sacred blood creature beetle knight killed. Beast soul of beetle knight gained. Meat inedible. Sacred blood creature magic horn killed. No beast soul gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 sacred geno points randomly. As the beetle knight died, its mount died as well. Hore. Han Sen stood up from the water and almost jumped up. He was so lucky to gain a beast soul and some sacred blood meat at the same time. The body of the beetle knight quickly dissolved in the air, and Han Sen dragged its spear, and the body of the magic horn to the bank. The body of the magic horn was the size of a camel. Han Sen did not waste any time and started a barbecue. Han Sen also dried some meat to preserve, in case it went bad. He hadn't seen Lu Wynan in more than a month. It seemed that Lu Wynan had given up on the two sacred blood creatures. Han Sen wondered what Lu Wynan would think if he ever learned that they were killed by Han Sen after all. Soon after, Han Sen searched the entire lake but saw nothing special. Then Han Sen had some time to look at his newly gained beast soul of sacred blood beetle knight. Type of Beast Soul of Sacred Blood Beetle Knight, Doppelganger. Han Sen was puzzled, as he had never heard of this kind of beast soul before. He tried to summon the Beetle Knight, but it simply did not work. How can I use this Doppelganger Beast Soul? Han Sen studied for a long time and did not find out how it was supposed to be used. He did not have too much time for research anyway. It was about time that he should go back eat the creature he had been feeding. On the campus of Black Hawk Military Academy, Sidu Zhang was going crazy. After Han Sen entered God's Sanctuary, she hadn't heard from him in three months. It was almost time for the archery tournament, and Sidu Zhang was afraid that Han Sen might have run into some accident in God's Sanctuary. On one hand, she was worried that he would miss the tournament. On the other hand, Sidu Zhang did not want anything bad happening to such a talent. Sidu Zhang almost went to ask the security department of the academy every day, trying to see if Han Sen had been back. Since every student needed to swipe a student ID when entering and returning from God's sanctuary on campus, Sidu Zhang would know if he was back. After her morning exercise, Sidu Zhang heard from the security department that Han Sen was back. Han Sen saw Sidu Zhang who came in a hurry and did not know what happened. Follow me. Sidu Zhang took his arm and led him away. Han Sen was crucial to the school team and she had to make sure he was his best self. Sidu Zhang took Han Sen to the facility of his last training. Instead of calling her dad, she decided to train him herself this time. Sidu Zhang knew very well that at Han Sen's level, he no longer needed to learn more techniques. She was only worried that after staying in the God's Sanctuary for so long, he would be less familiar with archery. She wanted him to do a recovery training to make sure his archery skills were perfect. Coach, I don't think I need to do a full-on training. Some exercise will do, Han Sen licked his lips and said. 
He had always been using his archery skills, which were in his bones. Ten moving targets. If you could beat me, you can skip the training, said Sidu Zhang decisively, handing the training bow and arrows to Han Sen. Coach, this is not fair. You are an evolver, and much better in strength, speed, and reflex than I if I beat you as an unevolved person. You would feel so bad, said Han Sen casually. Sidu Zhang paused. She had anticipated complaints from him, but did not expect Han Sen to have such a response. If you could beat me, I would be very happy. Sidu Zhang suddenly smiled and narrowed her eyes. However, Han Sen, it is not easy to achieve that. Ten moving targets meant that ten targets would randomly came from different locations. Whoever hit the effective area of the target first would gain a point. They both drew their bowstrings. Suddenly, a target in the shape of a human emerged from behind a wall. Two arrows left the strings at the same time. Bang. The two arrows hit the neck area of the target, which was the effective area, almost at the same time. Ding. Sidu Zhang's scorekeeper rang. She gained a point because she hit the target first. A coach is a coach, said Sidu Zhang with content. Well done. You almost needed no time to react. Han Sen had spared no efforts, but Sidu Zhang was absolutely faster than him, which was something he could not make up for. Even among evolvers, Sidu Zhang was doing very well. You did pretty well already. Top of the unevolved for sure. Sidu Zhang meant what she said. It was only slightly slower than her. She had never seen this kind of speed among Black Hawk students. Sidu Zhang was even more satisfied with Han Sen after this round. He was also able to hit the target right in the neck, which showed that he was dexterous. Sidu Zhang was considering losing to Han Sen on purpose in the next round. Otherwise Han Sen might end up with too bad a score to maintain his confidence. As the two were talking, the game was still on. Suddenly a fox-shaped target jumped up from the floor. All the targets appeared randomly in this game. Because Sidu Zhang needed less time to react, she could always hit the target first. Sidu Zhang shot her arrow with confidence and saw Han Sen shooting slightly slower than her. Although she was pleased with Han Sen's performance, Sidu Zhang believed that she had won. Just when her arrow was about to hit the target, Han Sen's arrow knocked hers away from the target and ended up hitting the target. Ding. As Sidu Zhang was dazed, Han Sen gained one point. One to one now coach. It seems that I'm rather lucky. Han Sen smiled at Sidu Zhang. Is it luck? Sidu Zhang frowned. This kind of situation would happen when two archers were shooting at the same target. However, the probability of such circumstance was really low. Maybe it is luck. Sidu Zhang did not pay too much attention to this incident and prepared for the third round. After all, even she could not guarantee hitting the effective area of the target after knocking another arrow away. Soon, Sidu Zhang was shocked. She could not believe her eyes. Three rounds in a row, Han Sen's arrow knocked hers away and hit the effective area of all the targets. Sidu Zhang thought it was incredible and widened her eyes. Did you do it on purpose? She was not questioning him, but confirming. If Han Sen could really accomplish this, his archery skills were simply beyond her imagination. Other than this, I could not think of any other method to win. Han Sen shrugged and said. Han Sen wanted to find his girlfriend, but had no chance at all. The moment she came out of the training facility, he was summoned by King Xuan to the Steel Armor Shelter. King Xuan was supposed to enter as Second God's Sanctuary a month ago and had delayed until now just to wait for him to make the transition in the leadership of the Special Squad. From now on, you will be the captain. I'm leaving the Special Squad to you. Do well but no need to linger here. Evolve as soon as possible. Second God's Sanctuary is where you truly belong. The Special Squad system was very selective about the members' qualifications. Thanks to King Xuan, Han Sen did not run into too much trouble in joining the Special Squad in the past. The missions accomplished by the eight members would not only bring rewards to themselves, but also points to the head, which could be used to exchange for some internal resources. Han Sen celebrated secretly. He immediately checked the available missions to take and saw that only one mission was available in Steel Armor Shelter, which was submitted by Yuan. The content of the mission was to assist Yuan to kill a specific sacred blood creature with the condition that the last strike must be made by Yuan. The reward for this mission was a bottle of S-level Geno solution. He printed out the information of the sacred blood creature provided by Yuan and entered Steel Armor Shelter again. Calling Yang Manly over, he said, Manly, who do you think could finish this task in our squad? Captain, please refer to me using my full name. Young Manly saw the documents, but did not reach out. She said, This one is beyond our ability. How would you know that if you did not look at the file? Han Sen frowned. Tian Xuan had determined that even with the entire squad, we will not be able to kill the sacred blood creature, and that was why she did not take it. 
If you need, there are more detailed reports on the sacred blood creature in the cabinet on your left, explained Yang Manly calmly. Han Sen got up and walked over to the cabinet. He found King Xuan's report on the sacred blood creature, which was quite detailed. It seemed that King Xuan had tried to kill it but given up. After reviewing the files, Han Sen smiled at Yang Manly. Manly, if I remember correctly, you have a duty to assist me. Only in the squad. Also please don't call me. Han Sen cut in. Okay then, go back and pack. You're coming with me. Where? Yang Manly paused. Wherever the sacred blood creature is. Han Sen knocked at the files on the table with his knuckles and added. Tell Yuan that we will take the task and ask him to lead the way. Yang Manly wanted to argue. I am the head and you are the deputy. Now I have decided to accomplish this mission. Do you have any question? Asked Han Sen. No. Yang Manly saluted him and did not argue any longer. Captain, it is a sacred blood creature we are going to hunt. I don't think we could bring any irrelevant person. Objected Yang Manly when hearing King was also coming. Han Sen, this is such a good opportunity. I really would like to see how you hunt. Please bring me with you. The condition was not a compulsory one written in the mission, so King had to beg Han Sen. I'm only suggesting because of safety concern, said Yang Manly. It is fine. Let's go together. Han Sen knew that Yang Manly was right that they would save a lot of trouble without King. Although King and Yuan had maxed out on all other Geno points except for sacred ones with money, they were still lacking in real combat experience and would not be very useful when fighting a sacred blood creature. Han Sen had his own plan, which was why he agreed to take King. Ha ha, Manly, you should learn more from your boss, said King contentedly. Han Sen, the sacred blood creature is in that forest. It looks like an ape and is incredibly flexible. The scariest thing was its speed. Last time, if Gambler were not there to protect us, we would have been dead, said King with lingering fear. Han Sen nodded, as he also heard that Gambler was severely injured. Due to the non-disclosure agreement, he did not know why he was hurt. And it turned out to be about this sacred blood creature. When they were at the border of the forest, Han Sen stopped and said to Yang Manly, Manly, you go ahead and lead the sacred blood creature out. I will cover you with bow and arrows. Do not worry, I will kill the creature immediately when it's out. Yang Manly was dumbstruck, her mind filled with the word revenge. With trees everywhere, what good will a cover do? Archery could barely be of any use here. Yang Manly thought that there was only one possibility for Han Sen to do this, trying to kill her. Han Sen did not explain himself, but smiled and said, You can also choose not to execute my order. Yang Manly gave Han Sen a fierce stare and walked into the forest. Different from Han Sen, she was from a service family and valued order. The trees were so dense in the forest that it was very dim. Yang Manly summoned a broadsword and walked carefully. As she was walking, she thought she would definitely apply for a transfer if she could get out of here alive. Kin Xuan, you did make the wrong choice. The minute you leave, he is turning on me. Is this what you call a talent? Yang Manly felt sadness and anger at the same time. As Yang Manly turned back, she did not see Han Sen at all, and was even more certain that Han Sen was trying to get a revenge. When she turned her head, a black ape jumped out from the thick fallen leaves on the ground. The ape was so fast that it was in her face in an instant. Because she turned her head back, Yang Manly did not discover the creature in time. It was too late for her to dodge or run. She had to hack her broadsword at the ape. Although she had nice broadsword skills and decent strength, she was not able to match a sacred blood creature in anything but archery. The sacred blood creature grabbed her weapon with one paw. The mutant weapon couldn't even hurt its skin. The ape's other paw quickly snapped at Yang Manly's neck. Watching the nails as sharp as daggers, Yang Manly could no longer fight back. She sighed inwardly, damn, I'm going to die under the bastard's scheme. When she was almost desperate, she saw a silver flash cutting off the paw next to her neck. As the paw fell, blood sprayed out. Hansen quickly rushed from the side and moved to the screaming sacred blood creature. Young Manly watched Hansen's figure and did not know how he appeared. With complex emotions, she did not move. Didn't he want to get even with me? Where did he come from? Young Manly saw Hansen's figure moving swiftly, a silver weapon dancing away. The sacred blood creature lost all four limbs in an instant and was about to die. After returning to his office at Steel Armor Shelter, Han Sen said to Yang Manly, Deputy, your performance today was not professional. With your ability, you should have done better. Blushing, Yang Manly moved her lips but failed to mutter a word. Indeed, as Han Sen said, she could have done much better even though she could not beat the creature. The reason why she acted poorly was that she was distracted by her grudge. Yang Manly had no argument to make. As a soldier, you should trust your comrade. Obviously, you did not trust me. I am sorry, Captain. It will not happen again, Yang Manly said with her head down. 
It was rare that young Manly would apologize. However, she realized that she had made a terrible mistake, and Han Sen's performance had won him her respect. Great, Han Sen said with satisfaction. This stops here, and I do not want to see it happen again. Never, said young Manly. Eventually, Han Sen had time to enjoy a nice meal with his girlfriend Jai Yanren, without knowing that there was a storm approaching. Because the Military Academy League had forbidden one player competing in multiple subjects, Jing Jiwu chose to participate in the archery tournament this year, driving many to pay special attention to the archery tournament. When the list of players and game schedule were published by the league, a lot of people discovered that the opponent of the Alliance Central Military Academy was Black Hawk in the second round. If it were the Black Hawk that people had known, no one would pay extra attention to them. However, people noticed that Han Sen was one of the Black Hawk players. Many people were suddenly reminded that Han Sen was an archery student after all. As Han Sen was walking toward the cafeteria, his comlink rang. It was from Tang Zhenliu. When he answered the call, the holographic images of Lin Feng and Tang Zhenliu both appeared. Have you decided to participate in the archery tournament? Asked Tang Zhenliu hurriedly. I am in the archery department, and as a member of the school team, I will definitely be participating. Is there a problem? Han Sen did not understand why Tang Zhenliu would care about this. Tang Zhenliu did not speak but looked at Lin Feng. Do you think you could win? Asked Lin Feng. I'm not sure, replied Han Sen quickly. Jing Jiwu was so strong that he could not tell whether he could win before actually fighting the monster. I'll be watching your game, said Lin Feng calmly. Han Sen cast an awed look at Lin Feng, not knowing what he meant. Tang Zhenliu couldn't help but explain. Han Sen, Jing Jiwu used to go to the same school we went to. He was as strong as Lin Feng. Unfortunately, he transferred to the Alliance Central Military Academy later and never had a chance to have a proper fight with Lin Feng. It will definitely be difficult battle. You feel nervous now. Han Sen shrugged and said, I have never thought that I would lose, so there is nothing to be nervous about. If Jing Jiu has heard this, he will definitely be very happy. Should I tell him you said that? Tang Zhenliu grinned. As you like, Han Sen said casually. Be very careful. Jing Jiwu is the most talented and hard-working guy I have ever seen. Lin Feng suddenly cut in. Han Sen was surprised and nodded seriously. Someone that was able to get such a remark from Lin Feng was definitely incredibly formidable. When he came to the cafeteria, Jai Yanren had already took a table. Luckily her roommate was not here, and Han Sen felt he was about to get lucky. I heard that the archery school team will run into Jing Jiwu in the second round, said Jai Yanren. Yes, what about it? Han Sen was surprised that even Jai Yanren started to care about the archery tournament. If you could beat Jing Jiwu, I will treat you to a four-day deluxe couples tour to the Aegean Sea. Jai Yanren blinked and said. Han Sen suddenly felt a strong desire to win. His eyes lighting up like a light bulb. Han Sen muttered, four-day deluxe couples tour. The reason Jai Yanren wanted Han Sen to beat Jing Jiwu was that last year when she led the team of Hand of God. They lost to Jing Jiwu and stopped before entering the top 16. Women were vengeful creatures, and Han Sen's team happened to be running into Jing Jiwu. Obviously, Jai Yanren did not want her boyfriend to lose to the same person. Eyes on the bonus, Han Sen researched many videos of Jing Jiwu's previous matches. Han Sen had to admit that Jing Jiwu was very strong. He could barely find any flaw. It was almost impossible to beat the guy through his weaknesses. However, Jing Jiwu was also absolutely among the top of all military school students in terms of strength. To overpower him was also out of the question. Tang Zhenliu told Han Sen that Jing Jiwu had already maxed out on all Geno points. The reason Jing Jiwu had not gone to Second God's Sanctuary was that he wished to fight with Lin Feng in the next chosen contest. In addition, the hyper Geno art practiced by Jing Jiwu was also incredible. Even Lin Feng and Tang Zhenliu did not know what kind of hyper Geno art it was, but it worked very well in that an average person whose Geno points were maxed out was not Jing Jiwu's match at all. What Han Sen did not know was that he was studying his opponent. His opponent was also studying him. Lin Feng had said that Jing Jiwu was the most talented and hard-working person. Jing Jiwu had a strong mind, but he never took any opponent lightly, especially someone that Lin Feng valued. Jing Jiu had gathered all the information about Han Sen on the Skynet, including the video of the Warframe contest in the Starry Cup. He also watched the black and white boxing video and Han Sen's commercial. Jing Jiu had found almost everything and watched them all carefully. Jing, what are you watching? Kin Cheng walked over and stood behind Jing Jiu. Kin Cheng was number two in the school archery team of the Alliance Central Military Academy. Originally, Kin Cheng was not in the archery team, but the Warframe team. He used to be the captain of the Warframe school team and won the championship for the school. 
Because Jing Jiwu said I want you as my teammate, he transferred to the archery team. Even so, Qin Cheng was among the top in the military academy league. Even without Jing Jiwu, Qin Cheng could lead the team to win. Han Sen from Blackhawk, said Jing Jiwu, his eyes on the video, not missing a single detail. What do you know about him so far? Very good, said Jing Jiwu. Qin Cheng looked at Jing Jiwu in surprise. Not many people could get such comment from Jing Jiwu. At least in all the contests that they participated together, he had never heard Jing Jiwu say this about anyone. All the archery teams from different military academies were also led to Planet Goff and arranged to stay in the hotel opposite the stadium. When Sidhu Zhang went to arrange for the team's accommodation, the Black Hawk school team were standing in the lobby, watching other teams coming in and out. Are you Han Sen? A girl in uniform saw Han Sen and walked over. I am. And you are. Han Sen looked at the girl standing in front of him, who was wearing a uniform of a different school and carrying a quiver. I liked your commercial a lot. Could I ask for a signature? The girl took out a pen and paper watching Han Sen expectantly. Q Mingmei. You're Q Mingmei from Senwu Military Academy. Chi Jiking and several old team members stared at the girl incredulously. The name of Q Mingmei was known by almost every archer in military schools. Last year when she was still a freshman, she led her team which was rather weak to rank the third in the tournament. Q Mingmei had also become famous after that. This year, she and Senwu Academy received a lot of attention. Han Sen had only studied the team members of the Alliance Central Military Academy and did not have much knowledge of other military schools. Nor did he know Q Mingmei's name. He signed for her and gave her the piece of paper back. Thank you so much. I wish that we could have a match together. Q Mingmei was very excited and returned to her team. Han Sen turned back and saw the jealous look on his teammate's face. Xi Jiking put his strong arm around Han Sen's neck and shouted, Han Sen, Q Mingmei asked you for a signature. Not only his own teammates, but also other students in the lobby were throwing angry looks at Han Sen. Q Mingmei was gorgeous and had great archery skills. There was no doubt that she was a star in the archery tournament. Her asking for Han Sen's signature naturally made many guys bristle. It's Jing Jiwu. When they reached the venue, Shi Jikeng whispered. Everyone looked over and saw the school team of the Alliance Central Military Academy were doing a training. Jing Jiwu was shooting at a moving target 300 feet from him and had hit the bullseye eight times in a row. Insanely stable, commended Lu Meng. Suddenly, a guy came to Han Sen with a bow in his hand and asked in a provocative tone, Are you Han Sen? I am. Who are you? Han Sen looked the guy up and down and did not recognize him. Remember me. I am Fang Wending from Smith Military Academy, and we will beat your team and enter the second round to face the Alliance Central Military Academy, said the guy arrogantly. Han Sen smiled and did not speak. When Shi Jiking was about to say something, another person came over to them. Shi Jiking moved his lips and did not make a sound, staring his eyes wide at the person who had come. Not just Shi Jiking, almost everyone was looking at that person, because it was Jing Jiwu from the Alliance Central Military Academy. Jing Jiwu. Jing Jiwu introduced himself and reached out his right hand in front of Han Sen. Han Sen. Han Sen paused and shook his hand. Jing Jiwu smiled and said, I wanted to say hi when we meet at the match. However, since I've seen you here, I should probably say hi now. I look forward to our game. Me too. Han Sen was quite confused. The strong players he had met were all kind of strange. Jing Jiwu just came to talk to him out of nowhere. Han Sen did not feel anything when he heard what Jing Jiwu had said. But other people were quite shocked. The reporters around the venue were drafting millions of headlines in their mind. An invite from the monster, nemesis of the emperor, on the probability of the victory of Black Hawk. Either way, many people now knew that Jing Jiwu took Black Hawk, or rather Han Sen, very seriously. Fang Wending was left alone felt terrible. No one was paying attention to him and his remark was completely forgotten because of Jing Jiwu's presence. When Zixu was also doing a live show of the training in the stadium. When she saw the scene, she was pleasantly surprised. She was supposed to do a show on black and white boxing, but volunteered to do a show on the archery tournament, knowing Han Sen would be participating. She did not understand why Han Sen would give up black and white boxing for archery. He was doing so well in black and white boxing that he could guarantee great performance. Although he was from the archery department, Wen Zixu still did not understand his choice. This year, Jing Jiwu had chosen to take part in the archery tournament, and according to the rules, he could no longer show up in black and white boxing competitions which made Saint Germain the strongest team. Han Sen had proven that he could easily beat Saint Germain and this was supposed to be a perfect opportunity for him. 
However, he chose to compete in archery and the ran into the Alliance Central Military Academy in the second round, which was beyond her comprehension. Watching Han Sen and Jing Jiwu talking, Wen Zixu suddenly thought she understood something. Han Sen and Jing Jiwu must have made a pact to compete in the archery tournament. That must be why they have chosen the archery tournament together. Wen Zixu let her imagination run wild. She had even drafted the title of her piece, The Rendezvous Between the Monster and the Emperor. As Wen Zixu got more and more excited about her work, she went back to her office and started writing. Wen Zixu did have a lot of creativity. In fact, Jing Jiwu was only saying hi to Han Sen because he had heard about Han Sen from Tang Zhenliu and Lin Feng. In her writing, Han Sen and Jing Jiwu had all sorts of love and hatred between them. Paired with the pictures she took, it almost seemed real. After reading her reports, everyone started to discuss the relationship between Jing Jiwu and Han Sen. Like Lu Meng had predicted, Sidu Zhang was someone who valued morale very much. She would rather take Shi Jiking than those who had lost their confidence. If the old captain Zhu Tianhao did not have faith, Sidu Zhang might even replace him as well. Don't worry, we'll be here for you, Zhang Yang patted Shi Jikang and said. Shi Jikang immediately exclaimed, what's to be worried about? This round we don't even have to face the monster. Even in the next round, Han Sen will win it for us. In the show hosted by Wen Zixu, a famous archery expert Feng Jialun was invited to analyze the game. Professor Feng Jialun, could you make an analysis of the current situation of the two teams? Wen Zixu asked Feng Jialun. Although Wen Zixu did not know much about archery before, she did her homework before she came and now knew quite a lot about the rules and the teams. Smith Military Academy was on the same level as Blackhawk. Last year, Smith Military Academy did not do that well in archery either, only slightly better than Blackhawk. This year, Smith Military Academy also recruited many archery students, among whom Fang Wending was one of the top. Feng Jilun cleared his throat and said lightly, Blackhawk and Smith are on the same level and I will say it's a 60% chance of winning. You think Blackhawk only has a 60% chance of winning? Asked Wen Zixu, surprised. No, I believe Smith has 60% chance of winning, said Feng Jilun casually. Wen Zixu was a bit dumbstruck. Everyone knew that Han Sen was the player that Jing Jiwu took very seriously, so she did not expect Feng to say that. Feng Jilun did not wait for another question before he continued. I know that there is a lot of hype on the Skynet about Han Sen and Jing Jiwu. However, as a professional archery analyst, I could tell you that it is just a PR stunt. Han Sen and Blackhawk did not have what it takes to be the Alliance Central Military Academy's match. I would say that it would be hard for them even to beat Smith. Feng Jilun's remark led to fury of the viewers. What kind of expert is this? What's all this bull crap? My emperor is hand-picked by Jing Jiwu. Smith is nothing. Feng Jilun continued to say, Smith has recruited a lot of great students this year, especially a student named Fang Wending. If you knew anything about archery contests, you should have heard the names of Fang Hua and Fang Yunmei, the two professional archers among evolvers. Fang Wending is from such a great family background and talented himself as well. Such a star archer. Shameless. What kind of expert is this? How dare he say such crap? I've never heard that archery skills could be inherited. The viewers soon found out about the relationship between Feng Jilun and Fang Wending. At this point, the game had already started. Although there were many high-tech composite bows that combined ease of use and accuracy, Han Sen still chose a traditional longbow. Longbow was the hardest to practice, but it was the most flexible under all kinds of circumstances. Han Sen had been using a traditional bow since the beginning. He had learned the basics in the integrated education and was further corrected by Yang Manli. Among the five bows, Han Sen chose the one with lowest strength requirement, which led to Feng Jilun's criticism. He picked a bow of 11.0, which means he has a terrible fitness index. Even fans of the other team started to defend Han Sen, not to mention Han Sen's own fans. Professor Feng, I think that was a little subjective. Our viewers seem to have a lot of different opinions, said Wen Zixu. Feng Jilun glanced at the comments and said casually, The truth always lies in the hands of a few. I'm just stating a fact, which might not be easy to accept for those who have a weak mind. Very soon, I believe, they will see what I'm talking about, because the result of the game will prove everything. Words like this made the viewers hate this know-it-all even more. Jai Yanren and Lily were also pissed off by his remarks. Lily bristled, What kind of crappy expert is this? So unprofessional. Jai Yanren's face was grim. She curled her lips and said, he is right about one thing. The result of the game will prove everything, just not anything he said. Although the viewers had been complaining, Feng Jilun managed to ignore all those comments and continued to talk about Smith's strengths. Feng Jilun did have his own reasons to praise his nephew, 
who was indeed a strong archer. Fang Wending had great techniques and was good at commanding the team. In the Military Academy League, he could absolutely be counted as a top player. If it was not for Han Sen, he could easily lead Smith to beat a good team. The team of five used different objects as their cover and quickly ran towards Smith's half-court, without any intention to occupy the heights. Ha ha, Black Hawk went all in. They did not even take Smith seriously. Awesome, that seems a bit dangerous, doesn't it? Dangerous how? Hansen does not need to worry about Smith at all. He is on the same level as Jing Jiwu. Awesome, I like this. Watching the five players of Black Hawk taking the risk, the viewers became thrilled. Seeing the Black Hawk players rushing over, Fang Wending smirked and ordered, lay low and occupy favorable spots. Shoot at my command. Captain, they have entered my shooting range. Should I start now? A player holding a 14.0 composite bowl asked. Hold it. When they entered the area of fallen trees, we will launch a serious attack, said Fang Wending, observing his opponents. Although the Smith players could shoot them right now, only one composite bow was close enough to them. As such distance, one bow could not make a huge difference. Since Han Sen and his teammates were still running, Fang Wending would let them get a bit closer to launch a better attack. The area of fallen trees was the most open area in the entire field, and within the shooting range of all the Smith players. Seeing the Black Hawk players moving into that area, even the viewers felt bad for them. This game should be ending in less than five minutes. Feng Jilun saw that and smiled. Very soon, Feng Jilun's smile froze on his face. When Han Sen and his teammates entered the shooting range of the Smith players, it also meant that the Smith players were now within the range of Han Sen's shooting range. When Fang Wending gave the order to fire away, arrow after arrow flew toward where the Smith players were hiding. Two of the Smith players who thought they were hiding well were out immediately. Although Fang Wending and the other two reacted fast and dodged the arrows, they lost the opportunity to shoot back. Silence fell as everyone was shocked by Han Sen who shot five arrows in the blink of an eye. The next moment, loud cheers sounded in the stands. What the heck? How did he know where the five persons of Smith were hiding? So fast, I did not even see him touch his bow. Such a strong player, no wonder Jing Jiwu takes him so seriously. He is not only the black and white boxing emperor, but also an amazing archer. Invincible. The field was so large that if players were hiding, it would be hard for them to be found. However, Han Sen's arrows were like missiles and located the smith guys accurately, immediately pinned his enemies down. It was like a match between an adult and children. It was not that hard for Han Sen though. He was good at assassination and the field had a fixed map. Han Sen knew that the moment they reached the fallen trees area was the best opportunity for the smith guys to launch an attack. And to tell where they were hiding was one of his strengths anyway. Let's go. No need to watch anymore. Jing Jiwu got up first. He is indeed a formidable opponent. I look forward to fighting against him. It's such a shame that all his teammates are weak. Kin Cheng nodded. As a player who had a similar style to Han Sen, he was very impressed by Han Sen's ability to judge correctly. Life was full of competitions, but to find a rival on the same level was something worth celebrating. When Kin Cheng observed Han Sen, he kept thinking what he would do if he were Han Sen, and it turned out that he would do exactly what Han Sen did. Kin Cheng would have had the exact same speed, route, and timing. Although Kin Cheng had not met Han Sen officially yet, he had thought of Han Sen as his biggest enemy and strongest opponent. Now Kin Cheng wanted to beat Han Sen even more than Jing Jiwu did. He even wished that Han Sen's teammates could be stronger, so that he and Han Sen could compete on the same level. Han Sen hesitated and laid his eye on Sidhu Zhang. As the coach of the school team, Sidhu Zhang was doing quite well. If Han Sen did not spend too much time in God's sanctuary and had more time to practice with his teammates, they could probably do even better. However, this would not make much of the difference in front of the Alliance Central Military Academy. When Sidhu Zhang was explaining her arrangement in the next match, Han Sen suddenly stood up and walked to her. Sidhu Zhang did not know what the student wanted. He should listen to her or raise his hand instead of walking up to her. Coach, when you recruited me into the school team, didn't you tell me that the goal is to win the championship in this tournament? Han Sen walked up to Sidhu Zhang with his back straight and eyes sharp. I did. Sidhu Zhang nodded and blushed a little. She had to admit that even she did not believe that Black Hawk could beat the Alliance Central Military Academy. Then please tell us how to win this. I want to win, staring at the coach, Han Sen said slowly. Sidhu Zhang did not know what to say. She wanted to win more than anybody. However, the gap between the two teams was too big. Sidhu Zhang had no clue herself as to how to beat the strongest military school. But as a coach, she could not tell her team that they had no hope. 
After watching the first match of the Alliance Central Military Academy, Sidhu Zhang had to say that this was probably the best team the archery tournament had ever seen. With the monster Jing Jiwu and other players like Qin Cheng, the team was so strong that it was beyond her imagination. If you really want to win, there is only one way. Sidhu Zhang pondered for a while and said to Han Sen, in fact, Sidhu Zhang had thought about this match a million times, but no matter what decision she made, she thought they would still lose. The absolute gap in strength was beyond any strategy or tactics. But even so, Sidhu Zhang still hoped to win. She had a tentative plan, but she did not even believe it was possible to execute. It was deep in her mind, but she did not even have enough confidence to share that with her team. From a coach, the plan was quite absurd. Although they had a huge advantage, it does not mean you have no chance. Sidhu Zhang's gaze fell upon Han Sen. Although this chance is extremely slim, if you're willing to try, there is a possibility, whereas if you do not try, you will definitely lose. If you decide to give it a shot, you will still have a 99% chance of losing. Are you still willing to do this? Please tell us how to do it. Han Sen was calm and determined. Other team members also looked at Sidhu Zhang eagerly. Here, look at this. Sidhu Zhang pulled out the simulation of the field and started to explain. Before the match began, the stands were filled with the audience from all over the alliance. People were extremely enthusiastic about this match between Jing Jiwu and Han Sen. All sorts of media platforms were also all over this match. The unpopular archery tournament became such a hit this year. When Zixu was doing all the talking today, as the expert Feng Jialun was pulled off by Huaxing Station because of the complaints. At the back of the stands, two young men in sunglasses were whispering to each other. Lin Feng, do you think Han Sen could win? Asked Tang Zhenliu casually. In terms of the overall strength of his team, Han Sen has no chance. Lin Feng smiled. And, Tang Zhenliu knew Lin Feng had more to say. Lin Feng thought about it and said, however, Han Sen's strength was assassination. So, he might be able to get rid of a single person without using the entire team. You mean Han Sen has a chance to eliminate Jing Jiwu? Tang Zhenliu regarded Lin Feng. Very hard to say. Maybe there is a chance, whispered Lin Feng. Even he could not predict the result of this game and had to wait and see. On the stands were almost all the participating teams. Even the teams that did not have a match this day were here. Hu Mingmei was also here with her teammates. Most of them were here to observe the Alliance Central Military Academy. In the first round, the team's opponent was too weak to make them show their real strength. Although they did not believe that Blackhawk was the match of the Alliance Central Military Academy, they thought Han Sen would be able to force the monster to show what he got. Because the entire field had a blocking system, the Alliance Central Military Academy players could not hear or see the audience, otherwise they would know that something was wrong. From the beginning of the game, the five players from Blackhawk lined up in a single file, and ran into the half-court of the Alliance Central Military Academy. Because there were obstructions including hills and woods, normally speaking, the two teams were not able to see each other when the game just started. It was a common practice to occupy the heights to observe the other team. There were a few heights in each half-court so that both teams could utilize the terrain. Blackhawk players had given up on the heights and chose to enter their opponent's half-court following a route hard to be discovered, which was a risky move. Once they were noticed by their opponents who had occupied the heights, they would be finished off in the blink of an eye. Everyone was shocked by the daring move of Blackhawk. Normally speaking, when the Alliance Central Military Academy occupied a height nearby, they would notice the Blackhawk players and end the game once the Blackhawk players were in their sight. What kind tactics is this? This is so risky. They are bound to be found. Of course, Blackhawk have made such a bad move. I thought this game would be excellent to watch. Now it seems it will end very soon. Even an average motor school would not overlook such an intrusion, not to mention the Alliance Central Military Academy. What trick is this? Those who had the slightest understanding of an archery game thought Blackhawk was committing a suicide. At this point, Sidhu Zhang was wringing her hands nervously, her eyes fixed on her team. She had designed the tactics, which looked like a suicide. No team would make such a mistake to neglect this daring move. However, this was her last resort after watching all the games of the Alliance Central Military Academy in recent years. If she used this tactics on another team, then the failure was almost certain. However, on the Alliance Central Military Academy, maybe they stood a 1% or lower chance of success. Sweat in her palms, Sidhu Zhang was praying that there would be a miracle. Han Sen was leading the way, watching the timer in his hand from time to time. Their route and timing were carefully designed by Sidhu Zhang. 
in a way that it would allow them to circle behind the Alliance Central Military Academy under the circumstances that the team chose to go directly to the center. Maybe Sidhu Xiang's prayers were working. The five players of the Alliance Central Military Academy indeed went to the center instead of occupying the heights nearby. A classic battle was often produced under the influence of many coincidences. When the audience saw the players from each team went past each other from different routes, they were shocked. As the Alliance Central Military Academy was marching toward the center, the Black Hawk players had arrived at the woods behind the central mountain. The backs of all five players in the Alliance Central Military Academy were exposed in the sight of the Black Hawk players. All of a sudden, arrows were shot from their rear. Although there were five players on their team, the target of the arrows was one person, Qin Cheng, the number two in the Alliance Central Military Academy, and the second star of the team. Maybe Qin Cheng was not as famous as Jing Jiwu, but his contribution to the team was no less than Jing Jiwu's. As a student Warframe commander, Qin Cheng had not only great archery skills, but also excellent leadership talent. With Qin Cheng on the team, Jing Jiwu could focus himself on getting rid of the opponents. Without Qin Cheng, the Alliance Central Military Academy would still be strong, but no longer invincible. From the very beginning, Sidhu Zhang's plan was to first get rid of Qin Cheng, who was the brains of the team, instead of Jing Jiwu. On one hand, Jing Jiwu's physique was so strong that a sneak attack like this might not work. On the other hand, getting rid of Qin Cheng meant more to Black Hawk strategically. Watch out! Jing Jiwu noticed the attack before the arrows even arrived. It was too late for him to fend off the arrows, so all he could do was to use his voice. Qin Cheng acted quickly. It was an archery game, so it was forbidden to use anything to touch the opponent's arrows. A player could either dodge or use his or her own arrow to fight back. The arrows blocked every direction Qin Cheng could move. Their intention to kick Qin Cheng out was clear. Qin Cheng grabbed his bow and shot three arrows in an instant, which shot down all the three arrows coming at his face. Qin Cheng, well done. The coach of the Alliance Central Military Academy waved his fist in the excitement, feeling lucky to have Qin Cheng on his team. Such skills and calm were next to nobody other than Jing Jiwu. As they were celebrating, Qin Cheng suddenly exclaimed as an arrow ended on his chest. Beep, beep, Alliance Central Military Academy. Qin Cheng, out, Archer, Blackhawk, Han Sen. The Blackhawk players were hiding in the woods, while their opponents were exposed on the slope with no cover. The players from the Alliance Central Military Academy were faced with two choices, either going up or down. Without hesitation, Jing Jiwu ordered everyone to go down, which was faster than going up and did not require them to expose their backs. It was not that easy to come down either. Blackhawk had made a thorough preparation for this part. None of them chose a strong bow. Everyone picked 11.0 bows for the speed. It was a very weak bow for these student archers, but they could shoot continuously. At the command of their captain Zhu Tianhao, a storm of arrows landed on one of the Alliance Central Military Academy players. Without any cover, that player was out immediately. Ha, huh, it was me. Xi Jiking waved his recurve bow in excitement. Watch out. Han Sen wanted to pull Xi Jiking, but it was too late. An arrow hit Xi Jiking immediately. Although the arrows all had flat rubber heads, Xi Jiking still rolled over on the ground in pain. That bow must be a 16.0. Jing Jiwu is indeed a monster, said Zhu Tianhao after hiding behind a tree. Han Sen could also pull a 16.0 longbow, but could probably shoot no more than two arrows. There was no way he could make continuous shots like Jing Jiwu. The 16.0 bow looked like an 11.0 in Jing Jiwu's hands. Quick, do not allow them to come down, exclaimed Lu Meng at everyone. In another exchange of arrows, Jing Jiwu made a shot at Zhu Tianhao who was out immediately. Luckily, Han Sen got rid of another opponent as well. The audience became thrilled. Since Jing Jiwu joined the school team, it was the first time that three players were out in the Alliance Central Military Academy. The Alliance Central Military Academy was never pushed this far before. Black Hawk is only one step from victory, but that one step is so difficult, because in front of them is the best player in the Military Academy League. Jing Jiwu, said Wen Zixiu, thrilled. The viewers also became excited. At an absolute advantage, Black Hawk still lost three players to Jing Jiwu, who was indeed a monster. However, at this point, Jing Jiwu was the only one that had survived on his team. On Black Hawk's side, the remaining were only Han Sen and Lu Meng. They had every intention to eliminate Jing Jiwu, but all their attacks were in vain. He's no human, cursed Lu Meng behind a tree. Indeed, said Han Sen, also hiding behind a tree. Jing Ju had rushed down the mountain and entered the woods. It was almost impossible to see him at this point and both teams were reduced to the starting point. 
the viewers held their breath before the game. None of them had thought that the Alliance Central Military Academy would be pushed this far. Without a doubt, the tactics adopted by Black Hawk were extremely successful. However, Jing Jiwu was still there, and it was almost impossible to beat him. As they wished, they would see the duel between Jing Jiwu and Han Sen, because the two players were both there. Although Han Sen had some advantage with a teammate on his side. Ha ha, the coach of Black Hawk is really good. Lin Feng, you think Han Sen could win? Tang Zhenliu smiled and said, Han Sen's bow is too weak. His 11.0 bow is not enough to shoot someone like Jing Jiwu, unless they were really close to each other, said Lin Feng. That's right, because of the tactics they used, they all chose 11.0 bows. Although that was successful in the beginning, facing a player like Jing Jiwu, the weapon is their biggest weakness. Tang Zhenliu knowingly nodded. Jing Jiwu who was moving freely turned into a real monster, gliding quietly on the field. Neither Han Sen nor Lu Meng dared to move. Without knowing where Jing Jiwu was, they were faced with great challenge although they were two. We cannot stay here, said Lu Meng, ready to get up. An arrow suddenly came to him. Move, roared Han Sen, quickly shooting an arrow at the one threatening Lu Meng. Bang, Han Sen's arrow were bounced off immediately and Jing Jiwu's arrow only slightly turned, ending up on Lu Meng's shoulder. Jing Jiwu's arrow was meant to hit Lu's heart. But in an archery tournament, getting hit in the shoulder also eliminated Lu. All yours, Sen? Lu Meng left calmly as he had done all he could. The audience were again amazed by how powerful Jing Jiwu was. As long as Jing Jiwu is here, we will never lose. Black Hawk could try as much as they want. Students of the Alliance Central Military Academy felt a sense of pride. Jing Jiwu is indeed the monster. They had such an advantage. They should have got rid of Jing Jiwu first instead of Qin Cheng. Bullcrap. How can 11.0 bow be enough to get rid of Jing Jiwu at that kind of distance? Indeed, Jing Jiwu could have completely dodged an arrow like that with his speed. Such a shame. Black Hawk is indeed a great team with a creative coach. However, they ran into Jing Jiwu. Han Sen moved continuously, searching for his opponent everywhere. In the field mimicking a labyrinthine, Jing Jiwu was not the only hunter. Han Sen was also looking for Jing Jiwu. The two students quickly moved in the field. Although they had not make a single shot, their movements surprised a lot of viewers with rich combat experience. Without the help of any equipment, both Han Sen and Jing Jiwu could always avoid the danger one step early and find a favorable spot. If it were just only one time, that would not be so impressive. However, after half an hour that you were still not able to make a shot, because either Han Sen or Jing Jiwu could not find a good opportunity. It was like playing chess under blindfold conditions. Without seeing each other, the two masters competed psychologically using the entire field as their chessboard without a sound. People who really understood the game could hardly breathe when they watched this. The tension and excitement were even more intense than a real combat. No matter Han Sen or Jing Jiwu could have fallen into the range of their opponents a million times, but they could always turn away from a crisis. Jing Jiwu had raised his bow six times and had to put it back down, and Han Sen was the same. So impressive. Both of them, Hu Mingmi's eyes lit up and murmured, This might be the greatest duel in the history of Military Academy League. No matter who loses, he is no loser, when Zixu said. The viewers on the Skynet agreed with her. Absolutely great. I'm afraid we could not see the same thing in the future either. It's a shame that they encountered each other so early. This should happen in the final. I wish to see Jing Jiwu and Han Sen fighting each other again. But this year is Jing Jiwu's senior year. Han Sen could participate again, but Jing Jiwu will not. Such strong players. I don't want either of them to lose. One has to beat the other. It should be Jing Jiwu. Han Sen's bow is too weak. If he uses a 14.0 plus bow, he would have a chance to beat Jing Jiwu however, for tactics, he chose 11.0. Han Sen was born three years too late. If he's a senior student and has the same strength Jing Jiwu does, the duel would be even better to watch. Next year, next year we will be here again. Seeing Han Sen was forced into the area of fallen trees and had to face Jing Jiwu, Zhu Tianhao felt a strong regret. He had lost for three years and was never able to make it beyond the second round. This year, he was here again, and he really wanted to win. But their opponent was the Alliance Central Military Academy. Even they had worked so hard, they were still about to lose. As Zhu Tianhao was saying next year, he suddenly realized that he no longer had another year. This was his senior year and last year in the tournament. With mixed feelings, Zhu Tianhao's eyes went wet. Even I have to give 10 years of my life, please give us a miracle. Zhu Tianhao felt suffocated. Sidhu Ziang's eyes were also damp. She did not realize that Black Hawk could come this far. Her plan worked, and now it was king to king. 
The only thing was that Han Sen was holding an 11.0 bow. Tang Zhen Liu knew that Han Sen was exceptional. However, under such circumstances, he did not see any chance for Han Sen to win. After entering the area of fallen trees, Han Sen did not try to run anymore. He had entered the range of Jing Jiu's bow, and there was no cover anyway. Running was pointless. Jing Jiu walked slowly into the area of fallen trees with bow and arrows in his hand, and did not immediately shoot at Han Sen. Instead, he stared at his opponent and said, You did well. Unfortunately, we will have no chance to fight again. It has to be today. Why next time? Now or never. Han Sen stood still and raised his bow. Jing Jiu did not speak, but nodded, raising his bow as well. Two persons, two bows, two arrows. Under the light, they stood like two sculptures. After 0.1 second, the two suddenly moved at the same time. The arrows were in the air and the two bodies were moving. Jing Jiu's arrow was obviously way faster than Han Sen's. The moment he let go, the arrow was already in Han Sen's face. Han Sen turned sideways slightly and dodged that arrow by a hair. Jing Jiu was more at ease. As such a distance, Han Sen's arrow was too slow to pose any threat to him. However, Jing Jiu still approached Han Sen quickly and shot at him again. Wiggling left and right, Han Sen was shooting back as well. The viewers were dumbstruck. In a duel like this, the two had failed to shoot their opponent multiple times. Shockingly, Han Sen's strange movements led Jing Jiu to miss three times. My god, 16.0 bow at 60 feet, yet Jing Jiu missed all three. Is Jing Jiu's luck too bad or is the guy's luck is too good? A team member of the Alliance Central Military Academy said. It's not about their luck. It is because Han Sen is too misleading. When he moved, he was constantly giving Jing Jiu the wrong idea, making Jing Jiu believe he was going into the other direction, which led to mistakes in Jing Jiu's judgment, explained Qin Cheng. He seemed to be just wiggling unintentionally. It turns out that's a serious skill. The team members all looked to Han Sen in surprise. You think you could dodge Jing Jiu's arrow unintentionally? Even at 900 feet, I'll bet you could not, replied Qin Cheng quietly. This Han Sen is really somebody. Can Jing Jiu still win? exclaimed the team member. Although Han Sen is better than we thought he would be, his bow is too weak. That's right. From 300 feet to 150 feet, Jing Jiu will have the absolute advantage. As Han Sen was only 300 feet from Jing Jiu, Sidu Zhang was praying secretly, Go over. He had to go over. Go over. Jai Yanren rubbed her hands together. Go over. Everyone who helped Han Sen to win was shouting inwardly, although they all knew that the chance was quite slim. When the opponent was Jing Jiwu who was carrying a 16.0 bow, even an evolver would probably not be able to make the perfect dodge. Han Sen moved forward, shortening their distance to less than 300 feet. Everyone's hearts were in their throats. Jing Jiwu started to shoot as he entered his perfect range. Even with Han Sen's speed, it would be hard to fend off the volley of arrows from Jing Jiwu. However, when Jing Jiwu made the first shot, Han Sen had shot a volley of three arrows in an instant. As Jing Jiwu's arrow brushed off Han Sen's shoulder, Han Sen quickly shot another three arrows. No way. Qin Cheng and his coach exclaimed at the same time. Even Qiu Mingmei, Sidu Zhang, Wen Zixu, Tang Zhenliu and Lin Feng were shocked. No one could have thought that Han Sen would launch a full-on attack at such a distance, which was beyond what an 11.0 bow could do. If Han Sen's opponent were any other military school student, Han Sen might have some chance. However, opposite him stood Jing Jiwu and it was highly unlikely for Han Sen to hit the target, no matter how many arrows he shot. Han Sen rushed. He should have gotten closer. At such a distance, it is easy for Jing Jiwu to dodge his arrows. When Zixi was nervous, no matter how she saw this, Han Sen could not pose any real threats to Jing Jiwu at such a distance. Launching the attack too early would do Han Sen no good. Terrible. Han Sen should have taken his time. Tang Zhenliu couldn't help but say. He did not have time. This is his last opportunity. With Jing Jiwu's ability, he could not get closer than 150 feet, and even if he could, he might still miss, replied Lin Feng. Although that's right, it is equally useless to launch an attack now. I believe he has only 20-something arrows left in his quiver, and when he uses them all, he will have no more supplies and then lose, said Tang Zhenliu. So, he has to win right here, said Lin Feng. How? No idea. Lin Feng shook his head. Even you could not think of an idea. I think Han Sen cannot make it after all. Tang Zhenliu sighed. Under everyone's watch, Han Sen was getting closer and closer to Jing Jiwu. An 11.0 bow had its benefits as well which allowed Han Sen to shoot volleys of arrows easily. A rain of arrows flew toward Jing Jiwu. Although they all missed him, they forced Jing Jiwu to move around. 
Han Sen grabbed the opportunity, shooting and running towards Jing Jiwu. However, anyone could tell that at the speed, he would have used up his arrows before he made it to 150 feet. Jing Jiwu was so strong that even when he was dodging all the arrows, he was still able to make the shots using unlikely positions. Han Sen was about 220 feet from Jing Jiwu and had to use Sparticle to the extreme to dodge Jing Jiwu's arrows. An arrow flew by Han Sen's face. The flow of air even broke Han Sen's strands of hair. The arrow was so powerful that even it was made with a rubber head, it would still cause serious damage once it ended up on one's face. Han Sen still did not give up. As he moved away from Jing Jiwu's arrow, he steadied himself with only one foot on the ground. With his body extremely inclined, Han Sen still managed to make a shot at Jing Jiwu. After this shot, Han Sen completely lost his balance and fell to the ground. Han Sen's movements were provoking in Jing Jiwu's eyes. When Han Sen lost his balance, without trying to defend himself, he continued to attack. Jing Jiwu was not afraid of such a challenge. He made two shots at the same time. One went to hit Han Sen's arrow, whereas the other one flew to Han Sen's face who seemed to have lost his ability to dodge. It seemed that Han Sen had given up on avoiding Jing Jiwu's attack altogether. Before he fell, he shot twice at Jing Jiwu. Ah, uh, the stands were filled with excitement. No one thought the duel would end so fast. At this point, it seemed that Han Sen had already lost. That will be all for now. I hope you find this story interesting. Leave a like, subscribe and enable notifications so you won't miss the next part of this story. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.